All right, all right, all right. Testing, testing. One, two, three, four. Ladies and gentlemen, can you all see me? Most importantly, and I'd be remiss if I didn't stress this as the most important part. Can you all hear me? Test, test, mic check. What's going on, people? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Isn't it crazy? It's 7 p.m. over here, and there's still a little bit of daylight outside. Absolutely insane, man. You got, you got to love it, man. Better better weather is upon us, my friends. Better weather is upon us. But what's going on, people? Uh, Wow. You don't stream for two weeks, and then you already forget the basics. Let me just pop out this chat right quick. Move this bad boy over here. And we should be good to go. But what's up, what's up, what's up? Starting at the top with some shout-outs. Starting at the top. Okay, who we got here? Oh, we got the homie Flame in the chat first. Okay, he's he's reclaimed his throne. You know, he's he hasn't really been first too often this year. So, you know, uh, congratulations, Flame. <laughs> I really got nothing else for it. I got nothing, nothing funny or something to say about it. But, yeah, congratulations to the homie Flame. He on top, bro. Uh, For once, he's on top. He's not a bottom. Anyways, uh, Hibachi, damn, I wanted to first. Hey, man, listen, you know, sometimes it's better not to finish first, bro. Trust me. Uh, you never saw it coming. There's that persona reference. Yes, sir. We got long live Kevin Samuels. Take six shots this stream for Akira Toriyama. I feel like Akira Toriyama would rather us take like six stakes than six shots. But I don't know. We'll see how the night progresses. Uh, we got Pooh Bear in the chat. What's up, Neil? What's up? Oh, uh, we got JFam in the chat. Yo, I love Yuffie and I would do anything for Yuffie. Oh, my man's is spitting right now. Yes, sir. We got Ghost Fixer in the chat. What's up, everyone? And then we got David Big like, what's up, everyone? You see, it's it's just the duality of the commenters in the chat. <laughs> but what's going on, gentlemen? Uh, Rhino54, Kingpin in the building. The God is back, my brother from another. Yes, sir. We have returned, ladies and gentlemen. I've uh, I put a little bit of time into Final Fantasy Rebirth so I can actually stream without feeling guilt, my friends. It, it, isn't it a beautiful feeling? It's a beautiful feeling, man. We got Don Otaku in the chat, who's been a member for the past 10 months of the Phantom Weirdo tier. I appreciate you, my brother. He says, Game of the Year comes out in three days. Well, it already did. It's called Persona 3 Reload. Anyways, uh, my runner-up for Game of the Year is no longer Prince of Persia, though. After putting 65 hours into Unicorn Overload, it surpassed it. Ooh, damn. So we've already got, like, your top three games right there. And, and by Game of the Year, I assume he's talking about Dragon's Dogma 2, which, if y'all can believe it or not, it's coming out this week. Holy fuck. <laughs> uh, we got Julian Phoenix with the $2 Super Chat. These mini games of Rebirth are pissing me off. Oh, we're going to touch on that. When I give you all my uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth first impressions, I got I, I got something to say. Uh, <laughs> you see, and Flame, see, me and Flame, I don't know how I feel about this shit. Me and Flame are agreeing on a lot more things than we're disagreeing this year. I don't know. I don't know. I don't sit right with me, man. <laughs> we got exploit in the chat yo we back yes sir we back at it like a crack addict my friends we got a uh, k cube in the chat what's going on quaku uh hey yo everyone we got maddie what's going on maddie how you doing valkian uh christian says thanks for the birthday shout outs of course you know i always got to give a birthday shout out to the nephew my ever-growing my ever-growing uh supply of nephews who i'm gonna soon indoctrinate to uh my favorite franchises, whether y'all like it or not, you know what I'm saying? Listen, if you say, hey, hey, go be with your Uncle Neo for a while, I'll, listen, they ain't gonna be watching TV, but they're gonna be playing a lot of video games. And by video games, I mean, I'm gonna start them out with something simple. They can play a Dragon Quest and get acclimated to that. And then we can just work their way into other things like Persona and stuff like that. But listen, they, 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 they listen, at least you know that your children will be able to read after they've spent like an afternoon with Uncle Neo. See, don't, don't, listen, hooked on phonics. I'm telling you, this shit can work. Um, because I'm gonna make sure they read aloud every single piece of dialogue in some of those games, man. Listen, I don't know, man. I gotta make sure I see you playing this. Um, <laughs> who else is in here? Uh, we got Retro Lad in the chat. Hey, Chris, I finished Rebirth this week. What a masterpiece, and hopefully it gets Game of the Year. You see, sh shout out to my boy Chris right here, because he actually finished Rebirth in a believable fashion, unlike some of these people who beat it like a week after it came out. I'm like, what the fuck are y'all doing? My boy Joaquin, shout out to my boy Joaquin, but that man finished Rebirth in like six days, bro, or, or maybe eight days, give or take 72 hours in the mix. I was just like... Man, come on now. He was pulling like 12-hour sessions every day since the game came out. And I'm just like, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Either I'm getting older. I just got other things I spend my entertainment on. But I just, I, I can't be playing games for 12 hours like I used to. I put, 
eight hours into Persona 5 Royal recently, and even then, I was just like, damn, nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I haven't done that in a while. Uh, let's see who's in here. Look at this Rai guy here. Yo, my man Rots112 is in the building? Shit, if I do it, Rob. Shit, if I do it, shit, if I do it, bro. <laughs> oh, that's my guy right there. Uh, Pure the Gamer, you Hawks, your jersey is fresh. Oh, yeah, thank you, man. You know, I, every now and then I gotta come on here with a little bit of anime drip, you know what I'm saying? This you Hawks show, this Ghost Files basketball jersey, bro. This shit, this shit is lit, man, yo. Oh, man. Uh, don't, don't get me started. Uh, let's see. We got Deuce1042 in the chat. The amazing Yuffie is here. Yo, shout out to Yuffie. She is like the second best woman in Final Fantasy VII, bro. She is God tier, man. Love her to death, bro. This is a Yuffie stan account from here on out. It's already been a Tifa stan account, as y'all know. But we got to throw Yuffie in the mix because a one-woman man is what I want to be. But there's two perfect girls for me, man. Tifa Lockhart and Yuffie Kitasagi. Uh, we got Sean in the chat. We got Dexter Smith. What's up? Where you been? Where I've been, bro? Man, listen, I've been... I've only been gone two weeks. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I'm glad you guys missed me. Nah, we've been getting a lot of gaming in. Well, a lot of gaming and just a lot of events happening with family and close friends and things like that that unfortunately take up take up my off time where i usually use that to stream uh and when i wasn't streaming i was out with friends and if when i wasn't out with friends i was out with family if i wasn't out with family i was trying to get some gaming in so it, that's and then as you guys know as an adult it's just like oh wow the work week is already back back oh my god here we go jesus uh, that's uh that's life but your boy your boy's doing good your boy is doing good your boy is it's thriving. We're doing our thing, man. We're keeping on with the goals and then all that other inspirational jazz. You guys know I'm already going to say after six shots. But we've been doing good, man. Uh, who else is in here? We have got uh, JFam, who's been a member for the past 27 months. The Nendroids are out of frame. They are out of frame. That is true. They are out of frame, and, and Grogu is blocking them. But there, there you go. There you go. You can, you can see, like, two out of the three. And Grogu just doesn't want y'all to acknowledge Persona 5 for some reason. I don't know. I, you know what? Maybe, maybe Grogu, maybe Grogu was so turned off by Mishima everywhere and all his challenges that he's just like, no, listen, Persona 5 does not exist. There's only three and there's only four. So, you know what, Grogu? I can respect that. I can respect that. Because fuck Mishima, bro. I can't glorify Discord moderator ass. Anyways, I'm trying. I'm trying to start this stream off very wholesome my friends because you guys know it can devolve into degeneracy really quickly bro really quickly but i'm just i'm i'm, I'm not trying to take us there yet we'll, we'll see what happens man we'll see what happens um <laughs> hey yo who's a bottom certainly not me uh anyways christian youtube stream like i said uh we got Corey gryffindor in the chat what's up what's up mayo eaters who's got the saint patrick's gluck gluck jesus Listen, I know this man, Corey Gryffindor. Listen, this man, Corey Gryffindor, is a black man in his 20s in California. Not trying to dox the dude, but he's a black man in his 20s in California living up with all the white girls, bro. He's got all the Beckys and the Christinas and the and the and hopefully not the Karens and all that shit. This man, listen, he puts on that king. You know what? I saw this man, Corey Gryffindor, go out one night. He had the rocks, this necklace and everything, and he had like four white girls next to him, bro. I'm telling you, this man, Corey Gryffindor's game is impeccable. And then he pulled out the Persona 3 jacket, and it was over, man. That man, just, that man is crazy, bro. Oh, shout out to Corey, though. Neo said it. I can rest easy. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> what was it here? TTV presents. What's up, y'all? Got Persona 5 Switch on the Target deal. 100 hours income. And oh, shit. What was the Target deal? I think it was like 1999, something crazy like that. Bro, Persona 5 been going dumb cheap recently, bro. I've seen it go for like $20, $25, 30 bucks. Great game, man. Great game. I mean, my personal issues with it aside, because you guys already know. A great game. Great game. I definitely recommend people play it if you don't have access to a platform that has Persona 3 Reload. But I digress. Uh, we got RS in the building. What's up? Uh, let's see. Who We got Marcus makes stuff. Ayo, hey, what it do, baby? <laughs> What's up, Marcus? Huh? Oh, well, I want to know what you're making. That's what I want to know. What are you making, man? Um, oh, we got Shut Up Game in the chat. We're just, whoa. <laughs> whoa, bro. Whoa. Whoa, man. Uh, who else is in here? We got the Mega Potato. We got the Mega Potato Man. I love that name. Hi, all. How you doing, Mega Potato Man? You were once you were once a small, medium, and a large, and now you're a Mega Potato Man. When when is Super Size? Would you would you guys say Super Size is bigger than Mega, or is Mega bigger in the hierarchy? I feel like Super. I don't know. I don't know. 
We got Day Reezy in the chat. The FBI saw your thumbnail. Now they want to know your location. <laughs> <Yeah>. $2 <laughs> super chat coming in from Don Otaku. Yuffie's like 10. Don't be a Dan Snyder. Oh, shit. Yo. Have any of you guys seen that documentary? I think it's on HBO Max. I haven't got a chance to watch it yet. I probably might uh, put a little bit of time. Because I've just been rewatching Evangelion, me and my sister, like any time we get. Because we're going to go see um, End of Evangelion tomorrow night. So we've just been rewatching the series. Um, but that documentary i think it's on hbo max is fucking insane like i'm just seeing all like the bits and pieces people have been putting out on twitter and it's basically confirming a lot of the stuff that if you've if you've been on the internet for a while and you know if you know anything about um like a lot of people question like why why what happens to child celebrities after the fact why do they all end up fucked up like what's happening with them this documentary explains it it's insane this documentary is about um dan snyder the guy who he was responsible for a lot of stuff in like the late 90s early 2000s on nickelodeon some of the shows that you guys are familiar with like drake and josh um like uh, just a lot of things in those shows that were kind of strange and even if you didn't like make a big deal of it at the time it was one of those things that stuck with you as you got older like that's that's not okay and then of course with social media blowing up and a lot of people rewatching stuff from their childhood they're just like yo that is definitely not okay and then you know you hear a lot of stuff come out of course there was Jeanette McCurdy she wrote uh the book that was more about like her relationship with her mom and everything but again it's one of those things about um children dealing with stuff as celebrities and how they could potentially get really fucked up and then there's a lot of stuff happening with folks like Dan Snyder and then Harvey Weinstein and all this crazy crazy stuff that you know, Donald Talk, you say that we've been knowing about him for a while, but a lot of people in the mass general population, they haven't. So this is like all news, especially for it to be on the forefront of a big streaming service like um, Max. It's crazy. But yeah, it's if you know anything about it, even the small it's crazy because if you know even the smallest tidbit of information, it's disgusting, man. And I heard they do not pull their punches in that documentary. So as weird as it sounds, I'm very much so looking forward to seeing the rest of it. It's ugh. it's stuff that really gets your skin gets your, gets your skin crawling. It's crazy. Um, we have a five dollar super check coming in from the homie Artsy Avanti. Yuffie fucks. I haven't switched her out of the rest of the game. Listen, it, I'm curious. Did anybody play Rebirth who did not play the Integrate DLC with Yuffie? I already knew that when that Integrate DLC dropped, I was like, listen, Yuffie about to be a main party member. I don't care what y'all say. And sure enough, once Yuffie joined the party, she's always made she's always been a main player. The only times she's not a main player is when the story does this thing where they make you separate the party so you play as other characters, which I don't necessarily mind fundamentally because you know you gain control soon. But I'm that type of person where when I have my setup, my trio, I like to stick with them. And then when you make me use other characters I don't want to use, like, oh, my God, I'm about to unlock this nigga Cape Sif, bro. I do not want to use this dude because I've seen what everyone else has been saying online. And I'm just like, oh, God, what am I about to get into? <sighs> but, um, yeah, <laughs> how we segued from Dan Snyder to fucking Cape Sif. <laughs> uh. There's a yellow cyberpunk chair in hell waiting on him. Yeah, bro. Did you guys see? Apparently, I think the Hollywood Reporter did a um, did a um, like a tell-all confessional with him recently, and he says he's got like a lot of apologies to make on some shit. And I'm just like, no, no, not you, dude. You don't get to say shit like that, bro. <sighs> Man, we are really just jumping all over the place. Holy fuck! Let me just let me just do these shoutouts real quick and do the intro, and let's get let's get the show on the road. Uh, we've got um, the Arcane in the chat. What's going on, my brother? We got Roosevelt770. What's up? What's up? Uh, RT Avanti, I know you already super chatted, but hello to you, my friend. And um, I think that's more or less everybody. Yeah, that is everybody. All right, so let's get this intro out of the way. And you can already see that the sun has been setting right now. What's up, what's up, what's up, people? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantastic and fabulous episode of Ask Neo. If y'all are tuning in for the very first time, Ask Neo is my weekly Q&A series where you guys ask me questions and I answer them to the best of my ability. Sometimes sober, sometimes not so sober, courtesy of David Biglad, because you know how he be. Um, there's no real flow or structure to this show. It's basically just us chilling, hanging out, uh, just chatting, if this was going to be on Twitch, uh, where we just vibe. We just talk about the stuff we've been doing recently, some of the shows we've been watching, some of the games that we've been playing, because there have been a lot of great games coming out. And your boy Neo 
Your boy Neo has been putting time in some games. He's been putting some time in some games. Like he's been putting some time into... Listen, it's a Christian YouTube chat. Let me not get into that yet. Um, but before we dive further into this, if you guys can do me a favor and check out the video description. Because there are a couple of links of interest. So first things first, all of my social media outlets from my Twitter... Instagram, Facebook, our Discord community, The Fan of Weirdos, which is run by Shut Up Gabe. If you guys want to contact me on any of those platforms, the best way, of course, is going to be on Twitter because that's the app that I'm probably on the most by comparison to everybody else, you know? Uh, and it's the, it's the one that's the most fun, you know what I'm saying? You know, there's always just something happening on Twitter, whether people are just arguing about stuff or they're we're just making some dumbass memes and, and me getting bullied. That's also something that's on display in the public scene. But hey, listen, at least people can see what I be going through on Ask Neo on a weekly basis. Now y'all can see it happen in real time on Twitter. <laughs> Anyways, it's twitter.com slash NeoGameSpark. And in addition to that, if you guys can do me a favor and hit the like button, it helps out the channel tremendously. It helps send the stream out to the ether so we can get a bunch of other weirdo friends into this new family of ours. Hopefully y'all wear deodorant. I hope so, because that is a very, very important paramount. Like some people, you know, when you go into a bar or, or you go into a really fancy club, they got like a cover charge or something. My cover charge is like, lift those arms up, man. Let's see what you work with. Does it smell? Does it smell good? All right, you in. If not, listen, I don't right, know. Because I, I, like I like my nose hairs the way they are and I don't want them to be burned off. So there, there's that too. But uh, yeah, you know, so feel free, you guys. Ask away, ask questions. I'm going to try my best to answer them. We're going to go for, uh, I'm trying to make this one a short show considering my sister and I, we do got to watch the last eight episodes of Evangelion before the movie tomorrow night. So I'm going to see. I started at seven. So I'm going to say we probably go until 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we've got a solid, solid an hour and a half. Nothing too crazy. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, call it a night. Oh, shit, we got the homie John John the Don in the chat chiming in. My guy, what's up, my brother? How you doing, bro? How you doing? Um, but, yeah, you guys, how, how's everything been in the past two weeks since I haven't been streaming? Hope you guys have been doing well. What have y'all been playing? What have y'all been reading? What have y'all been studying? What have y'all been up to? Talk to me about it. You know, not just entertainment-wise. Talk to me about some personal shit. Talk to me about some um, uh, accomplishments in life. Talk to me about some not-so-great stuff in life. This, this is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it's all about. Feel free. Let's go ahead with a $2 super chat from Artsy Avanti. T for Aerith. Okay, what do we talk about? Are we talk about character wise. Are we talking about play style? Are we talking about in the bedroom? Well, honestly, you guys already know my answer. It's going to be a short one. It's going to be Tifa, man. It's got to be Tifa. You just, Tifa, Tifa alongside Chun Li were one, some of my first, not even just video game crushes, but fictional crushes, man. You just look at characters like that and you're just like, damn, bro damn like like god was really cooking in the studio when he gave these people the tools to design you bro and that's literally what tifa is and just to show how great of a character tifa is bro tell me how her remake design is somehow better than her og design i do not understand that but you know what it's just one of those things in life that you can't change you it's, it's a canon event and if you try to alter the canon in this case it only gets that much more powerful and that's what Tifa Lockhart is, man. She she just she's the best, bro. And then her play style and remake and rebirth. Oh fuck, bro. Absolutely insane. I be feeling like I'm playing Spider-Man PS5 up in that shit, bro. Cause she just be giving all these damn moves. It's just crazy. Oh, I love Tifa, man. And she's got nice tits too. So there's that. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just be real about life for a second. But Tifa, she's a, she's beautiful. She's got a great smile, great personality. She's in shape. She can she can knock the fuck out of somebody. Tifa's great. Now, Arif, on the other hand. Arif is cool, too. I like Arif. You know, she's cutesy. She's whimsical. Stuff like that. And, you know, she's just, unfortunately, she's just, she's dealt a really bad card, man. She's just a really, dealt a really bad card in this damn game, bro. And it's really sad when you consider it's like, damn. <laughs> it's literally just, damn. Now, I'm not going to say much more considering, I'm not going to say much more. But, yeah, man. Bro was gone a whole month. I wasn't gone a whole month. I was just I was I was just down here two weeks ago. I mean before, yeah, I was gone a whole month. But before, it was two weeks. It had been two weeks. Um, but yeah, man, nah. Tifa, Tifa is the best. She's she's just awesome. Like I, I will accept no slander. No slander whatsoever. Now Yuffie, Yuffie, on the other hand, is a very close second in terms of play style, in terms of adorability. Tifa's Tifa is top tier. Yuffie is just like adorable as fuck. And her She's fucking broken, bro. You be playing as Yuffie in Rebirth, dude. <laughs> like, she was already top tier in that Integrate DLC. But what she got going on in this one, huh, 
dude, you 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 pair Yuffie up, and she's able to split this. Like, you know how there's that synergy skill where you can split the ATB bar into three separate bars. Yuffie just be going to town, man. It's just fucking insane the stuff you're able to pull off. Off rip too, bro. Off rip. Just wait till you get later in the game. It gets insane. Ah, uh, but um, yeah, man. I would definitely say uh, Tifa. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let me see. Let's see. Um, Yo, Neil with that fresh cut. Oh yeah, you know I got I got a little haircut last week. Nothing crazy. I'm still growing my hair out. My hair, my hair is it's currently curled right now. Not properly curled since I haven't cur I didn't curl it today at all. But it's like still curled from like two days ago. But yeah, I'm just I'm gonna be growing my hair out again. Like if I pick this shit out, it's like a whole afro. But yeah, I'm just chilling, man. Just chilling, just like a nice little shape up. Nothing, cr nothing crazy, you guys. Um. Roosevelt says, will you also watch the Rebuild movies? Uh, so I've already seen all four of the Rebuild films. Uh, this rewatch is specifically just the OG anime series in preparation for End of Evangelion, which was attached to uh, that continuity. So, yeah, this is just specifically that. Uh, let's see. Pulling an all-nighter simple pull an all -nighter simple as that. Jesus Christ, man. I mean, dude, honestly, I, I was high-key considering it for rebirth just because i want to get through the majority of the game as soon as possible before i start losing like this you guys remember how i told you when it comes to like playing certain games um like i have this desire this drive to keep playing games and if i lose that drive i just go to do something else like reading or like watching a tv show or an anime that's why you guys will see me do like five different anime reviews on twitter and it's just like where's the gaming i ain't been playing games like that and then like literally it's like i'll finish like five different tv shows or you know in this case I'll, i'm doing a lot of gaming now i'm trying to make sure i don't lose that drive and i don't think i will considering with rebirth I'm playing through it. I'm okay. So you know what? Fuck it. Let's just. All right. You know, let's just talk about rebirth because I want to get rebirth out of the way very, very quickly. Not to say I'm trying to like ignore it, but I just want to give my thoughts on it because we're all we're just we're jumping back and forth discussing some certain things. Okay. So first off, five dollar super chat coming in from the homie. Long live Kevin Samuels. Yes, sir. Did you know that some guys think Tifa's boobs are too small in the remake and are mad and think it's still censorship? I don't understand that, bro. Especially if you see the scene on Costa de Sol where she's in that bathing suit. I'm just like, my brother in Christ, if you think that shit is small, what does your wife look like? But they don't have wives. So that's literally what it is. They don't got girlfriends. None of that stuff. Donald Tucker says this is the part where I go to sleep. Oh, damn. I see how it is. So you could stay awake when we're talking about food fix, Dick, Dine, and Dash. But the second we talk about Rebirth, you're just like, I sleep. All right, Don. I see. I see where your, your, your morals lie. I see how it is. Her thangs were thanging, bro. Absolutely. Yo, listen. If you gave Tifa some thick thighs, bro, it's fucking over, bro. I'd be barking like a dog, man. Um. Anyways, okay. All right, let's talk about uh, let's talk about let's talk about Final Fantasy uh, Seven Rebirth for a second. Now, first things first, because I know some people are still playing it, or some people are um, in the process of finishing up one game to get into the game. We're not going to be talking about no spoilers for the game, nothing crazy whatsoever. Because honestly, you guys know me; I'm not that type of person. I don't like just discussing spoilers until I beat the game and say, "Hey, this is a spoiler discussion." Hello. Um, so we're not going to get into that. Um, I've been playing the game. I'm about thirty hours in. Um, about to get to chapter nine, and your boy Neo's got some thoughts. Now, first things first, you guys know Rebirth. I, I have not been as anticipated for a game like Rebirth probably since Persona 5 Vanilla, and that was back in 2017. I've been excited for games, don't get it twisted. You know, I get excited for Devil May Cry, I get excited for Fire Emblem Three Houses, get excited for Tears of the Kingdom, things like that. But in the sense that, like, a game, there's always a game or two that come along that just give you that childlike excitement where you're just, like, counting down the days and you just keep thinking about it. But the only difference now, being a grown-ass adult, is that I don't I don't necessarily watch as much content as I used to because I'm trying to go into things as fresh as possible so things feel like a surprise. You know, growing up as a person who covered a lot of these games as they were coming out, I would look up every single piece of information, watch every single dev diary. You know, scour the internet for, like, translation scans for things in Japan. Things like that. Nowadays, I, I don't really feel compelled to do that. Um, probably because I have other stuff going on in life. And then also just because with the way a lot of uh, media nowadays, especially movies, they just show way too much in the trailers. And I was starting to notice that a bit with Rebirth with a lot of the trailers and content they were putting on. I was just like, no. So I, I if it wasn't put in front of a conference I was watching, like, let's say a state of play 
or you know the game awards i just didn't watch it you know i didn't even play the demo i didn't even download the demo i was i was this close i was getting very close to it but i was just like no i'm, I'm gonna wait i can wait 30 days and i did and overall man overall the game the game fucks the game is great there's a lot of stuff that i am really really loving about rebirth it's fixing a lot of things that i have an issue with final fantasy 7 remake it's fixing a lot of things that i had issue with particular square enix translations as they translate their games from japanese into english which you know deuce right here is bringing out a big point about that um it's not perfect though and i i'm not saying that as a guys that are like oh yes a game has to be perfect to be good um it's definitely got some issues it's definitely got some things that uh me personally as a fan of proper pacing i'm not fucking with um but overall the game itself is great the game itself is solid the things that if you really liked final fantasy 7 remake and the things that you really enjoyed in remake if you really enjoyed the uh combats of the game rebirth is fucking incredible is, is i incredible ain't the word to use to describe the combat in final fantasy 7 rebirth bro it is insane it's that game on steroids bro with so much more to do so much you can do to spec your characters like so freaking much so many different characters so many different play styles so many different ways to just like like have great synergy with your trio phenomenal stuff if you were a fan of seeing the world of final fantasy 7 just explored with so much more intimate care and detail rebirth is fucking incredible because remake was a very small sliver of that story it was the Midgar section it was only the first couple of hours and it was very controversial to take the first five hours and stretch it into 35 hours. You know, two remakes detriment. There was a shit ton of unnecessary padding in that game. Rebirth is kind of like just that open, airy portion of Final Fantasy VII where there's just so much stuff, right? There's just so much stuff involving the characters and things. And it's just like, hey, here's that, but in modern day video game design um for better or for worse you know what i'm saying there's a shit ton of stuff to do in final fantasy 7 rebirth um stuff involving the characters getting closer with the characters a lot of that stuff it's great however there are some caveats which we'll touch on later um if you're just looking for a lot of the things that you really enjoyed in rebirth i highly recommend checking i mean remake i highly recommend checking out rebirth so we're going to start at some of the things that just off the rip. I'm going to get the cons out of the way first because the cons, they don't. The cons of this game do not outweigh the pros of it, right? So when I'm saying some things about it that I'm critical of, don't take that as a guys that like, oh, why are you even playing the game? Because there are some games where... I'll say the cons and then I'll drop the game and be like, I'm, I'm done with this rebirth. It's there's still a lot of good stuff that I'm playing right now that is keeping me invested in the world and to see what they do with this interesting, not remake, not reimagining of the Final Fantasy seven saga, you know, not just the original game, but the supplemental material and just the the meta version the meta viewing i should say of final fantasy the self-awareness and all that um so let's get the cons out of the way um and this is something that can be addressed as time goes on considering it is still the first couple of weeks of the game uh your mileage may vary in terms of the game and how it looks so one of the first cons i had was that when you boot up the game the game at least for like the first two chapters looks very rough now i don't know if this is uh, like just an overall technical issue with like the earlier sections of the game compared to later portions of the game but the game itself looks very very rough at times in the first two chapters um so much to the point where it's just like there's a lot of missing assets from the game like they're legitimately some things that just don't have textures and i know that was the joke in the first game final fantasy 7 remake there was a door that had no textures but here you see that on a much grander scale because the game is open-ended all right open world and all that shit um and then when you combine that with the fact that like for a lot of people i assume they're playing the game on performance mode which i go back and forth with depending on my mood i'm i'm, I'm, a, I'm a psychopath in that respect um the game itself the resolution can be pretty low at times so when you combine the lack of textures low resolution 
you get some really fugly looking characters and environments. It's it's just not that pretty. But the weirdest thing is that that's only really for like the first two chapters of the game. I don't know why. I don't know if this is just something wrong with those chapters or what. But the further along you get in the game as you see like more environments, like the game itself looks a hell of a lot better. And, you know, it's, it's just it's so friggin strange, man. And yes, if you do play it on graphics mode, you are getting a, a, a cleaner image across the board by comparison to performance. Um, but even so, I've noticed there's just something there's something funky looking about the characters. And I don't know if that's an Unreal Engine 4 problem per se, because I noticed like on some small granular level, Kingdom Hearts 3 had an issue like this, but not to the same degree. Kingdom Hearts 3 was more visually consistent across the board. Um, but when you look at with Rebirth, it's just like, maybe it is because it's just a little bit more realistic compared to Kingdom Hearts that they can't really hide those um, imperfections as well with something that's just more um, stylized, like Kingdom Hearts versus uh, Final Fantasy, which it is still stylized, but it's more realistic stylized, if you guys get what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, like, like as far as like minor complaints, blemishes, the game itself... It does not look as good as it could. Um, as far as it being a PS5 only title, I expected a hell of a lot better. Like, it looks good. Don't get it twisted. But PS5 only? No. Like, I'm, I'm just looking at something like Horizon Forbidden West, which, yes, I know, different studios, different engines. Um, but I'm looking at a game and what they pull off in that game, and I'm just like, come on now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe the game needed a little bit more time in the oven. And I'm sure that with the inevitable PC release in a year... It will iron out the rest of these issues. And who knows? They might release a, a remastered version on PlayStation 6 that we can all look forward to. Please be excited. Um, so, yeah. Those minor visual blemishes aside. Um, my main... The bulk of my complaint with Rebirth. And again, I'm not going to get into spoilers. The bulk of my complaint with Rebirth has to do with... Again, like I'm nine chapters into the game. Um... How the game wrestles away your control to do other shit that, to be honest, if I'm being real, as somebody who loves Final Fantasy and RPGs and shit like that, shit that's that's counterproductive to the narrative, right? I understand the concept of pacing. I understand that when you're telling this story and you're going on this adventure with characters, there's there's it can't just be action 24-7. I get that. Yes, that, that's just how it is. Sometimes you have to have those moments of levity where the characters are just, just doing random shit like they're on a beach or whatever. Like, yeah, by all means, go ahead and do that. But when that starts happening a little too often to the point where it becomes sizable hours of your enjoyment... It gets frustrating. So the mini games aspect, yes, of course, present in the OG, sure, better than they were in the OG, absolutely. But when it gets to a point where it's like, okay, not really much is happening right now with the story. Play all these mini games to get all these things. So you get the beach suits, and then you have this awesome battle, and then it just gets really slow, and then you reach another point where it's just dragged out. It's one of those situations where. As a player, it's just like, what are we even doing here, right? Like this portion of Final Fantasy VII, where it was in the original, this is the moment where a lot of these characters, you're, you're really getting intimate with the characters, right? The majority of the story in Final Fantasy VII happens in Midgar, and it happens, well, where part three is going to end, well, where it's going to start. That's where the crazy shit, like the stuff that most people are going to recall happens right there. Beginning and end. Not the end is in the final act, but like literally, you know, the last third, I should say. The first third, last third. Second third is just like this moment where the characters are just like going around and doing stuff and this, that, and third. And it's like, oh shit, here we go. And that's to the benefit of getting to know the characters. And, and that's one of the rebirth strengths. One of the rebirth strengths is having those moments where you can get close with the characters and you're you're forming this bond with it. It's kind of like Mass Effect in a sense, where it's like, okay, I'm doing these things with these characters. It doesn't really matter to the main story, not necessarily, but it's great character building moments and you love it. And that's, that's one of the things that, you know, why Final Fantasy VII is so revered throughout history is be because of the, the characters and the dynamics and the situations. That stuff is great. Um... My problem is with this experiment that they're doing, taking the story of seven and splitting it across three games, you're taking a 40 hour story, which, okay, right? 40 hours, PlayStation 1 game, 1997. 40 hours, 
for five hours in Final Fantasy VII Remake. 40 to 50 hours with Rebirth, that's second, third. And I assume another 40 to 50 hours with the third game, Revengeance, we'll call it that. Because we can't say Reunion because they already did Reunion for Crisis Core. Um, that's 120, 130 hours for just the main campaign where you have to question, did they really need that much more? Like, is it really worth those extra character dynamics and moments for all the other unnecessary padding? And like I said, I'm only on chapter, about to be on chapter nine. So from my understanding, it keeps getting a little more dragged out, which I'm not really a big fan of, especially when you're getting into the what you would assume to be the climax of the game, the last, you know, like four, five, six chapters. I'm kind of nervous about that. So my thought process from playing it now to when I get to that point, when we talk about it again next week, could fundamentally change for the worse. It absolutely could and be like, what the fuck are we doing? Because as it stands right now, forcing mini games into the plot is to me, it's like have the mini games as an option, have it as an option. If people want to play and hundred percent, it. I have no problem with them having supplemental content and material in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like queen's blood, queen's blood. I think queen's blood is a fantastic addition for the game. I think the idea of having that be its own meta, and how you can challenge different players is awesome. And it's a lot of fun. Queen Queen's Blood is essentially Yu-Gi-Oh. That's all it is, bro. Because you you be getting heat in, heated in some of those matches. Um, it's awesome. Um, but then when you start making me go do stuff for Queen's Blood. And make it as part of the main story. Because you're trying to make it essentially a glorify tutorial. I'm just not a fan of that stuff. Like, I know they're trying to get people acclimated to this stuff. And what better way than to shove it into the campaign. But why am I fucking playing hide and seek, go find the Cactor, and returning segways like I'm a Paul Blart on Mall Cobb? Like, I just, come on now, bro. Like, there's moments of levity that you could do with the characters, and you can have fun, and just stuff that's off the beaten path. And, and then there's stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, a moment of brief levity that is actually kind of cool and great is, and this is not a spoiler, because if you guys played the demo, you've seen it. There's the piano mini game, and then... With one particular mission in it, you play as Tifa and you have to play her theme. I, I think that's fucking great. I think that is awesome because the music in the game is phenomenal. We all love Tifa. We can all agree on that. And, dude, just having this little tiny mission that has no real consequential you know, contribution to the main story at hand. Like, absolutely. Go ahead and do that. But when I'm over here playing beep beep, go collect all the multicolored segues and create Voltron and shit. Like I'm like, fam, what are we really doing here? What are we doing here, man? And it's just it's it's moments like that where I'm just it's like, come on now, come on. Oh, uh, shout out to all the people who've been joining in between. We got video game lover, we got Ace Breaker, we got Ghost Rider, uh, Ramadan Mubarak to you too, Ghost Rider. We got Sora Life Story, we got Nobody, we got Steel Rain, we got Ivan. What's going on, gentlemen? Um, so. Yeah, you know, like, my main issue is that a lot of this stuff is tied to the main story. I wouldn't like it to be tied to the main story. If it's just supplemental for the world and stuff and, and you know, things that you need to do to 100% and get the platinum, by all means, go for it, bro. Because there is a lot. There is a lot. This man said, Neo in the sports jersey got me acting up. What's good, y'all? Don't you got some woman to be acting up in, fam? Pause. Pause, man. <laughs> relax relax bro holy fuck um <laughs> um but in terms of like okay some of the stuff that could be good or bad depending there's a shit ton of stuff to do in this game so one of uh, a lot of people's complaints with remake was that the side missions were god awful with the exception of i think one quest line the side missions in that game were so bad something about a lot of these games a lot of open world games do not know how to make good side quests you know if it's not the witcher 3 or you know, Baldur's Gate 3 or... Wow, a lot of games with 3 in the title. A lot of games just don't know how to do good side quests. Um, Re Rebirth has better side quests by comparison. Especially by comparison to Final Fantasy 16. Good God, Final Fantasy 16 side quests were ass. Um, this one has better side quests. There's more variety for the side quests. There's, it's definitely all about 100% of the map and exploration and Chadley and just gaining all that intel for him. And like literally, if you are a person that likes to do stuff in a game to max it out, yeah, this game has a lot of stuff for you, bro. You literally can go and just 
Dude, there is so much stuff that, and it's really not that far off the beaten path to do some of this stuff. But it got to a point, I think when I was in like the first region where I was just like, I'm doing a little too much. I got to go back, dial it into the main campaign. And that's what I did. But if you're one of those people who just likes to go seek out the radio towers and who likes to go and just like find these hidden things with a bunch of materials to um, make new things. Uh, who just likes to go get a chocobo and do stuff with the chocobo and all that stuff. Like, there's a lot to do, especially gathering the intel so you can do the boss fights and everything. Like, there's a lot to do in this game. Are they on the level of Witcher 3? No. <laughs> no games come close to Witcher 3 side quests, man. It's just no games. Like I said, I have to finish up Baldur's Gate 3, and then I can comment on that. But right now, Witcher 3 to me is just a gold standard. A lot of people are saying Cyberpunk. That makes sense because it's from the same developer. But... Yeah, um, there's a lot to do in this game. Whether or not the, the quest will stand the test of time remains to be seen, but I I don't see it as that intrusive. I see that as them adding in more content, and from my understanding, you get a lot of good stuff, neat stuff, and it rewards you for it, which is great. Because the last thing I want to do is do a bullshit-ass side quest just to, like, just to build up a percentage like oh you're 100 percent done with the game cool but when you give me like extra shit on top of that and you make it worth my while absolutely bro absolutely so i i view this as like the so, okay somebody already said in the comment section it's basically extra polished ubisoft level stuff there we go there we go <laughs> um but yeah man final fantasy 7 rebirth i mean i'm enjoying it as a final fantasy fan it's great uh, there's a lot of good stuff in the game there's a shit ton of more content compared to Remake. Um, as far as the story and what they're doing with this experiment, like I said, I'll speak more on that when I finish the game because there, are, there is still a lot more stuff that is going to be happening in the story. I can just tell. And uh, yeah, we'll be back. We will be back to go ahead and um, speak on the rest of it. I'll hopefully have this game done within the next, I want to say next two weeks. I'm just looking at my schedule at hand, my work week this week and... Okay, so thankfully next week, thankfully next week, I do not have any obligations and events with people. So next Wednesday, Corey, we are going back to the Kingdom Hearts Data Battle streams. I'm sorry about that, my friend. We will be back with that Wednesday night because um, I don't have anything else happening. There's no other, none of that shit. None of that. <laughs> uh, I'm just literally, I'm just thinking in my mind because normally I have my calendar on my phone and I was just like, no, there's nothing there. But yeah uh so yeah no we, we if i put in some more time i should have it done within two weeks uh shout out to the homie daniel pack who just uh subbed to the phantom weirdo tier i appreciate you the penguin enforcer i appreciate you my guy um and we got a two dollar super chat from don otaku 60 dollars tales of arise is better than a 210 dollars final Fantasy 7 remake well i don't know man it might be more than 210 dollars with the way these d game publishers are talking about raising prices again could be like 80 bucks man who knows do you think Rebirth is a Game of the Year winner? Um, I'm kind of hesitant to speak on what's Game of the Year quality and caliber until I finish the game. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up like in the top six. I, I could see that. Because I'm looking ahead at the games that are coming out. Like Dragon's Dogma 2, Rebirth right now I feel like are the two games that are leading the discussion. And then you have Infinite Wealth of course. Persona 3 Reload would be a crazy inclusion. Um, but... Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm looking ahead at, like, the rest of the games that are coming out this year. And honestly, okay, so, we we talked about this, like, a few weeks ago on the, on the stream. I know that much. But, guys, this year, dude, like, this year, I wouldn't be surprised if I only complete 10 games, but they are all long-ass RPGs. Because, like, Persona 5 Royal, yeah, it's not a game that came out this year. But I've played through that entire game through completion. You know, I've clocked 120 hours. And then from that, I went directly into Rebirth. And Rebirth, I already know. I mean, with Rebirth, I'm just being honest, guys. Like, I'm just going through the main campaign now. And I'll probably go back and I'll do um, the supplemental material if I have some free time. Because right now, I just want to focus on the campaign. Because I have so many other games coming out. Um, so, I'm going to go through Rebirth. And then directly after Rebirth, I'm going to go back into Persona 3 Reload. Flame says, yeah, I had to force you to finish Royal. Yes, you did. And look look how much happier we are as a culture, as society, that we could do that. You know what I'm saying? Listen, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. 
Uh, <laughs> shout out to Flame. But, you know, Persona 3 Reload, I know... So the funny thing with Rebirth was that I said that after I finished Rebirth, I'm going straight into Infinite Wealth. Because it's been a while since I've seen, like, Ichiban. And I just played through Persona 5 Royal, so I need a Persona break. Because Persona 5 Royal, even though I love the game, that you guys know that game wore me the fuck out, bro. Like, I was doing... 12 rounds in the ring with that game man it was just it was a lot you know it was, it was just a little too long in a lot of places um a little too long didn't have enough meat it just mm. um but at the same time persona 3 reload now here's the thing persona 3 reload i put a couple of hours into it nothing crazy but i've been playing it exclusively and this is how i keep myself like sane i've been playing it exclusively through Xbox cloud streaming, which I know is strange, but whenever I'm like out and about, whenever I'm like just chilling, like let's say if I'm on break at work or uh, I have a, like, let's say if it was like I'm doing laundry or something or just like wherever I'm out and I have a sizable amount of time, like from getting oil change or whatever, um, I just take out my uh, backbone attachment right here and I just play it. And surprisingly over 5G, I get a really good experience in that game, man. And it's surprising. Because you guys know me. I don't really care for cloud streaming like that. But I was playing Persona. And honestly, I would only ever play turn-based RPGs through cloud streaming. I know a lot of people play other stuff. Some people play <laughs> some shooters and shit. I can't do that. Um, but if I'm doing something like Persona, that's fantastic over cloud streaming, man. So I was like surprised. I, I put like, like three, four hours into Reload. And the thing that was so strange about Reload is that I thought that I would just be, like, so burnt out of the Persona formula after just playing through 5 Royal. That I played Reload and I was like, nope. Because the second I hit that intro, bro. And, dude, that intro for Persona 3 Reload, like the, the song in the beginning. That thing left me speechless, bro. Because I had not seen... That intro up until today, because you guys know I don't I don't be watching nothing, no type of content or footage. And Flame and everyone kept sending me that freaking intro. Like, you gotta watch it, you gotta watch it, you gotta watch it. It's so good. And I'm just like, no, I'm not going to. I'm gonna wait till I play the game. Cause I don't want to just watch an intro and say, Oh yeah, I can't wait to play the game because the intro is so good. I only do that for games like Alan Wake 2, where I listen to the Herald of Darkness and I'm obsessed with that song, yet I haven't played the second game yet. I will soon. I will soon. Um but yeah, the intro for Persona 3 Reload, in my opinion, that's the best Persona intro that has ever been handcrafted. It is better than Persona 5 OGs. It's better than the original Persona 3. It, it's just fantastic, man. And it's one of those songs that from like an aesthetic standpoint, one thing I love is that it still kept the OG Persona 3 style, but now it's like in 4K. It's, it's like the Final Fantasy Rebirth effect, where you know how people looked at those things when they were younger? And they had this image in their mind. And then you look back on it and you're just like, wow, it didn't really look that good. But at the time, our boundless imagination, it, it made it seem bigger than it was. That's kind of like what the Persona 3 Reload is. It's new. Obviously, you can tell. But at the same time, it still feels like that game that came out, believe it or not, almost 20 years ago. It's absolutely insane. Um, it's it's so good from like just like breaking it down scene by scene. And then the the music, dude, it, I I didn't realize how much I fucking missed Lotus Juice until I heard this man on the track again, bro. And I, this might be recency bias. It might be. But I feel like Lotus Juice has created some of the best music he's ever done for this game. And I'm just like, this motherfucker has not lost it, bro. Like, it's crazy. Um... But it's so good. And then if you listen to the lyrics of the uh, the song that they do in the intro, it, it like, if you play the OG Persona 3, you just get mad fucking nostalgic, especially the final line, man. <sighs> but uh, yeah, no, um, from a presentation standpoint, with this is not a first impression of, of Reload, but like, it kind of is. Um, they've taken like some of the elements from Persona 5, you know, modern Persona elements um and brought that into reload but at the same time they still made sure it's like hey this is persona 3 here this is fucking persona 3 man um and it's great man um the new cast of the game uh i was kind of surprised at how easy it was for me to get acclimated to them because you know it is a brand new cast by comparison to the og 
Um, but I feel like everyone's doing a really good job so far, especially shout out to my black brother, Zeno Robinson as Junpei. Junpei is one of the best Persona characters. You guys know this. And that he just, he just did the fucking thing, bro. Like Vic Mignogna was great as Junpei. But then Zeno comes in and it's just like, oh, this is not any fucking different, bro. It's great. He's awesome, bro. He's great. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Pers Listen, I'm not. Persona 4 Golden's intro is great. And the original Persona 4 intro is great. But there's just something about Reload. It just has this this, this energy to it, man. It has this energy to it. This energy. Keep the fucking bicep beat of dirt. I can't even see. The energy. Fucking energy, man. Um... But yeah, shout out to my black brother, Zeno. Um, but no, I think what's really gotten me out of that funk with Reload, even though I've only put four hours into it, is that Persona 3, at least when I'm comparing it to 4 and 5, especially 5, Persona 3 just got the shit rolling quick, dude. Like, it just literally just like... Like, you know, Persona 5 just, like, eases you into everything. Reload is just like, man, what the fuck? Here you go. What's that thing? Listen, I don't know, man. Get the fuck up out of bed. Let's go. Like, it's just straight to the point, man. Straight to the point. Um, <laughs> And then it's it just, it just, it's, it, it, it's like a breakneck pace, man. And I fucking love it. It's like, yes, dude. But at the same time, it doesn't, like, sacrifice itself to have a breakneck pace. It's good. It's good in that respect. And I think because it is Persona 3 and it was... Persona 3 was the last, like, mm, I don't want because, you know, 4 and 5 had their dark moments, but, like, 3 was the last Persona game that wasn't as sanitized, you know? I mean, that is not to say that the shit that the characters went through in 4 is any less bleak, but you look at the aesthetic and the vibe of 3, and you're just like, oh, damn, bro, you know? So, I think... After I finish Rebirth, I'm going to dive full on into Reload and just and just immerse myself back into Persona 3. And honestly, it's just there's a there's a lot of blue in my life now ever since I started playing that game, man. I'm just noticing blue everywhere, like blue themes on Chrome. My background is freaking Persona 3 Reload. My jersey is blue. I have Blu-rays everywhere. This bottle of 1800 tequila is what? Blue? This is insane, guys. This is insane. But, yeah, after I do Reload, uh, Infinite Wealth, I have to do that because I've been putting that off. And then after that, guys, I'm going to take a break from big-ass JRPGs because that's like one, two, three, four in a row. And Infinite Wealth will most likely take me all the way into, like, the beginning of the summer just based off, like, my trajectory. And I'm going to finish up the Xenoblade Chronicles 3... Um, uh expansion future redeemed because i'm like halfway through that but that'd be like 10 hours so i can finish that and then once i do that i'm probably gonna play one or two smaller games that have been on my backlog finish those up and then once i do that i'm gonna take a gamble and dive into this one game that the the streets be talking about don otaku you can come back you can wake up don otaku you can wake up bro you can wake up now i'm gonna go ahead and play that unicorn overlord game that everybody has been talking about you know from vanilla where you know they did 13 sentinels they just ran which i'm like halfway through i really gotta finish that shit they did um uh i think what did they do odin sphere as well um they did uh uh D dragon's crown uh what else did they do i think yeah i remember them mainly from dragon's crown and yeah and and 13 sentinels but that unicorn overlord that game people have been talking about. People have just been going insane. And it's not just like the usual suspects who are like, yeah, this is a great game. I'm talking about like everybody else be like, yo, this shit is hot, bro. I don't even know what this is about. I'm like, what? So I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. That's going to be my game that I play in the summer. And, and then from there, man, honestly, and then from there, the only game that I'm re that's really on my radar if we're talking like RPGs is uh, Metaphor Refantasio. And that comes out at the end of the year, I believe. Whether it's fall or winter, I'm not sure. But that's going to be the next big game from the Persona team. So I'm excited for that. But yeah, it's 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 a, it's a fucking... It's a great year if you're an RPG fan, man. It is such a good time, bro. There's so many games to play. You know, Atlas alone... What? Persona 3 Reload. They published the Unicorn Overlord game. Um, you know, Sega. You know, well, Sega's mainly winning because they've... <laughs> 
they have all these fucking studios and shit. Um, but it's a lot, man. It's 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 great. Like, oh, and you know the funny thing is the homie Jason. Oh, he just brought it up. He dropped Rebirth for Unicorn Overlord, which is crazy because, like, to drop a game like Rebirth, we were all looking forward to, and then this game that comes out of nowhere, it's just like, hey, listen, it demands your attention. That, that's fucking insane. But I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I am excited, bro. It's, it's a great time. It's a great time to play fucking video games, man. Japan is killing it, bro. Stellar Yams is coming out, but I can't listen. All right. So there are going to be some games that unfortunately will have to be snubbed for a while. Stellar Yams. I'm looking forward to Stellar Yams, but listen, I got, I got, I got a pair of yams out here in the real that I can go to, and they are very much so stellar. Stellar Yams will have to take the back seat for the time being. Um, it hurts my heart. It hurts my heart, but Dragon's Dogma 2, I can't in good conscience go out and buy that game, man, because I'm going to have no time to play it, because I'm still going to be working through Rebirth, and I don't want to just sit on the shelf. I might just buy a copy to support, because, you know, I've been waiting for that shit for a long time. So I might buy a copy to support, and that'll be like my just one copy, like, hey, listen, I'm support, and there's that. Uh, and KDN says, what's up? I was rebirthing. Hey, yo. This man said he was rebirthing. That sounds crazy, bro. <laughs> hey, shout out to you. Um... Two dollars super chat from Abachi. Cast an American live action persona Netflix film. An American live action persona Netflix film. Well, honestly, bro, if we're talking like teenagers and shit, I don't really, really, I don't know all the teenagers that are working today, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not really watching a lot of the shows where teenagers are the main focal point. Like the last show I watched that had a predominantly teenage cast was um Wednesday, and yeah, Jenna Ortega. But I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. So I honestly, if I were to do a persona Netflix film, it'd be adults, bro. Like they'd be like adults, bro. And at that point, wouldn't I just be making a live action like a dragon movie? Infinite Wealth. <laughs> uh, Marcus Doyle Terrell, who's been a member for the past 42 months of the Phantom Weirdo tier. I appreciate you, my brother. Marcus says this year with my gym journey, I'm leaning to have a better relationship with food and not worrying about eating out too much. How do you handle it? Uh, uh, great question, Marcus. Great question. So how do you balance, um, well, how do you balance and having a healthy relationship with food and then worrying about going off track when you go out to eat? The way I look at it is like this, and it's so simple, but it bears repeating. I look at everything in life as balance. It's cliche to say, yes, like yeah, for every single, you know, cake that you consume you must eat 10 carrots not shit like that i don't view it like that but i look at it like this throughout the course of a week we have x amount of hours we have x amount of time to do stuff and then when we take away all of that time from you know our obligations like work personal development family members shit like that we have the time that we use for the gym eating out all that stuff blah 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 so I look at it like this. If you are putting in the work in the gym, right? If you're putting in the work in the gym a couple times a week, you're making sure that when you go to the gym, you actually show up to the gym and you work and you're not just bullshitting. You're actually pushing yourself. You're breaking a sweat. You're tracking your workouts, all that stuff. You're doing your cardio. Very important to do the cardio year round. Um, and then when you come home, you're eating clean. You're making sure you hit your macros. If you're doing that stuff and you're making that part of your routine on the day to day where it doesn't feel like you're having to put in this extra effort. Yeah, going out for beer and wings and a burger is not going to kill you. It isn't, man. Trust me on this. Going out and having that be balanced in your life is more than adequate. Now, I'm not encouraging you to do that and make it as part of your routine. And then you say that, well, I need this because I did all this stuff and I killed myself. But what I'm saying is. Take the cheat meal, go out with your friends, have a few drinks, go out to a family gathering. Don't worry too much if you know, you're know you not getting all your protein here because that's just one isolated incident. You didn't get to be you know, overweight or blah, blah, blah overnight. It took weeks, months, years to get to that point. Just like how when you work out, you don't just suddenly go to the gym one time and have gains. You know, It takes weeks, months, years of proper planning, execution, all that jazz. What you need to do is ingrain those healthy habits, man. Ingrain those healthy habits and make it as part of your routine. So when you have 
a situation where like okay you're going to a place where you don't have macro friendly food or whatever you 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 you, you want to get a chicken salad but they don't have a chicken salad it's no big deal to get that burger man because you know what you're going to do the next day you just got to go back to business as usual you're going to be eating your good foods you're going to be going to the gym maybe do a little bit more cardio if you want but don't let it don't obsess over that fact now what happens is that people use it as an excuse to snowball so if they have a cheat meal one day and they're just like oh you know what i already cheated once this week why not another time that's when you're fucking up the habits that is when you are creating a problem and you shouldn't be in a situation where you are creating problems like that you need to build up i i guess you could say a reservoir of all that goodwill in you that when you have a cheat day or if you're on vacation a cheat week or whatever it's no big deal because if you look at it on a graph 99% of the other times, you're good. So it's not a big deal, man. And that's how you have a good relationship with food. You by just realizing that, hey, listen, I have to put in the work. And then in the situations where I want to treat myself or the situation where I can't have this, it's okay. It's fine, right? It's no big deal. Um, There was something else I did want to say, though. Oh, yeah. This whole thought process of labeling foods clean and dirty you see that a lot especially in the gym world like oh what is clean and what is dirty blah 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 like a burger and wings is dirty but you know ground beef and and grilled chicken best is clean yada yada yada. like yes on a fundamental level of course but what happens with a lot of people who don't have a good grasp and understanding is that they'll view one thing as if it doesn't look exactly like this then it's not clean like for example if i were to show people what i ate on a day-to-day basis they'd be like how the fuck do you eat this and stay in shape because I know how to cook. Learning to cook is very fundamental. Learning to cook is so important. I always tell people, if you can't make at least 10 dishes, then you're not really going to do well for yourself. Unless you want to buy into like services like Factor and all the meal prep services and all that, which if you got the money, yeah, sure, go for it. But, you know, learning to cook is fundamental. And I'm not talking about being a chef. I'm talking about knowing how to make some chicken, knowing how to make some salmon. You know, if you're a vegan, knowing how to make uh, tofu. I don't know what vegans eat. Beans? I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, knowing how to cook those things is important. Um, and knowing how to season. Oh, God, knowing how to season. That's also something we have to have a conversation with some folk about. Some folk more than others. Um, but knowing how to make sure that food tastes good so it can be sustainable year round. You know, like I pretty much eat the same thing on a weekly basis. I rotate through like the same 10 to 20 different type of dishes because that stuff is consistent. I know it works for my body and it's very nutritious for me. I'm getting all my vitamins and my minerals and my greens and everything. And yeah, that stuff you need to focus on, too. It's not just like grilled chicken breast, broccoli and rice, rinse and repeat. It's other things like that. Like, well, you can do more to that chicken breast. You can make it like a, a nice maple chicken. You can do pan soup. You can, you can do so much stuff. Um but again, that's that that comes down to cooking and learning how to cook. And it's 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 things that you learn with time, man. Uh, Marcus says, that's always been my problem. I guilt myself too often whenever I eat out. That's not my cheat day. Well, look at it like this, man. Um, if you guilt yourself too much, maybe it's a situation where you shouldn't be eating out as much. Like if you eat out, like, let's say once a week, that's not a big deal, bro. And again, it depends on what your goals are. Like, what are your goals? If you are just trying to maintain a healthy, active lifestyle, you know, take your shirt off, look good. Eating out once a week is not going to kill you, bro. Because what are you doing? You have a whole cheat day from sunrise to sunset. You wake up, you eat in like a whole on family McDonald's breakfast. And then you go to like Ben and Jerry's and you get like a whole tub of ice cream. And then after that, you come back and you eat like like a family sized bag of chips from Costco or something. Like, what are you even doing on those days, man? Like a 1200 calorie meal one time in a month is not going to kill you, bro. It is, you know, unless, like I said, you, you, you have some goals and some shit you shouldn't be doing. Like, let's say if you're, I don't know if you wanted to train for a, a, a men's physique or a bodybuilding show, probably you shouldn't be eating that stuff. But if you're just an every, every, everyday average person, you know, you have a little bit of abs, you know, you look good with your shirt off. Eh, you're fine, bro. You're okay. I mean, come on now. You got this, bro. But know that when it's time to buckle up, and dial in know that you can just do that because if you have that mindset you're good man like today oh man i got home from the gym well i didn't even get home from the gym i was just like man i really want some ihop bro you know what i did you guys i took my ass to ihop i went to ihop i got myself some sirloin and eggs and then from there i got myself some protein pancakes and then i ate that and i felt good bro and i came home 
And hey, what am I doing? I'm just eating my regular food as usual. And that hot meal wasn't even that bad when you consider it. You know, it's just steak, some eggs, and you know, some pancakes with no sugar syrup. <laughs> you know what? Overthinking, we've all been there, my brother. We have all been there, man. Overthinking can be the death of us. But, you know, it's one of those things where you just, it's just like the daily process. And you just handle it and you tackle it day to day, man. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I always stress cardio year round. I stress cardio year round at least three times a week, 20 minutes, because when you do cardio year round, even if you're not doing it for fat loss purposes, bro, the way your body is able to burn food, this might be completely bro science, I know, but the way your body is able to burn food and and handle food and just like the way it tolerates carbohydrates, if you do all the, all, all that cardio, it's just like you're able to eat more and you don't feel the effects as bad as if you were sedentary and not doing anything. And I've always noticed that. For example, last month, I didn't do any cardio, bro. I just, I wasn't feeling like it, bro. I was like, I'm not, you know, I'll do cardio like once or twice. And bro, I fucking felt it. I fucking felt it when I was not working out and doing cardio. I feel like, I, I feel as weird as it sounds, I felt like I wasn't recovering as much. I felt like every time I ate out, I was just like, oof, you know, but then when I started doing my cardio again, bro, I'm waking up earlier. Every time I eat something, I don't really feel sluggish afterwards. You just feel fucking good, man. And mind you, I get at my side job. I get a lot of activity going around. I walk like 10,000 steps a shift, Um, but it's not, you know, it's a different thing entirely when you have that like cardio added into the mix. It's weird, bro. It's weird. I know. Um, five dollar super chat coming from Don Otaku. Did you watch the Book of Clarence? And if not, why do you hate supporting black creators? Well, did you well did you watch the Magical Society of the Uppity Negroes? Did you watch that, Don Otaku? Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> yeah, be, bro, cardio. Listen, when I say cardio, listen, I'm gonna give you the cheat sheet for sustainable cardio. At least for me, just sustainable year round, three times a week, treadmill. 12.5 incline, 3.0 to 3.5 speed. You can work your way up to that, but 20 minutes doing that, it's basically low intensity after you get used to it. And you just do that, bro. And you just like put on an episode of anime. Like I know some people, they bring their switch and they just play the switch. I'm When I'm in there, I will tell you what I'm doing. When I'm doing that cardio, bro, I'm not watching nothing. I'm not reading nothing. I'm dialed the fuck in, in the zone, even though I don't have to be, but I'm in there and I've got like, like today, for example, bro, I had the Persona 3 reload intro on loop. Like I've probably watched that intro like a hundred times in the past week, man. It's crazy, but I like it because it's just one of those things that get me going and focused and then boom, 20 minutes is done, man. It's great, bro. It's awesome. Cardio is life after weights. That's a cheat right there. Yeah, bro. I'm telling you low intensity cardio, steady state, high incline. Kill two birds with one stone, and you're good to go. Stairmaster, people love Stairmaster as well. That's great. Stairmaster will also inadvertently build some muscles in your in your in your um your posterior chain. So like your glutes, your hamstrings. Not 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 as much as like direct work, but it can help those too. Feel good. And yeah, man, just stay consistent with it. And if you guys don't have access to a gym, but you have access to the great outdoors, and you live in a place that's safe enough, take a walk, man. Take a walk, man. Take a walk. Just get your steps in, and you'll feel better, man. It's uh, it's very, very easy to go ahead and incorporate healthy lifestyles into your routine. I didn't dodge your question, Don Otako. I didn't see Book of Clarence. It, really? I did not see no Book of Clarence, bro. You you know the movies I went out to the theaters and I saw this year. I didn't see it. It just didn't look interesting to me. But did you like it? What, what was the verdict on Book of Clarence? I heard nobody talk about that shit, bro. I'm being real about life, man. Yo, I'm telling you, that Persona 3 reload intro is God's here, my friends. Oh, man. Okay, but you know what, you guys? Uh, okay, first off, shout out to all the people who've been joining in between. Shout out Rex. We got Boosoup. We got Pap in the chat. We got Astro Parrot King. We got all the cool people tonight. If you guys can do me a favor, hit that like button and execute order 66. Appreciate that, you guys. Uh, go ahead and uh, if you guys asked questions in the past like 30 minutes or so when I was discussing rebirth and all the other things, feel free to ask them again if you are listening and I will uh, get to them promptly.
It was an eight out of five, eight out of t eight and a half out of ten. Everything up to the ending was perfect. Highly recommended. Okay. Well, look at that, Donna talking. We need you to review it on your podcast. I'll listen. Uh, what's up, Diesel? How you doing? I participated in a Zoom voice acting masterclass. Oh shit. Okay, Corey. Who held it? King Tai Chi. I'm just lurking in the chat. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Lurk away, my friend. Lurk away. I know some people. You'd be surprised, man. You'd be surprised what some people be using the podcast to do. Like a lot of people do it when they're playing games. I respect that. A lot of people do it when they're at work. I respect that. Salute to y'all. Some people doing it when they're on the toilet. I respect that too, bro. Sometimes, sometimes they just need Neo to talk about like how you can do it and push and persevere through life to deal with constipation. Trust me, I get it. I get it, man. I get it. I salute you guys. Hope everyone has smooth bowel movements. Cause it is not fun being constipated. I was constipated a few weeks ago, bro. I, I thought, man, I, I thought my life was ending. <laughs> oh. Okay, so the mega potato man. Do you have any tips to help to get out of a rut or a funk? I've been struggling mentally. So this is kind of a loaded question because it's the advice that I could give. Uh, it's hard to give like really specific advice to a situation that I don't have all the details to. But all I can do is just lead by example and just help from my personal experiences. Whenever I'm in like a rut, whether it's like a creative rut or I just don't like, you know how like you feel like sometimes your life is on autopilot, you guys, where it's like you just wake up, you go to work, you you go to the gym, you come home, you have your entertainment, your relaxation, and there's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's not a problem. You're finding enjoyment in it, but you just feel like you're missing some type of a spark. We've all been there before. That was definitely me in 2000 and uh a lot of 2022, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and you just, it feels off. Something feels off. And you just can't explain it why. Sometimes you go to the doctor, you see if it's like something wrong with you. Are you deficient in something? Is your thyroid? Is it, you know, I, I know some people are just like, thyroid, nigga, what you talking about? You're 30 years old, bro. But you, you never know for some people, like, because if they're feeling something like bouts of depression or, or certain things like that, it could be linked to something else, like something deeper. I, and I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to categorize things, but, you know, it could be a deeper problem. Um, it could be a vitamin deficiency. It could be an auto autoimmune disorder, not to scare people, but it could be those things. Um, but one thing that I found is to get out of those situations, at least for me, I try to problem solve exactly why I'm feeling like this. Like, when did this start? Why is this starting? What can I do to get out of the scenario? For some people, it could be a work situation. They're not happy in their job, yet they have to work at the job. So they just keep repressing, repressing, repressing certain aspects. And then it translates to affecting other aspects of their life. And they're putting so much more pressure on other aspects of their life to fill the void when they realize that it's not those other things not giving you pleasure. It could be something else that's causing you and it's taking away from your enjoyment. Um, it could be like your relationships with certain people. It could be them just being very soul sucking. They could be draining you and you might not notice it because you've normalized it, but that stuff really does matter. Like the one thing I always tell people is, this, is you really got to protect your peace. Protecting your peace is paramount in life where to me, if I'm able to wake up, go to work, do what I need to do, pay all my bills, and just come home and I sleep and I do all that stuff, to me, that's a good life. You know what I'm saying? Like while I'm working for my goals and the aspirations and the things I want to do, if I have that constant peace where everybody in my personal life, we're all agreeable, we're all on the same page, not to say that we don't have issues, but in a situation where it's like we all humble ourselves. We work towards, we let our love for each other be stronger than our own personal gripes and grievances. And we work through those things. Not to say that we ignore them and tolerate that just because, oh, well, that's my brother. That's my sister. That's my wife. That's my whatever. No, making a conscious effort to better ourselves. That really does help. Because once you're able to do that, yeah. You guys, you were able to unlock so much more potential in your life that you could never, you never thought you could accomplish. And it's something that is so simple, I know, but it is true. 
So it's it's worth examining uh, certain aspects of your life and see what's putting you in that situation. Um, uh, could be stag- stagnation. Um, maybe there's certain things that you really want out of life, but you're not doing, and you just don't know how to get yourself on that track to do that. Um, that's where it starts to become a little uncomfortable. You know, you need to be uncomfortable and try to push yourselves into the situations where you that can help you put you in that right direction. Um, but I think the important thing is to just always persevere, no matter how bad it may seem, no matter how bleak, because the alternative is much worse. Um, so the things that I can tell you on a superficial level is um, find something that you really enjoy and never lose the love for that. You know, never lose that love. Um, not necessarily use that as a crutch for everything else in your life, but you know, if you're really passionate about gaming and playing a lot of games and finishing a lot of the games, keep on doing that. If you want to expand that love into other stuff, like in a creative side, like writing or you know talking about it online, by all means, do that. Um, uh, something I always recommend to men, especially, is uh, physically active because I've noticed with a lot of people, their lives would be one percent better if they were physically active. If they dropped a little bit of weight. If they just stayed consistent, whether it's like running or whether it's like working out or whether it's like a combat sport or, you know, just like whatever physical activity you do and just eating right, cleaning up your diet, like that stuff can help you a lot. It can give you a great confidence boost too. And then once you're able to do that, it's just like, oh shit, I can do anything else. Because, you know, from personal experiences, you know, making those small choices to better your physical health and your your well your physical health comes in the part of your body inside and out but it also helps your mental health too because you're pushing past your limits your boundaries and all the things that you thought were not possible you can achieve them um another thing and uh marcus just brought it up the gym and a barber will change your life yeah like just look at the confidence level a guy exudes after going to the barber shop and the haircut that he gets it's something so simple but when you get that fresh cut you know that fade or you know whatever and then just one person leaves you a comment, you're just like, damn, I feel fucking good. I'm telling you, dude, it's it's just one of those small things. Um, but again, this is just random piece of advice. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, it's obviously your situation, Mega Potato Man, could be completely different from this. Um, but I think it is important to focus on the positive aspects and figure out how to get out of this funk. And sometimes that could just be putting yourself outside your comfort zone to better yourself, no matter how you know, no matter how scary it may appear, um, cause staying in that rut and degenerating, not saying that's what you're doing, but you know, and not knowing a way to get out of it is, is much worse. And as someone who has been in there before, bro, sometimes all it takes is just like a change of scenery and that change of scenery can be different for any person. It could be some, some so simple as going to the gym. For some people, it could be go to the fucking library and just read a random book. It, 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 there's there's a lot of stuff, man. It's crazy. But I'm wishing for the best for you, my guy. Uh, Two-hour super chat from Julian Phoenix. Did you see the Star Wars Acolytes trailer? Yes, I did. I watched the trailer. And honestly, I'm very excited for the show. But I was very underwhelmed by the trailer. I thought that the martial arts was phenomenal. Everything else about the trailer, I don't personally think was a good trailer. It didn't really sell me on getting excited for the show. Everything else surrounding the show, everything they've talked about the show, a deeper dive of the show, is what really sold me. The way they speak about it. That did a hell of a lot more for me than this trailer. I just felt like this trailer was just not that well put together. Like, when you compare it to the Andor trailers and shit like that. But then again, you know, the second trailer for Andor was was a hell of a lot more hype than the first one, so... You know, it's it's a teaser trailer. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But yeah, two episodes are dropping this June. And I'm excited, man. I am excited. Uh, $5 super check coming in from Pooh Bear. How to flirt with a female friend and make it lead somewhere, such as being friends with benefits or maybe a whole relationship. Oh, interesting. Um, Honestly, bro. Again, everything is context dependent. Um, your relationship with that person, how long you've known them. Uh, it's kind of hard to give you just general advice because it could backfire or just could not be applicable. But first things for as far as like flirting with a female friend. Okay. So you've established that you're both friends, right? Honestly, I don't necessarily think it's like, 
Because my whole thing is this, man. My whole thing is being as direct as possible. So first things first, you got to have the riz, man. As the kids say, you got to have the riz, you know. Um, You got to, first off, be a person she's comfortable enough to hang out with. And then hang out with her, get to know her, keep talking to her, and just see where it goes from there. Like, is the chemistry there between you guys? Are you guys having fun when you talk? And then if you have fun when you talk, see if you can hang out. And then if you hang out one time and it's great, do it again and see where it goes from there, man. But definitely make your intentions known. Definitely, you know, break through that friend barrier and stuff like that. Um, and if she's receptive to it, whatever it is, whether it's friends with benefits or a whole relationship, time will tell. Um, but the important thing, Pooh Bear, is to don't lose sleep over it. Don't just talk to this one girl and think that, oh, my God, if it's going great with this one girl. You're imagining like the house, the car, the kids, the white picket fence, the dog, you know, breakfast every morning, eating a slice of toast. And when your wife prepared this whole spread and you say, got to go, honey, like, <laughs> don't do that because we've all done that, myself included. Um, Just treat it as a normal conversation. And if you're getting some feelers thrown out and you're throwing feelers back and there's good, good vibes all around, keep it going. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, man. But the important thing is, bro, to keep doing your own shit, bro. Like, don't you be sitting here and, you know, canceling your plans with family members or friends or whatever to do this. Like, just, just, like, don't spend way too much time obsessing over this, you know? Just, like, have the riz to just talk to somebody. And trust me, as weird as it sounds, the less you care, the easier this shit will be. Because the more confident, the more natural you are with how you're trying to, like, court, the more, like, it, it just it, it exudes confidence even more, man. It's the craziest thing. Because you're not trying to be so thirsty. Like your boy Neo is right now. Because he's always thirsty. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always thirsty. Uh, Mega Potato Man says, basically, I had a home invasion and the neighbor falsely accused me of hitting dude with a bat ever since I've been in a rock and a hard place. Shit, bro. Yeah, like I said, it's very, again, every situation is context dependent. So that's insane. I've had a home invasion and the neighbor falsely accused me of hitting dude with a bat. So wait, you had a home invasion and you were defending yourself and this person accused you of that don't make sense. Uh, on their part, that don't make sense. Narukami says, I started going to the gym consistently and I changed my hairstyle. I feel so much better now. Dude, I'm telling you, motherfuckers go to the gym and then get a nice haircut and they just, their lives are changed. It's true. It's fucking true, bro. And then you just work on yourself mentally and you're good, man. Mad people are complaining that the acolyte looks woke now, although I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I ain't going front, though. I'm not one of those people. But I saw old buddy's hairstyle and I said, fuck. <laughs> now it's in Star Wars too. That fucking Killmonger type aesthetic. Oh my God, bro. I'm sick of this shit. In, 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 in entertainment, there are only like three black hairstyles. You either bald, an afro, or you got the Killmonger cut. This is killing me, bro. This is fucking killing me, bro. <laughs> this is killing me. Going to be moving out of Texas for the first time in my life. Moving to Portland by the end of the year. It's about to be an experience. Wow. That's a big move, Don Otaku. Holy shit. Any particular reason why you're moving to uh, Portland? I'm curious. Hey, what's up, Lapis Arsene? How you doing? Yeah, bro. Sometimes, we'll, you know, okay. I want to give a huge shout out to Square Enix, though, because their black hairstyles that they got in Rebirth, they are actually decent. It's not just bald and an afro. You see a lot of different hairstyles, and it's not just white people hair on black people. It's legitimately like, okay, we got we got black people in this game. Let's let's do our research. I was so proud of them because it's a it's a far cry from <laughs> Yoshi P last year. Shout out to Yoshi P, love him, but he was just like, listen, black people would not be realistic in my game, and I'm like, motherfucker, there's dragons, there's fucking Ifrit. What do you mean black people aren't realistic? <laughs> You know, <laughs> oh my god, wait a minute. What you said, I only started getting a fade because my barber almost fucked up my hair. I went in there for a lineup and then he said, Oops, and I ended up with a fade. Oh, nah, I would yo, 
Thankfully, I've never had a barber fuck my shit up, bro. But that is upsetting. If your barber got to do this and just look at you like that, like, oh, you fuck, bro. Holy shit. Oh, it's your birthday tomorrow, Lapis? Oh, shit. Happy early birthday to you, man. Happy early birthday. My girl's finally graduating, and she's going to graduate school in Portland State, where she'll also be working as well. Since I work from home, nothing changes for me job-wise. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Well, congratulations to your girlfriend. I mean, already, I have to give her huge kudos for dealing with you. Um, but, dude, that's that's sick, man. Moving to the West Coast? Holy shit. This man, Don Otaku, is just like, you know, man, move. Don Otaku, move all the way to the West Coast. Matter of fact, Don Otaku, just jump in the water. <laughs> yeah. No, but shout out to you, bro. That's awesome. I, I really need to make it out to freaking Oregon at one point, man. You know, I just want to, you know, what I want to go to just like, I want to drive. No, I want to fly to California and then drive to like a lot of the stuff that's in the Pacific Northwest, man. I want to go to Seattle. I want to go to Oregon. I want to go to all those places, man. Yeah, dude. Like, I just be seeing people when they take trips over there. I'm just like, this is fucking gorgeous, bro. So I think I need to do that. Dude, yo, Dragon's Dogma. Oh, my God. That character creator is on point, dude. You see, you be seeing what people be making that game. I saw people make Geralt. I saw people make uh, Paul Atreides. Like, oh, my God. That character creator is insane, bro. Nah, we just poking fun at Yoshi P. Read 94. Because if he just didn't say anything, it'd be aight. Right. But then he said that one thing. And I'm like, aight, fam. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like, you didn't need to say that. And it made it worse. <laughs> oh, shit. He says, I'm going to make sure to drive to Redmond and give Phil Spencer peace of my mind about giving away the exclusives. Yo, I mean, Nintendo don't isn't one of their headquarters in Redmond. You can go hang out with um Doug Bowser. I don't know. You guys can play patty cake or something. I don't know. <laughs> but yo, Phil Spencer will be like, imagine Phil Spencer, you just see this random dude pull up, he'll just be like, hey, how's it going, man? Golly. <laughs> Golly, that would be so funny. To see Don Otaku, to see Don Otaku show up at Phil Spencer's place and he does a video. Ugh. Did you see 16's uh, 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 Tonberry King? Uh, no. Hold on. Let me Google this shit. Final Fantasy. Let me see this. Oh my god! This motherfucker is jacked, bro! This man looks like a freaking Elden Ring boss. This is this is the stuff of nightmares, dude. Man's got a giant. Look at this motherfucker. Jesus. You just look at this guy in the other Final Fantasy games. Oh, so cutesy, but so terrifying. And then in 16, he's just like, yo. <laughs> this is crazy. Yo, that's the stuff of nightmares right there. Orgle saw that man. He just <laughs> dipped the other direction. <laughs> he crazy looking man. Uh, Neo, apparently there's better load times and shadows in the PS5 version over the Series X of Hi-Fi Rush. The L's continue. Are you serious? Damn, Xbox. Xbox Series L. We never knew we had this console until now. I heard Neo wears friendship bracelets and pretends to be a Power Ranger. I don't pretend to be a Power Ranger, but I definitely wear friendship bracelets, my friend. I got a friendship bracelet right here. Where is it? Oh, I, well, I hung my jacket up, but it, it it is in my jacket. I got a friendship bracelet. It has it has end for Neo on it. Then again, it could be end for the other thing. It could be that too. I don't know. Maybe that was your intention this whole time, Rhino. Hey, man, you wild. How come everybody else has all these other names, and then you give the black guy the one that has an end in it? I, right, fam, you think you slick? We got Miguel the Moogle and a serial killer. This is the real Final Fantasy. This is a fantasy. This is this is a. What was the slogan? This is a fantasy based on reality. They were a few games too early with that one. That's what sixteen should have been. Oh God. What's wrong with being a Power Ranger? Absolutely nothing wrong with being a Power Ranger. Ask ask the mods in um, book a book of Boba Fett. 
Hey, Neo, I've managed to get three interviews in the job field that I graduated in four years ago. Wish me luck. Oh, you got this, my guy, Jonathan. Just let him know, man. Your name is Jonathan, and you fuck. And then they, they got to hire you. When they ask you, what's your, what, what, what do you, how could you describe yourself? You say hired. And then they're going to turn over to each other and be like, can he actually say that? And they're like, I don't know. We got to give him the job now or else. Just say that shit, bro. You got it. Maybe not necessarily in that order. Maybe reverse it. And then you say you fucks to yourself in the car, but not to them. But yeah, you got it. You got it, bro. You got it. <laughs> no, we not talking about that. Hey, man. This is sh- shout out to the Star Wars fans. Shout out to them. They, they 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 get things that resemble television shows sometimes. You get a great thing like Andor. Ugh. Neo 1v1. Who you have? Lord Flame or Don? In a fight? Oh my god. This is tough. Because you could really... Okay. So like we can make a whole tier list surrounding this. So you have Flame who grew up in Florida. So already that that alone gives this man... An advantage because he's dealt with Florida men and women, alligators, and just them trying to erase history. But then again, you have Don Otaku, who's a black man. He's a black man who likes Fudas in a in a supremely red state. Oh man, that's like and dude, and he's also had to deal with that shit his whole life. Man, you know, like that that builds character. That builds resilience, dude. Like you don't even have to cast like protect or something on this man. Oh my god, Don or Flame. But then again, Don Don is 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 uh, you know, he could be slightly the word we can't say anymore. But you know, he could be that cuz you know, he didn't know that Mon was short for Digimon. He could be that. So maybe like all Flame has to do is throw a big word at him, and then Don will just be like, "Oh, f- what does that even mean? I don't even know, bro." And he could he could spontaneously combust. Hmm. I, I I mean, damn, this is tough, bro. They both play JRPGs. They both grew up in wild environments. Oh my god. Flame doesn't drink, so he he's he, he's not immune to like any like you can't just like throw weed or liquor at him. He's just like it's like no effect. Oh my god, this this, this is tough. The scaling on this is tough, bro. This is crazy. Oh my god, <laughs> we gotta. You know what? We got fifty four people watching right now. I'm put a po- I'm gonna put up a poll right now. I'm gonna put up a poll. Uh, one v one. Who wins? We're gonna put Don Otaku Lord Flame. Uh, okay, so here we go. We're gonna start. I started the poll, so if you guys are listening, uh, make sure you vote for the poll. We're gonna end the poll in like twenty minutes, and we're gonna see who wins. This is gonna be really fascinating to see who takes this. I'm so curious. I'm gonna be watching this in real time. But yeah, so I just I just put the poll up there, you guys. So go ahead and vote. Go ahead and vote, my friends. They're pitting us against one another with no consent. Listen, it's it's all for entertainment, right? It's all jokes. It's all jokes, guys. Isn't that what you always tell me? That's what you always tell me, huh? Yeah. Y'all know how it is. Is the poll live? Do you guys see it? Flames usually first, but is being first usually a good thing? What if he's like the first to get knocked out? Ah, think about that. One loves Digimon and the other thinks that Ash is a goat. <laughs> Damn, Cory Gryffindor is gunning for this man's neck. Oh my god. Okay, this is gonna be so exciting. I'm trying not to watch this poll in real time, but it's just it's fascinating. It's fascinating, man. Florida man always. Don, I'll have to draw out his latent Florida man powers like Kami to Piccolo. This is a tight race. Flame has initiative. I mean, too, like. Mm, this is really tough, man. Oh, 
what the fuck? It just went from flame 100 to dawn at 30. Like, this is going crazy, fam. Anyways, so while this is happening, while this is happening, um, I, I these comments, does flame have access to bath salts? Yo, this is crazy. Like, we really, like, this is, oh my god, this, screw the 2024 election. This is what it's really all about. Oh my god, is Don gonna take it all? We got 18 votes. Come on now, we got 50 people watching, 18 votes. Come on, you guys, you gotta contribute to this shit. <laughs> Get them Don talking numbers up. He's from Texas. He stay ready for the smoke. If y'all ever doubted how much I live up to my name, Donna Taka, I'm going to, I'm going to see, you know, in concert next month, I will have glow sticks ready. Shout out to him. Yes, let him have it. Oh my God. People not fucking, is, is, is the state of Florida that much of an annoyance that you guys just don't fuck with flame like that? Oh my God. Holy. Ass will be a goat as soon as he gets some ass. I mean, he got like kissed for the first time. Like, well, it took him like 20 years. So, you know, this progress. He ended up holding a girl's hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he working there. It's it's just very slow for him. Texas represent. <laughs> yeah, it's looking like Texas is about to represent, bro. Neo, I've been trying to throw this for the last five minutes. <laughs> this is crazy funny. But um, anyways, back on point. No smash or gluck gluck. Hey, yo, this man, Corey Gryffindor, is too horny, bro. This man, Corey Gryffindor, get all his JRPGs. He don't know how to act, man. You give this man Kingdom Hearts. You give him a Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer. He, I don't even. I don't even. This man, this, is my, this man might pull his dick out on camera. I ain't trying to see that on Instagram. I'll be like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. People say Flame, Flame actually won the popular vote. <laughs> Damn, this is fucking insane, bro. Like, what is going on? <laughs> hey, Neo, you remember how I said back in 2022 I had no idea what career I wanted to go into? I've decided now that I want to become a digital marketer. I'm about to start a course on it. Hey, more power to you, my guy. Go for it, dude. Whip it out and turn it into a Super Saiyan. I don't need to know this shit. I don't need to hear that you dye in your dick hair orange, bro. That's crazy. There's some crazy people up in this chat tonight. I tell you what, my friends. But yeah, man, no, it's 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 a good fucking time, man. It's a good fucking time to play these fucking JRPGs, bro. Oh yeah, so people were asking, no, no, I have not played Infinite Wealth yet. Infinite Wealth will be after Persona Three Reload. So at the pace that I'm going, I'll probably start Infinite Wealth in May. <laughs> just, just based off the time I'm gonna put into Rebirth and Reload. Because Rebirth, I'll probably put like 50, 60 hours. I'm not to do the side content. Persona 3, Reload, probably like 80. And then Infinite Wealth. Infinite Wealth, I feel like I'm going to put way more time. Because from what I've been hearing, a lot of systems in that game are very addicting. It's crazy how Flame just agrees with this poll. That's insane. Take a shot of that tequila. Must we drink on every live stream, you guys? Must we? This man says I'm a talker, not a fighter. Oh, he gonna do some Naruto talk no jutsu on you. Let's play the music, guys. Do 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 do. Ooh. Let's see. I need some Persona Three Low Five, but no, they don't have. Maybe they do. Maybe they do have Persona Three Low Five already. No, but the regular music in that game fucking slaps. The battle music, oh my god. Persona 3, but it's lo-fi. Relo oh, all right. Yeah, I fucks with this. I fucks with this, let's see. Yeah, I'll put this in the background, why not? Yeah. How far are you in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? I'm about to be on Chapter 9, Kenpachi. I'm about to be on Chapter 9. And depending on how much time I put in over the next week... Uh, but by the next two weeks, I'll have the game complete. Are you going to check out X-Men 97? Yeah, I'm going to watch it. I'm excited for it. <laughs> 
Oh, aim is about to become a free. Oh shit, bro. Yeah, dude, there's a lot of content, so I'm only limiting myself to the um just the main campaign because I was looking at all the other shit and I was like, nah. Can't be doing that stuff, bro. Hey Neo, are you a, a wokey woke? Because if so, I can bounce right now. What what is what is a wokey woke? What is a wokey woke? <laughs> Like what do I do I like seeing diversity in products? Yeah, I do like seeing diversity in products. Do I like force diversity? Define force diversity. I just feel like this whole discussion on what is woke and what isn't woke is stupid. It's always been stupid. Cause it's always about people saying, yo, it's focused on great content first, and then great content comes out with the diversity, and then people are always silent about it. Like it's just stupid when people try to label things as woke and not woke. I'm just like Please, everybody, shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. We can play the Sadness and Sorrow and Flame will get a boost. And then we're going to play the uh, other Naruto track. You know the one. You know the one. And Flame's going to say, that's my ninja. My ninja way. Okay, wow. So Flame is gaining in the polls. It might be only like 3%. Okay, I spoke too soon. But it might be only 3%. But he's getting there. It's going back and forth, guys. We got 13 minutes. Ban the word woke. Absolutely, bro. Please. People just don't know what they're saying. <laughs> that's a quote from Dono Taco. I'm great at bringing out ignorance from people they never do they had within them. Are you watching Invincible? I haven't been caught up with Invincible. I'm just going to wait for all of it to be out and then just binge it. Because they're just... I'm not a fan of them, like, drip, drip, drip feeding content, bro. I'm just like, just give me the whole season and then that's it, bro. It's just like killing my hype for it. When it's like, hey, here, we're back with just a few episodes and then we're gone. And here, we're back and we're gone. I'm like, what are you doing? I had way too much time. So, no, I didn't watch the first half of the season. I started the first episode, but I was just like, I'm going to wait. But yeah, X-Men 97 should be good. It's crazy how they're already planning. Like, they have a second season mapped out. They're talking about doing a third season, and then they fired the showrunner, which is fucking insane. <laughs> I don't know the real story behind it. Apparently, there was, like, some toxicity with him behind the scenes or some shit like that. Nobody wants to say anything about it. You know what I'm saying? But it's just fucking crazy. It's like, it's just like, yeah, we just fired this man, like, the day before the premiere. <laughs> I want to know what happened. I really want to know what happened in this scenario. Because some people were saying it's because he had an OnlyFans and he was posting really risky content. Sure, I guess the values don't align with Disney, but like other people are saying that he's had this OnlyFans for years while he's been working with Marvel and all these other entities. So it's just like, why is it now a problem? Is it maybe because it's come to the spotlight? And then other people are saying that he was like really toxic to work with on set. I don't know. But regardless of that, man, it's, it's just fucking insane. So what are the chances of Drake Bell voicing young Ericus again? Hmm... I mean, he got involved in some crazy shit, so I don't know if they would hire him back. <sighs> I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, because yeah, now with the with the the um the documentary, people are looking at him in a better light compared to like what he had been involved with in court. So we'll see. That is still a little ways off. But it, again, it all depends on uh, what happens later down the road. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they can recast him and it not be a big deal. Like, no one's losing sleep over it. If it was, like, the voice of Sora or Riku or something, I think so, yeah. But, yeah, no, it's, um... I don't know. Like, I already, in my mind, when he went through the first legal thing, I was like, yeah, this man's not coming back. Damn. Flame is really gaining in the polls, guys. Hey, what's up, Guzman? How you doing, bro? Mute button about to be fire. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Bro, what the... <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. Holy God. That's so funny. That is so funny. Jason, that is hilarious. That is hilarious. Holy shit. <laughs> 
By the way, I took your advice and I got tickets to Zine Dune 2 on the biggest IMAX screen in the state. It's a bit out of the way, but it seems worth it. Oh, absolutely, bro. Trust me. You want to see that on a big IMAX screen. If you don't got that, see it in Dolby Cinema. And trust me, your life will be changed for the better, man. Hey, yeah, Guzman, how's that job going, bro? Congratulations, man. Oh, you finished Rebirth, Skyflow? Hey, okay. Me and Flame balance each other out like Yang and more Yang. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yang and more Yang. <laughs> Yang and more Yang. Yeah, some people were saying it was because old buddy had an OnlyFans, but like, some people are also saying he's had it for years. So, and you know, this these companies do extensive background checks. So, I don't, unless he got into some really crazy shit and some stuff like, the fact that he had to delete all his social media is insane. Because if he was fired... For something else, like his socials probably go up. But the fact that he went off the grid completely leads me to believe it was something else, man. Neo, did you go for the platinum in Persona 3 Reload? I, I, I'm I, only four hours in. But I might go for the platinum. Maybe. I don't know. It depends how easy it is. Persona 5 Royal has a really attainable platinum. If I go back, I only have like five achievements for 100% completion on that. Oh, I see you, Flame. I see you. Oh, that's awesome, Guzman. I'm happy to hear that, bro. Sound is definitely important for movies. It is definitely important. But also having the good the good picture quality as well. Good projections. Kept up to date. All that good stuff. I remember when I saw the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. Um, and I... Like, I go to a modern theater. My regal is very up to date. But for whatever reason, that movie, it just, it, it was so, not quiet, but it didn't have the punch. Like, they didn't have access to, like, everything in the theater. At least for when I saw it in that theater, for whatever reason. I guess they didn't fucking care for that showing. But it didn't have, like, the punch of, of uh, other movies that were out. Fantastic movie, bro. I really wish they put that shit in, like, Dolby Cinema or whatever. Oh, man. Hey, okay. Yeah, um so yeah, that was something we didn't talk about. Um Persona 3 is getting the answer as a DLC for Reload. It comes out in September, which is good in the sense that oh my god, they're actually doing the answer. A lot of people when we first heard the game was coming out, there was like, yeah, it's not going to include the answer, it's not going to include the uh, female character. Uh, it's not going to do any of that. And I was like, oh fuck. So what, are they going to sell us like a, a, a reload full clip edition in like two years? Because, you know, that's the Atlas thing to do. But no, they're just going to come out with it as part of their expansion pass. Now, here's the thing. It's a double-edged sword because they're putting it out as part of this expansion pass. And this expansion pass, I'm just being honest. I'm looking at the content in there. That shit is not worth $35, bro. Like, they're putting in the music tracks to play during the combat. And I'm like... You know, and all the stuff that's in there is just not really worth the asking price. Now, the answer is cool and everything, but I wish that they were able to sell that shit standalone, but they want to get it for more money. So, they're, if they saw that you can buy the answer for like $20 or some shit like that, or $15, they are not going to do that. They're just going to sell it to you for $35 as part of the set. Which is annoying because I bought the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 expansion pass. And that expansion pass added a lot of content. Not counting the new story content too. So I look at this and I'm just like. Atlas is costing us half the game. For this answer DLC essentially. Because like, let's be real about life for a second. Like that extra DLC stuff is negligible. It's just the answer of buying. And buying the answer for half the game. It doesn't sit right with me. I know people are going to make the false equivalency of, well, Royal, you have to buy the whole new game. And I agree that we shouldn't have had to do that. But what they did with Royal, I'm not saying I agree with it. They did fundamentally rework the game and the inclusions with certain characters and them adding in that. I could see why it was its own separate release, even if the bulk of Royal's new content comes at the tail end of the game. Um, still, in a perfect world, it could have been its own separate thing that you play after the fact you know they would find a workaround for it like i said hindsight is 2020 but in the case of this it's just it's like the lesser of two evils in that respect where i'd rather they not buy it 
or I'd rather they not just sell it again three years later with just the answer for seventy dollars, especially now because it is seventy dollars too. So there's that. So you're paying before tax like a hundred and a hundred and five dollars for a more fleshed out Persona Three Reload experience. Um, but what is annoying and what really does suck is that this expansion pass content. This stuff doesn't, from my understanding, it doesn't come with the expensive collector's editions that you bought. So, literally, you bought Persona 3 Reload, special edition, because it's like your favorite game ever. You spent hundreds of dollars, and you still have to buy the expansion pass. I, I just don't fucking get that. But if there is one saving grace, if there is one saving grace, you guys, if you are a person who plays it on Game Pass... You get the fucking DLC for free. So shout out to our boy Phil Spencer for coming through and dropping a bag so people who play it on Game Pass can get the expansion pass for free. So you get the game for free and you get the expansion pass for free. And according to what some people are saying, you could redeem it and keep the expansion pass if you have Game Pass. That's what they said. I don't know how accurate that is. But that's pretty fucking solid. That is fucking sick. I'm like you can't even you can't even like I I just I'm that's amazing, bro. That is amazing, man. So for that one low cost of like 16 a month, you can play through all of reload and the answer. That is awesome. All right, Blue sent you with a five dollar super chat. I just had my birthday last Saturday. I turned 26, but with my luck, I got a little flu. I feel better now. And another five dollars. People should just shut the fuck up about the answer DLC. Y'all gotta buy it anyways. Better than buying a whole new version of sixty or seventy dollars. Yeah, we just talked about that blue senshi. Like I said, it's the lesser of two evils in that respect. But it just it just sucks that they're tying it up with this expansion pass. Because remember, thirty five dollars is half the game, bro. And when you compare it to other expansion packs on the market, even by Nintendo standards, bro, Nintendo gave you way more with Xenoblade in that expansion pass by comparison. So. It is, it is a little irritating, especially because it's coming out a few months after the game. It makes you wonder, like, when did when did y'all really work on this? But, you know, I'm playing it on Game Pass, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't got a dog in the fight. <laughs> but, uh, happy belated birthday to you, Blue Senshi. I hope you feel better, man. Yeah, I know it's a lot of people from, like, the first couple of, first couple, like, the first two months of the year, people were getting sick, man. I, I was sick back in February, so yeah, I feel that, bro. I'm glad you feel better, dude. If Atlas ever does the female character ride, it'll definitely be its own game. Honestly, at this point, man, yeah, I could see that. I could see them doing that. If they aren't going to do like a, a reload full clip edition that comes with that. If they did a reload full clip edition in three years time for $70 with the reload female character path answer. And it's on Game Pass. <laughs> I'll buy that. No, but honestly, I probably would buy it because I didn't buy it the first time. I'm playing it on Game Pass because I got it on my PC and my Xbox. Persona 6 2035 for the complete edition? Yeah, absolutely. $2 coming in from Julian Phoenix. What are your thoughts on the Star Wars Battlefront debacle? Yo, did you guys see this shit? Did you guys see what's happening with this? Okay. Okay. So you guys remember a few weeks ago. Uh, It was in, I think it was in like the Nintendo Direct or the State of Play. Probably Nintendo Direct. Where they announced that they're bringing back Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2. Yeah. Oh. The OG ones. Not the not the, not the uh, the the DICE ones. The OG ones. We all played when we were kids. They're bringing those back onto modern platforms. You know. Bringing back the multiplayer. Cleaning it up a little bit. Like, you know. It's, it's, it was going to be some hotness, man. You had a nice, attractive price. And people are going to get hyped to play this shit, bro. Like, you got Helldivers. And we ain't feeling Helldivers. We're going to play some Battlefront. And sure enough... Aspire fucked it up, bro. Aspire fucked it up, bro. Th dude, the second the game launched, people couldn't even get on the servers. Apparently, they had, like, what, only three servers for 60 players or some shit like that? Oh, my God, dude. And these are the people that were supposed to work on the KOTOR remake. Like, how the fuck do... What dirt did Aspire have on the games industry that they just got the KOTOR remake and they got... Like, they, they did good with a couple of Star Wars old game ports, and then this shit happens. Oh, my God. The Battlefront Collection, a metaphor for bringing the community together to beat up Aspire's ass. Yo, listen. 
And apparently, like, someone said that they were not stealing, well, technically stealing mods and putting it in, like, their version of the game. I don't, it's just a lot of crazy stuff. Like, every hour, there's, like, a new tweet I see. Mmm. There. They straight up stole mods and didn't ask for permission. Garbage company. That's fucking sad, bro. Like, who do they got working there? They did good with the Tomb Raider trilogy, Neo, but outside of that, oh, my God. I just don't get it, bro. I just don't get it. How do you get the how do you get the Star Wars bag and just fumble it like this? I mean, then again, Disney does exist, but you know. God. Battlefront has a series is cursed. Yeah, man. Unfortunately it is. You just you can't get good Battlefront content. You're either stuck in nostalgia and playing the OG games, or you're, you had to wait a few years for Battlefront 2 to get good. And you know what the sad part about Battlefront 2 is? By the time that DICE ended up fixing the game, and the game was so much fun to play, they just really stopped supporting it. And I'm like, what? Are you going to do a Battlefront 3? No. It's terrible, bro. It's terrible. Oh, my God. So I'm looking at the poll right now. It's 9 o'clock. And right now we have 40 votes. And it is tied. It is tied, you guys. Dawn and Flame. This is like... This is unprecedented. Because for the longest time, I thought Dawn was going to scoop it. But then Flame... Just the, the fire kept growing, bro. She's literally just like a freak, bro. Holy shit. Guys, we need a tiebreaker vote. We need one more vote. So we can wrap this up. One more vote, you guys. We got 51 of y'all. There ain't no way y'all didn't vote. We need a vote. Dawn and Taka versus Flame. So we can go ahead and end the stream. No, don't don't you make no burner accounts. This needs to be accurate, bro. This needs to be accurate. We need we need a neutral party. We need a neutral party in this case, guys. Between Donotaku and Flame. Come on now. Light side or dark side? Let's go. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now it's back. Oh my god. Okay. It keeps hovering from 51 to 49. Don't vote. Keep the stream going. Ah, don't you do this, bro. It keeps going back. What is going on? Okay, okay, okay. Donataku's in the lead again. We got 44 votes. Donataku, Lord Flame. All right. So we have until... <laughs> I voted. Yes, sir. Stop the count. Stop the count. <laughs> All right. So as of now, with 44 votes until I get through my outro, Donotaku is the is the uh, is is the winner elect of the stream on who would win in a fight one v one either him or Flame. Now we have until the end of when I finish up this shit to see who wins. So by some miracle it gets back to fifty percent and fifty percent. I'm gonna keep going, but right now it's at fifty two and forty eight. So we're gonna end the stream here. This is this is how it should be. This 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 is the result. The people voted. The people voted, and this is what they wanted. They 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 found their conqueror, their champion, 52 and 48. Like I said, Donotaku is the winner elect, unless something changes within the next like 45 seconds. But recount, what? recount. See now, even more so, 53 and 47. So there you go, man. You just stay winning. You just stay winning, Donotaku, like everything else in life, man. There you go. Um, but yeah, you guys, I want to thank everybody for coming out to another fantastic episode of ask neo i appreciate you guys um as always it was just a lot of fun chopping it up with you guys very very nice and lean episode for tonight you know we talked about a lot of good stuff and you know we we, we did a poll right here with the homie Donald taco coming through coming in clutch man 51 49 oh you guys are trying to make sure this stream keeps going no 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 it's 50 oh fuck Yeah, so now Flame is in the lead. So now we can keep ending the stream. So now we have our winner-elect Flame with 51% versus 49%. You know what? It, it was an upset. You know what I'm saying? It was a tie. And then Don Otaku, he was over there saying that, listen, I did it. It's victory. And then Flame just persevered. Suyosa. Rise, man. Rise. Suyosa. So, yeah, you know, we can end the stream now with our new winner-elect Lord Flame. some fuckers you know that we have 50 votes 
25 for Donataku and 25 for Lord Flame. You guys think you're so fucking cute, don't you? Y'all think you're so fucking cute. Y'all think you're all that in a bag of chips. Like, y'all just... Nah. This is, this is, this is... Okay, so now we got our new winner elect, Don Otaku. You know what I'm saying? We got 51 votes, 50 viewers. There ain't nobody else here in this chat who hasn't voted now because we have more votes than we have viewers. And now it's even again. So now Lord Flame, he's back at it on the top, man, because you know what they say, man. No matter what happens, you can throw water on it. You can get an industrial size hose, but you know what? You can't dim the flame. You can't dim the flame. Something, something, war flame, war frame, quote, whatever flame be putting on Twitter about war frame. Flame with the big W, 53 votes, 51% for Lord Flame. 50, you fuckers, stop it. I'm trying to go home. I'm trying to go home, you guys. Y'all, y'all think you cute. Nah, you see, but Lord Flame, though, he just always comes out on top, man. You know, because he is not a bottom. He is always a top. So, again, I want to thank you guys for coming through to the stream. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. If you haven't done so by now, hit that like button. It helps out the channel tremendously, you fuckers. So, Lord Flame with the W, again, uh, helps out the channel tremendously. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, got, we got a lot of stuff done, you know. So, I hope that from now until I see you guys again next week, next Tuesday, you guys, you fuckers. doesn't make any sense this doesn't make any sense we don't have more viewers we don't have more viewers so you guys are logging into your burner accounts now to do this y'all are logging into your burner accounts nah you can't be doing this shit you can't be doing this shit to me uh-uh one of you guys is gonna be crowned king tonight i don't care i don't care i do not care one of you guys is gonna win i'm not there's there's no no no, no we are not thanos up in this shit one of you guys is going to walk out of here. The winner. Uh-uh. With your burner accounts, your different Google accounts. Neo could end the poll anytime he wants. I could hold this man hostage. Corey Griffin, you are a problem. Listen, I'm going to take one shot. I'm going to take one shot tonight. And by the time I finish this shot, that thing better be 59 or 61. Better not be no even number. See, I don't even have that much alcohol with me, guys. I have like... I have like this much left. I have like one and a half shots left. I got nothing tonight, guys. It's all right. We're just going to sit here. We're going to wait until one of you guys votes with your burner accounts. Yeah, you think y'all slick? You think it's so funny? Huh? You got plenty of time to finish Evangelion. I got to watch eight episodes, Corey. And remember, I'm on the East Coast. I'm not on the West Coast, man. I got to watch eight episodes. And we don't skip the intro. We skip the outro because there's no flying me to the moon. And that sucks. But we do watch the intro. Tequila. Yeah, it's tequila. It was me, Dio. Of course it was you, Dio. Of course it was you. But all right. Um, we're going to take one shot tonight. One shot. Because I don't have... This is like... This is like a quarter of a shot. We might, we might kill that, depending. But I'm going to take this one shot. I don't have enough liquor to stay up till four or five. I do it all the time. I don't have enough, man. I'm an old man, bro. The latest I stay up is 2.30, bro. I can't be staying up till four or five anymore. I don't remember the last time I did that, bro, without like going to bed at one and then waking up at three. I don't know. But either way, you guys. Brody has the guns out. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, you know what it is, bro. The weather's been decent over here, so you know we gotta gotta you know a little 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 bit of delta action, just just a little bit, a little bit of a little bicep action right there. Nothing nothing crazy. I think they ran out of burners. They might have Klebo. They might have, bro. All right. So you know what? I don't even have to take the shot anymore because we're at 59 votes and Don Otaku is the winner elect. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, we have found our champion. The champion. Somebody ring the dingster down in Texas. Don Otaku, you fuck. Yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, you 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 guys are the ones creating all these Gmail accounts. I'm not the one doing it. You you over here with like 14 different tabs running Chrome. I'm not the one doing it. Y'all over there, your laptops are going like. Ugh. I'm not the one doing it. I'm not the one doing it. <laughs> Maybe it's a draw. Give it up, Neo. I can't. One of you guys has to win. We need to know. 
And it is Lord Flame. It is Lord Flame with the W, man. Shout out to the homie Lord Flame. I mean, he is many things, but a winner, most certainly he is that too. So yeah, so shout out to Winner Elect Flame. I want to thank you guys so much for coming through the live stream. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. Helps out the channel tremendously. Um, get a lot of great gaming in. Eat a lot of great food. Have a lot of great sex. Be kind to one another. Be excellent to each other. And be excellent to yourself. And <laughs> good old Google Plus days. Yeah. So we're going to end the poll right now with 61 votes with Lord Fl Oh, you fucker. 63 votes with Lord Flame with the certified W, we are going to end the fucking poll because that is it. We are done for the night. We are done. But before we go, I can't end the poll because before we go, we got to have ourselves a hydration check. Now, what is a hydration check, you might ask? It's my way of making sure you musty motherfuckers with too much time in your hands to create Google accounts to keep yourselves uh, hydrated because it's very important because apparently... You guys don't be drinking enough water while you're creating 14 different Gmails and Yahoo accounts and whatever, whatever you want to do using your work emails and shit. Um, so on the count of three, you guys, oh, we got, no, we have 63 votes. We don't have 69 votes. We have 63 votes. So it's, it's not nice, but it's nice because we can end the stream. On the count of three, guys, we're going to have ourselves a hydration check. So ready, get that water out for David. It's going to be moonshine. On the count of three, we're going to have ourselves some hydration. One, two, three, hydration. Otherwise, you will be stuck on the toilet. Absolutely. Well, I already poured this shot. Fuck, it's 50-50 again. You know what? You fuckers, fine, fine, fine. We're going to end the poll. We're going to end the poll. Perfectly balanced, as all things are. Both of you guys, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, at this point, I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, they're both up here. I'm like, I don't know. Like, let's just cut the trophy in half. You get half. He gets half. It's done. I don't know. Eat, drink, be merry. Get out of here. Like, that's all I can say. But I already poured this shot. So here, here's a toast. A toast to flagrancy. A toast to flagrancy. And all of you guys keeping me here for an extra 13 minutes. A toast to that. You fuckers. Curious to play Lost Frontier. <laughs> yeah, I need to throw them into Lost Frontier to see who wins. Bro. Lost Frontier Extreme Conditions. Shout out to that game, bro. Um, But yeah, let's go ahead and let's take this shot, you guys. I just got a headache dealing with y'all. <laughs> I gave myself a whole headache, bro. So on the count of three, we're going to have ourselves David's favorite form of hydration. Yes, David, we're going to take a shot. So you better take a shot with me. And I might as well just finish the rest of this bottle of tequila because I have nothing left. I have literally like a quarter of a shot left. So we'll do that too. So on the count of three, guys. One, two, three. Hydration of a different accord. Eighteen hundred does go down pretty smooth. That was good. <sighs> All right, you you fuckers got me for a few more minutes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Um, dude needs another bottle of. I I mean I might. You know what the thing is, bro? On Uber Eats, I got a um, I got a uh, a fifty percent off liquor thing, which I'm just like. Who's who's doing that? Like, who did this to me specifically? You know what I miss? I don't know about you guys, but look, I have 40% off. I have 40% off up to $20 liquor. Oh, my God. This is crazy. Guys, we could literally order liquor and have it delivered to the house. I'm curious. How much would that be? Let me see. Excuse me. Let me see this. So, if I ordered... Oh, that's lame. That sucks. So, this 40% off, 
this 40% off, like, yeah, it takes 40% off, but there's still the delivery fee. And that's not counting the tip, because I always tip. I give more than the tip. But if I pick it up, it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we ended on a tie, Jason. We are ordering three bottles of Henny. No, you know what we need to do one night? We need to order a... You know what? Like, one of these nights, like, we'll just order a bottle on live camera for the stream. And we'll just... We'll just like pick a liquor and we'll just go for it. It's never too late for St. Patrick's Day Irish whiskey. You're right, Steve. I didn't have any whiskey. He just gave the just he. Listen, I give more than a tip. I'm generous, but you know, um, fuck. All it was one shot. Um, where is this place? Pickup always works. We could, but then I would have to end the stream, and I don't want to end the stream. You got a you got a you got a handheld with over five thousand totally legal ROMs. I'll see you in court, bro. Don't make me send uh, Miyamoto after you. Yeah, I'm that type of person where if I can get it cheaper and it's nearby, I'll go ahead and do that. Wait, Macross has come to Disney Plus. What the fuck? Is it like Disney Plus International or like Disney Plus US too? No, but this thing says $0 delivery fee. So why is this lying to me? Because this thing says $0 delivery fee. Why are you lying to me? Kingdom Hearts 3 streams are returning next Wednesday night. Nah, but that's crazy. It says zero. <laughs> you know what? I'll order a bottle. We got to pick a bottle of liquor to order. I don't know. I mean, thankfully, like, we can mix because we only had one shot. So here's my go-to. All right. So usually, okay, so as far as the streams go, what have we had before? We've had uh, Gentleman Jack. So we've had that. We did uh, this 1800 tequila. We did... I know we did another bottle. What other bottle did we do? We did tequila. We did whiskey. We did... Oh, Ciroc. We killed two bottles of Ciroc. We did the Ciroc green apple melon. And we did the passion fruit Ciroc. I really like the passion fruit Ciroc. We haven't done... Well, I've done rum before. But that was only if you were in the Kingdom Hearts live streams on Twitch like 10 years ago. You guys remember that? Do, does anybody remember that Kingdom Hearts live stream I did back in like 2014? Wherein I was singing Under the Sea. But... I modified the lyrics. I was fucked up. I was wasted. I modified the lyrics and I was talking about short people. And my friend Jamal was there. And he's a short guy. Well, he's like 5'4". Rum. People are saying rum. Moonshine. Moonshine. I could do. Let's see. Do they have moonshine here? They do have moonshine. Oh. They do. But they don't have the big. Oh, they do have the big bottles. Yeah. What a deep cut reference. Yeah, it is a deep cut reference. Because the OGs remember. Doer's Scotch Whiskey. Oh, yeah? I'm, yeah, I'm always open for recommendations. I had... um, I had... Uh, I, I did have Doer's one time when I was at uh, Otakon in 2015. My, my friend of a friend who I was rooming with, he had um, Doer's. And I did a shot of that. Hey, what's up, Chris? Yeah, I did hear about the rumors of him. His name has always been in the running for Bond ever since um, Craig retired. And they said that it was not confirmed today. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he was thrown into the ring. I could see I could see him as Bond. Voice is a little too high-pitched. But it's all right. Hey, what's up, TWO? How you doing? TWO, we're thinking about ordering liquor. So, I'm looking... I'm looking, you guys. I don't know. Like, what are we thinking? Rum? We could get some rum. We could definitely get some rum. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why I just saw this Bacardi Dragon Barrier. I was like, ooh, that looks interesting. But I'm like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, you're right, Steven. I need to make it a whiskey month because it is March. So they have Jameson... So this place has uh, Jameson. Oh yeah, let's buy it. Let's buy it. <laughs> if it is this ninety-two bottle, ninety-two dollar bottle of uh, whiskey, twelve-year-old single malt whiskey, I would buy that for a celebration. 
Um, let's see. Do they have doers at this one place? Let's see. Man, I used to kill. You know what I used to kill so much of? The Jack Daniels uh, Tennessee Honey. Man, I used to kill so much of that in my early 20s, bro. So much of that shit. Uh, Johnny Walker Black. Okay, so I'm going uh, No, we're not going to do Fireball. I used to fuck with Fireball heavy when I was young, though. Now it's, it's just a little too sweet for me. Oh, they do have Doers here. Doers White Label Blended Scotch Whiskey. Is that the one you're talking about? Hey, what's up, Bridge Moon Productions? Oh, they are closing soon. Applejack is pretty good. Okay, so this makes sense. Okay, so I figured out the issue. When I put the other liquor in my cart, it was too cheap for them to justify the delivery fee. So now when I put this in my cart, it's $30. The promotion takes off 12 and with taxes, it's 5 and then I'll tip like 5 So yeah, that makes sense. I guess we're ordering whiskey. How long would this take, though? It says like 15 minutes. Yeah, I guess we're getting some Jack Daniels. Not Jack Daniels, um, Doers. How much would it be if I did pick up? I would only be saving five dollars. That's not bad. That's not bad. Huh. <sighs> Ooh. Yeah, I love me some margaritas too, bro. I had some frozen margaritas last week. Yes, sir. That shit was nice. I don't know, you guys, you want to wait until the liquor gets here? Yeah, this bottle is like 30. Surprisingly cheap. What's your go-to whiskey mix drink? Uh, honestly, I usually... These days, I really drink a lot of my stuff straight. So I usually just do it neat. Um, But usually when I go out... It depends what the situation calls for. So if I'm just like... Let's say if I'm out at a bar, burger and wings, shit like that... I'll usually start with like a Long Island iced tea. I'll go with that. And I know that's a crazy drink to start with, but it was, it was my first legal drink. So I love it. So I have a Long Island iced tea guaranteed to get you fucked up. So I'll usually do that. If I'm out like at a restaurant, I'll usually have like an old fashioned. I'll have a Manhattan. Um, very strong. I like those. If I'm getting like Mexican food, always got to have a frozen margarita. I love me some frozen margaritas. Um, if I'm doing whiskey, it's usually straight some, well, my friend, he mixes, uh, like his whiskeys with ginger ale. A lot of people do whiskey and ginger ale. I do that sometimes, but some places I, I don't really be fucking with the ginger ale. So it's, it's weird. I know it throws off the mix. All right. So, okay. We're ordering guys. We're ordering, um, we are ordering, we are ordering liquor. This is so weird. We're ordering liquor to be delivered on camera. Oh my god. That's fucking crazy. I really hope they actually deliver it. I, why do I have a feeling they're going to be like, no. You know what I'm saying? All right, we we ordered it. I know David's happy. I know I know fucking um, Stephen's happy. <laughs> Stephen's like you gotta do it. All right, we guys. So we ordered pizza for the first time on the internet like ten plus years ago, and now we're ordering liquor for the first time. Oh, shout out to the homie Jay Ransom, my guy who gifted five memberships to the channel. Read ninety four, Pap, Overly Critical Anime, Corey Gryffindor, and Shut Up Gabe have got five memberships. Shout out to you, my guy. That must be because I'm actually beating games for a change. Shout out to you, bro. Thank you, my guy. Um, okay, so we have half a shot left of this uh, tequila. So, I don't know. I don't feel like we can... Can we toast a half a shot? We'll toast the Jay Ransom with this half a shot. We'll toast the Jay Ransom with this half a shot. Shout out to you, man. 
You know, shout out to you for gifting the memberships. Big W, because we got a lot of people here in the chat right now. Since you guys are now members, you can post your favorite emojis and stuff. So go ahead and feel free. Spam those emotes. So shout out to Jay Ransom. If we had a full shot, we would toast to you. But that will soon change because we, we're getting liquor delivered, which is awesome. So toast to Jay Ransom. <laughs> David is like, this is the greatest day ever. Like I said, Jay Ransom. Okay, shopping has started. <laughs> oh my God, someone's actually picking this up, guys. And I actually have to meet him at the door. I got to be like, yo, what up, bro? <laughs> Oh my god. We're actually getting liquor delivered. When is when is this gonna be delivered? It says within hold on. It says within half an hour. But this liquor place is like a five minute drive from me. So it might be sooner. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, um, Damn, I, I thought we were going to end this shit at 9 o'clock, but look look at this. We just ordered fucking whiskey. Look at this. Look look at us. Look at us, you guys. Look at us. But there was something I wanted to... Shit, man. I guess we got to talk about it. I was, I was trying to... I was trying to avoid... Not necessarily avoid speaking about this, but... It was one of those things that Fuck it man, let's talk about Akira Toriyama. Um So for those who don't know, uh earlier this month we lost Akira Toriyama. For those who aren't familiar with him, for those who aren't really big into uh, anime, manga, video games, stuff like that. Because, you know, there, there are some people on my channel who are here for, like, Blu-ray updates and talk about movies and Star Wars and shit. Um, Akira Toriyama is most well-known as the creator of the Dragon Ball franchise. So, Dragon Ball as a manga. In the anime world, it was adapted as Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. And then from there... It spun off into so many different things with Dragon Ball GT. It had a revival, believe it or not, 10 years ago with Dragon Ball Super. And there's just been so much other stuff since then. You know, tons and tons of video games. Tons and tons of movies. So much Dragon Ball stuff. But that wasn't the only thing this man was famous for. Even before Dragon Ball, this man had so much uh, so much stuff he had already accomplished. He's the creator of Dr. Slump. This man has worked on a character designer for numerous Square Enix RPGs. Some of which being the most popular RPGs of all time with Dragon Quest. And working on one of my all-time favorite games. In my opinion, it is one of the greatest RPGs of all time. That being Chrono Trigger. He did the character designs for that. And. Whether you're a fan of him. From like his work on Dragon Quest. Or Chrono Trigger. Or or, or, or Dragon Ball. Or Dr. Slump. Or Sandland. Or, or whatever. I don't. It's so weird. To have this conversation because we throughout the course of us doing these streams we we talk about people we've lost you, you know we, we we did streams when lance reddick died we did streams when you know kobe bryant died we did streams when just you name it we talk about it but i think out of all these if you want to call it celebrity deaths, the one that hit the hardest for me outside Kobe Bryant and outside Stan Lee was Akira Toriyama. It hit differently than just like, oh my God, I grew up loving Dragon Ball. It was more than that, man. 
because when you when you look at what Dragon Ball did, right? Like, yes, it was a very successful series. It is still successful to this day. It's way more than that. Um, this man fundamentally changed the game. No pun intended. This man, what he did with his boundless imagination and a pen... It caused ripple effects throughout the entire manga industry. And you won't really understand this unless you actually read the manga and you compare it to how other shonen mangas were made at the time. What this man did in terms of how he drew action, panel to panel, and everything surrounding it with the storytelling was unheard of at the time in the 80s and the 90s. And what he influenced generations, Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, insert series, you name it, they all go back to Toriyama. So much the point where, had it not been for this man and his work, we wouldn't be enjoying the series that we have now. And I'm not talking about in a superficial sense like, you know, you have Spider-Man now and people who create comics now, they reference Spider-Man and X-Men, things like that. I'm talking about legitimately this man Toriyama's effect and what he did for the medium in Japan. We are still feeling the effects. And with this man's passing, when we hear stories from other mangaka like Ichiro Oda, who's the creator of One Piece... Masashi Kishimoto, creator of Naruto. We hear what this man meant, and literally they refer to him as a god. And you could say that that's like, well, they're, you know, because they just really looked up to this man, but like, these are grown ass people. Dudes in their 40s and their 50s saying, this man is like God to me, bro. And what he did inspired me. So it's not just that. But when you hear about Taite Kubo, who's the creator of Bleach, and how this man said he was ready to give up creating manga. He was ready to give up. He was like, after I couldn't get this done, I, I was done. And then Akira Toriyama wrote him a letter of encouragement saying, no, 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 keep going. And then there's a lot of people saying that maybe like Toriyama might have put in a good word with Shonen Jump for him to get Bleach serialized or something like that. Like We're, we're hearing like all the good things that this man did after the fact that we didn't know of because Toriyama is a very, very, very private person. He just, he minds his business. Like when you think about it, this man created the majority of the stuff that made him famous 30 years ago, which is absolutely insane to think about 30 plus years ago. Dragon Ball ended in 1995, bro. It ended. His story ended in 95, bro. Like I was two years old when this shit was over and done with. And yet we're still feeling the effects of it and just it having its resurgence recently with super and the movies and all that stuff and we lost that man we lost that man right as he was really reinvigorated and ready to tell new stories with dragon ball daima and all the other things he passed away at age 68 which, I mean, I know everyone said this, but very, very, very young. And it's one of those things that I didn't want to believe, you know? I'll never forget this. Like, I was, I was at work at my second job. I was waiting to clock out. And I remember I got a text from my boy, Joaquin. He was just like, bro, did you hear the news? And... Whenever somebody says, did you hear the news? It's either one of two things. It's either something really incredible or something tragic. And far too often in my life, I've had to yo-yo between the two. And then I said, nah, what's going on, bro? And I remember at the time I was talking to my manager and while I was texting and he says, Akira Toriyama passed away. And I was like, what? dot 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 
And he's like, yeah, bro, go, go on Twitter. I just retweeted. And I was like, what? And then I'll never forget this. It was, it was, it was that Thursday, 10 o'clock PM Eastern standard time for me. I, I read that tweet and it said that he passed away. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, bro. Like what? Toriyama, th this man, bro. This man who like, that man just been chilling, bro. He like, this man created. Cause you know, it's like how you look at like, like these figures, like Stan Lee, Kobe, Michael Jordan, all these people. It's like you, you look at them as like these figures who are in some ways, like not of this world, even though they are here. And you just feel like they're eternal for what they, what they, what they brought into the world. And to hear that, I'm like, what the fuck, bro? What do you mean Toriyama died? Like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, this man Toriyama's gonna live to, like, he's 98, 104. Like, what, what do you mean 68 years old? Come on now, dude. And I remember I was, like, I left work, and I was sitting in my car, and I was like, no fucking way, dude. And then... I go and I, I do grocery shopping because my part-time job is like right next to a grocery store. So I was doing my grocery shopping for the week and I was just like, nope, 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 nope. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna, no, I'm not gonna think about this shit right now. I'm not gonna, you know, nah. Um, and then I'm just like, fuck dude, Toriyama's dead. And you know, dealing with so much death in my personal life over the past couple of years, it's kind of, Numb isn't the right word, but it's it's definitely prepared me for those situations where I could be strong when I need to. Um, and then I remember I was coming home and, you know, uh, I was coming home and I was I unlocked the back door and I my sister and I like she's a big anime fan. I text her when this happened. She was just like, oh, my God. And. You know, in situations like this, I was just like, yo, it's fucking crazy, bro. And so I was half expecting, like, I already, like, mentally prepared myself. I was just going to tell my sister, like, yeah, this is fucking crazy, bro. And I remember I walked inside, and then I remember my sister, she literally, she just walked over to me, and just, she hugged me, and then I just started fucking bawling, bro. And she was crying, and then I was crying, and I was just like... It was one of those situations where, like, both of us knew, like, now is not the right time to talk. You know, there will be time for us to talk. But for the time being, we just need to, like, let this out. And we did. So. I remember after that, like, I spent, like, the next, like, two hours just, like, I was I was going to play more of a um, rebirth, but. I was like, no, man, I need to, I need to just see. And I just kept seeing all the tweets coming in from people pouring in. And it was, it was as weird as it sounds, bro. It really helped get through that moment because I saw everyone was grieving and we were all in pain. And it was, it was so surreal because it was literally everybody around the world, man. Every single person around the world grieving this man, bro, grieving this man. Whether they were a fan of Dragon Ball or Dr. Slump or Sandland or Dragon Quest or Chrono Trigger. Every single person, bro. Of all ages, races, ethnicities. People who just got into the franchise 10 years ago. People who have been a fan since like the beginning. The OG. The people who grew up like watching the bootleg fan sub tapes in Chinatown. Like you name it. People had stories, bro. And it was, it was, it was that Thursday night. It was it was sad, but it was kind of like a good. Hold on one second, I just have to check on this. Uh, okay, so the guy will be here in fifteen minutes. Um, it was um it was a good feeling in that sense where, like, yeah, you know, this person's gone, but listen, his impact, his legacy, like, look at all these things people are posting. It's it's amazing. And then I woke up the next morning. And that's when it all hit me, bro. I woke up and I was like, 
Oh my god, dude. This man is gone. I woke up and I was like, no, this can't be real, bro. Like, that's when it really hit in. And then I go on Twitter and I'm just like, people are still posting about this shit, bro. Because people are waking up at different points around the world. And they're all posting it, like, everywhere around the world. Everywhere around the world. Everywhere on the road. Different languages. Different. But you can all feel the same energy and the same intensity, bro. And I started my day. I went to the gym and dude, that workout, that workout was like nothing but Dragon Ball music. Like I remember I, I put on the, the Dragon Ball intro. Uh, I was listening to that in both English and in Japanese and bro, I put out the driveway and the second I heard that man say, find the Dragon Balls, look out for them all. Dude, I started bawling, bro. And then I was like, oh my fucking God, bro. This is fucking crazy, dude. And so it's like a 15 minute drive to the gym for me. And then I remember by the time I got to the gym, well, close to it, I was pulling into the parking lot. I was listening to um, the ending for Dragon Ball. You know, the, you know, come on, I'll give you romance. Come on, I'll give you paradise like that. I start bawling again, bro. I was like, what the fuck, dude? How am I going to go to the gym? And... I go to the gym and I'm just listening to, I'm just, I have a whole, I had a whole like Dragon Ball session. I was listening to like all Dragon Ball music. I was listening to like, um, you know, the, the Kai intros, like Dragon Soul. I was listening to Chala, Head Chala, I, everything, bro. The GT outros, like all that stuff. And, and then I got to that point in my workout where like, I love working out. You guys know this. Like it's, it's just in my blood. I'll, I'll be working out God willing and, until I'm in my nineties. Um, I got to that point where I like to play like certain clips from like anime or games that really get me hyped up and motivated. Like sometimes I'll play like the, the Devil May Cry 5 Virgil trailer. Sometimes I'll play All Might fighting Nomu. Sometimes I'll play like Cloud versus Sephiroth and Advent Children. And it's not just the music, it's the sound effects, it's the character voices. Like people who work out know exactly what I'm talking about. Like you need everything. Um I remember I was listening to I just decided to put on like the Dragon Ball. I I put on like uh Father Son Kamehameha Wave in like everything in Japanese, in the original Z dub, in the Kai dub, like everything I was listening to that and I was like, "Ooh. I feel that shit, bro." Mm. And then I did something different. I played a cutscene from Dragon Ball Z Budokai. And y'all know Dragon Ball Z Budokai for the PlayStation 2 computer entertainment system. The cutscenes in that game went off. And this is like the early 2000s, you guys. That shit was incredible. Um, I played... Again, I love the Father Son Kamehameha scene. I love it. I was listening to that and just everything surrounding it from like when Cell was powering up his Kamehameha wave. And then go on was like, I'm done. And then Goku says, like, yeah. <laughs> oh shit, bro. Like, Goku. He was like, use the pain of loss. Oh fuck, bro. And then like everything about that scene, bro. Because that scene, he was like, I'm not here, I'm somewhere else. <sighs> he was just like, you can do it, son. You just have to let go. Look inside yourself. I know you have the power you need. And I don't know what it was about that rendition of it more than anything that got me because then i i thought of that and then i was reminded of my aunt when she passed away <sighs> man 
and then and then I just started like I was listening to that scene and then I was working out at the same time I was doing it was a Friday so I was doing I think I was doing I was doing lateral raises at the cable machine and I just like I was listening to that at max volume and I just start crying and I was like god I mean, other people are going to think that this is just like me going through like a hard set, but I was like, yeah, I'm fucking fighting something right now, dude. <laughs> I'm fighting something, man. And it was, bro, it like that moment, like that was me just like letting everything out and going through the rest of the workout. And then, um, after that, I remember I, I, I came home and then I was just listening to like, it just listening to all the music. And I just, I remember like my sister, she was, I think getting ready for like a run. And then I was just over there like prepping my food. And then, and then I remember I just like, I was just like doing what I had to do. And I remember I was just like, the tears were just like flowing, bro. Like I wasn't even controlling. I was just like doing what I was doing and I was just crying. And I remember as I was getting ready for work later, I was like, I felt, I felt oddly, I felt better than I did the morning of because, because I let it all out and I just saw that the sun was shining. I mean, I don't know if you guys like believe in signs and shit like that, but to me it felt like letting out those feelings those emotions was like an expression of like how much this man's work has meant because it goes far beyond my enjoyment of just dragon ball and chrono trigger it's it's literally like without this man's work and him inspiring generations and millions i literally would not be where i am today <laughs> cuz you got to think about this there's levels and layers to this shit Without this man working on Dragon Ball, we wouldn't have gotten Naruto. We wouldn't have gotten all of these things that I started my YouTube channel talking about predominantly. Even though I love Dragon Ball, you know, I started talking about Naruto. Without this man working on the character designs for uh, Dragon Quest, we really wouldn't have gotten Final Fantasy. And if we didn't get Final Fantasy, we wouldn't have gotten Kingdom Hearts. So on some fundamental level, this man inspired everybody. And that's insane to think about because it's just like, holy fuck, like none of us would really know each other. Like, it's so weird. It's so fucking weird, dude. It's like people call Ozama Tezuka like the, the father of manga and everything with Astro Boy. And I believe that that's true. And then you have. um, OK, they're on the right right now. Wow, Netflix just texted me. You Hawker Show is now on Netflix. Oh, I already own the Blu-rays. Um, so <laughs> it's just it's so surreal. Like literally, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here. We would not fucking be here. Like, not only did he fundamentally change the landscape of how people work on stuff, but like literally, we would not be here without this man's influence and how he was just so he was he was he was unapologetically himself he did not ever apologize for anything that he did he was just him bro he had a character called trunks he had a character called bra he he, he like vegeta kakarot like it just <laughs> like all this shit and it, he took it a hundred percent seriously like, it was awesome and like just that imagination like daring to create daring to be different daring to be courageous like that is so important man that is so important and that is something that i think that even if it's something we did know it's good to be reminded of just being yourself and and just doing what you love and that's what he was kind of getting back to with daima and with all the other stuff like and that's what was that's that's what's so painful about the situation because Like, he was so excited to do more, and he just never, he's not going to get the, the chance to. But, you know, if there is one thing that I have learned in life, you guys, it's not necessarily what we didn't do, but it's about what we do in the moment that matters. So, 
it is corny and cliche to say, but like making the best out of every situation is so true. Like I'm telling you, man, it's so important. Even the smallest impact that you have, you never know what that would do for a person. Like the smallest character building situation, smallest dialogue, smallest conversation. Just be authentic and true to who you are, man. And honestly, I was kind of hesitant to, you know, talk about it again because I was just like, oh my God, is it going to bring back all those feelings and emotions that I had on that Friday? Now it's just like, okay, I'll wait. I'll give myself like a week to speak about it, you know? And it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be speaking about this shit, bro. <laughs> and it feels, it feels, it feels, it feels fucking great, dude. It feels fucking great to speak about this shit. And even though this, this man is gone, just knowing what he left for this world will be felt for generations, literally generations to come. I mean, we're still talking about Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball turns 40 this year, 40 years old. This thing is almost as old as Star Wars, guys. And I think that's the beauty of it. Some things are just so friggin' timeless, man. Seriously. <laughs> so, you know, rest in peace to the GOAT, the greatest that ever was, the greatest of all time, no one ever like him. But I think that's the important thing. It's not about being like this, man. It's about being your own person and doing your own thing and making your own impact while the time you have. Man, shout out to the GOAT of Kira Toriyama, man. Alrighty, so let's get through some of these super chats real quick. Appreciate you guys. So we have five dollars coming in from JFam. Toriyama impacted even people who didn't consume his work, and most of us are here in this stream because of his influence. Yeah, absolutely, dude. It's insane to think about. It's insane to think about, and that's why I will never take this shit for granted. I will never be one of those people that's just like, it's like, nah, man. This man's work literally changed my life. Literally changed my life on a personal level, on a professional level. Literally changed my life. And he just, it's just because this man picked up a pen. He just picked up a pen, man. That's all it is. Um, $2 super chat from Julian Phoenix. What are your top three DBZ fights? Uh, DBZ alone? Uh, so the first one I would definitely say is I loved, obviously, Gohan versus Cell. I love that. Second one would have to be uh, Goku versus Vegeta the first time. Third? Mm. Mm. It's a tie between Goku versus Majin Vegeta and then Goku versus Frieza. But honestly, I would throw some Dragon Ball fights in the mix. The OG Dragon Ball? Like Goku versus... General Tao is pretty good. Goku versus Piccolo. Goku versus Jackie Chun. Like there's there's a lot of OG Dragon Ball fights that are so good, man. Uh ten dollar super chat from JFam. What we do in life echoes through eternity. Absolutely, my brother. Absolutely, my brother, man. Absolutely. Five dollar super chat from Marcus Dole Terrell. One thing I loved about Toriyama was no matter how serious a fight got, if he saw an opportunity for a joke, he would do it, like Gohan versus Vegeta. Yeah, and that's the best part about it. He had a good balance to it, man. Like Toriyama, he started out as just being like an homage to Journey to the West, it being like a comedy series, and then it just transcended and it grew. But it never forgot who it was. And that's one thing I love about Dragon Ball. I will always love that about Dragon Ball. Okay, so. This guy should be here in five minutes. All right. Five minutes he should be here. Yeah. One thing I did do after um, after he passed away, I did escalate this Dragon Ball rewatch. And I'm in the process of watching. I haven't watched it in a week, but I, I'm like almost 10 episodes in. And dude, they really don't make this shit like they used to, bro. Watching Dragon Ball as an adult hits so differently than when you watch it as like a kid or a teenager. Like... It is such a good show, bro. OG Dragon Ball is so underrated, man. Like, Z is really good, too. You guys know this. But OG Dragon Ball, there's just such a purity to it. Such a purity to it. Piccolo versus Android 17 is super underrated. That was pretty good. 
<laughs> just the humor is just top notch, bro. Why would I want to touch your dirty old fanny? It is not dirty, you rude little boy. Oh my god, Goku with the impeccable roasting. So good, bro. Yeah, you're really not going to get anything like OG Dragon Ball, man. There really isn't anything like it. And that's one of the reasons why Z works so well. It works so well because they built up these characters throughout the course of Dragon Ball, bro. Yeah, Bulma definitely was about to flash a kid. There is something, <laughs> something not alright about that woman, Bulma. Yes, absolutely. And I implore you guys, if you haven't already, read the Dragon Ball manga too. Like, the anime is great. But the manga, that's that man's blood, his sweat, his tears, all of that. All of that, man. And it's worth checking out. And if you read the Dragon Ball manga, you're going to be in awe like, how the fuck? Because that what he did was not the norm. The way he drew action was not the norm, man. It's kind of like watch. Somebody brought this up. It's kind of like watching the Advent Children movie. In 2005... Animated movies were not made like that in the sense that they were like the highly stylized with the action scenes. They weren't really made like that. And then Aventura comes along and say what you will about the story and how messy it is. But it, what they did, like now you look at all the animation that's out now and how it looks. Oh, my God. Boma would. Yeah, Boma. I mean, to be fair, Boma, like she's still that kind of person to this day. You know, <laughs> Toriyama with the amazing character development. Bulma was a hoe turned into a housewife. Yeah. And look at like Vegeta, for example. Vegeta was a fuck boy. Vegeta was a fuck boy that got got a, that got domesticated. You know? Bulma pay all the bills, but you know, he there. He there to look cute or whatever. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, it's just <laughs> It's so fucking funny, man. Y'all talk about Sweet Baby yet? Oh, Sweet Baby Ink? Oh, brother. They just... Oh, boy. Sweet Baby Ink. I'm not going to speak too much on this shit because I just don't care about it. Sweet Baby Ink are just like the... <sighs> they keep fucking digging themselves a hole, man. It's like, fundamentally, I can understand wanting a wanting an outside look into entertainment and correcting certain things that, like, okay, that's not okay. You know what I'm saying? Like counseling and all that. But the way that they be handling the shit and some of the games that they be using, I'm just like, okay, something is off here. Something is definitely off. And then when you play some of these games, you see it. And it's just like, I'm not saying that they had 100% handling of these games, but you can definitely see some of the influence. It's just very strange. It's very strange, man. And then their handling of like things in the social media. Like I said, the people who are attacking them are not that much better either. But it's just, it, to me, just ugh, it's very bad and messy. Dude, I'm telling you, read the Dragon Ball manga. You're going to be stunned at how good it is. Did we talk about Stellar Blade yet? Oh, about the uh, the demo controversy? Yeah, so for whatever reason, the demo went live on PlayStation. And... The demo went live on PlayStation, and then people realized it wasn't supposed to go live on PlayStation, so PlayStation revoked the license for the demo, and so basically, even if you download the demo, you can't play the demo anymore, because they took it away, and I think, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I don't blame PlayStation, because if it went live when it wasn't supposed to, then yeah, of course, revoke the license, but to the same degree, it's actually kind of daunting, because as we've seen recently... That's why it's, you should be very careful about digital purchases because at a moment's notice, they can just revoke the license for whatever reason and take that away. Now, I say this as much as I love digital media for games, and for the most part, I'm 100% digital on things that aren't the Switch. Um, it is kind of scary living in that particular scenario. So it is just something to have a heads up, even though it was something as simple as a demo. You know what I'm saying? But... It is a thing, man, because all it's going to take is just one game for it to happen. Yeah, almost all of Sony's, I think all, almost all of Sony's first parties, like Spider-Man 2, God of War, Ragnarok, they did like consulting on almost all of them. Which, like I said, on a fundamental level, if you're doing consulting for certain things, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. But 
I'm just looking at the quality and the degradation of some some of the ones that have gotten hit the hardest. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm just like, wait, what? You know? But again, it's it's something where I'm just like, is the game really fucking good? Awesome. Oh, does Sweet BB Inc. work on that too? Yeah, okay, well, whatever, you know? But I think it's when the game is just like really off. That's when you're just like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like a lot of the things people say about like the side cast in Dragon Ball, they're wondering why didn't the OG Dragon Ball characters get development in Z? And I'm like, well, most of them did get development in OG Dragon Ball. So if they only got a handful of development in Z, it's because you already knew where the characters started and where they're going. So that's why I'm just like, I think the biggest problem was because with the anime, it was Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Whereas with the manga, it's just Dragon Ball. And then I think places outside Japan, they just labeled it Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z to separate it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying, Flame. I'm saying in the sense that, like, having an outside in as far as consulting goes and helping out, that's not a problem. But when you start doing other shit on top of that, that's where I'm like, ugh, you know? But then you, there's, like, certain... Things that were coming out saying like how they're like certain companies get investments if they can if they use people like Sweet Baby Inc. or something, they get extra money, which I'm just like, uh quotas and shit. Which again, if we start seeing way more games suffer from it, that's where I'm like, alright, bruh. If Stellar Blade doesn't sell 10 million copies at launch, I'm convinced PlayStation users are broke. Oh, it's not selling no 10 million. Do you know how many games actually sell 10 million? That's the crazy part. I think I think it will do okay. But it, again, I think what it comes down to is like, what are the expectations, you know? Because that's what it comes down to. Like, the fact that Atlas sold 1 million copies of both, pers no, well, Sega sold 1 million plus copies of both Persona 3 and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth in such a short amount of time, I'm sure that those are a success. Now, depending on what the budgets for some of those games are, I feel like Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth obviously had a bigger budget, so maybe it needs more to break even. But the Yakuza franchise was always niche. So, like, how expensive could this budget of the game be? But then again, from what I've been hearing, some people say that, yo, like, you look at the budget they put into this game, it's crazy. And not counting the celebrities and shit, but the other shit. So, I'm like, oh, okay. So, we'll see, man. Ten stellion copies. Tears of the Kingdom sold 20 million. It's just Breath of the Wild DLC. It's, it's a little more than that. Let's Let's be generous. It's a great game. But again, that's the power of Nintendo games. But the, but to be fair, not all Nintendo games sell 10 million either. I mean, you look at the sales of Metroid. You look at the sales of Pikmin. I mean, they're selling better than before, but they ain't selling crazy. Dragon's Dogma 2 or Rise of the Ronin? I would pick Dragon's Dogma 2. It just looks more compelling. Rise of the Ronin looks looks aight. It looks fun, but like I'm just Dragon's Dogma 2 has a lot more going for it, you know? Oh my god, we still live? Yeah, surprisingly, we still live. An extra hour. You guys... You guys got me for an extra hour while we ordered liquor. And this guy is taking his sweet ass time. He's like almost there. Yeah, he's like almost there. <laughs> yeah, Xenoblade. Xenoblade, after I finish Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, I'm going to finish up the Xenoblade um, Future Redeemed. I'm like halfway through. And then once I finish that, I'll be like, ah. This is good. I finished I've finished almost all of the Xenoblade content. Except for X, which hopefully they bring out on the Switch too. He may be drinking the bottle. Honestly, he might, David Biglad. He might be, bro. That, that must be why it's taking him some time. That man is like slipping and swerving. But I feel like that Suicide Squad game had way bigger problems than just Sweet Baby Inc. Fundamentally, the game as a concept is just flawed. Neo, am I the only one who gets Kingdom Hearts 2 vibes from playing Rebirth in the best way? Yeah, yeah, somebody pointed that out on Twitter. Yeah, it's one of those things, and I don't know if it's just because the combat is so fucking good, or it's just like a really high-quality square game with so much to do, but yeah, it's that Kingdom Hearts 2 effect. There's levels and layers to this, so I agree with that. It's that Kingdom Hearts 2 effect, yeah. Where it's... But I would say Kingdom Hearts 1 is a better game than Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'll say that much. Dude, I feel so bad for Rocksteady. Like, I honestly don't know what's going to happen to them now. Like, I don't... Because their founders left. The game flopped. 
Like, I'm worried, bro. I mean, then again, I don't know. Like, is Rock City a capable enough studio to create a game that people would want now? I don't know. I don't know, guys. Yeah, the only Nintendo IP... And you know what the crazy thing is? Before Breath of the Wild, um, Zelda games weren't really crazy like that in terms of sales. I think the highest selling was like, what? Not Skyward Sword. But like, they... I think they topped off at like 5 million. Oh, God, yeah. Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight is a, a cool game in a lot of respects. And then it's also just infuriating at times. The company is committing suicide. Squad? Or excuse me, the squad. Oh, my God. Look at you, Flame. All right. I'm looking at this guy. And he he's like right. He's pulling up. like He's on a bike. I don't know if he's. He might actually be on a bike. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, not to not to be talking, but sometimes people say they're on a bike when they're actually on a car. He actually might be on a bike. Get this man his whiskey so he can drink like Kiryu-chan. Kiryu-chan! <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get this whiskey, and then I will I'll take a shot for you guys live. We, this is the saga. This is the saga, guys. Shout out to the 41 people watching. Shout out to you guys. If you haven't already, hit that like button. It helps out the channel tremendously. All right, come on, homie. Come on. Like, literally, I'm just watching him like... Okay, so I'll be right back, you guys. I'm going to go I'm gonna go grab this whiskey, okay? I'll be right back. Stand by, guys. Stand by.
Okay, all right. So, we are back, you guys. All right, you guys still here? Okay, it says we're still good. Let's pretend he's muted when he returns. No, of course not. See. Yeah, y'all think you slick. All right, so we're back. Okay, so for the first time on stream, we ordered... So, like, 10 years ago, when they first announced that you can order, like, pizza on the internet, like, 10 plus years ago, I remember we did a stream, and we are like, fuck it, let's order Domino's Pizza online, not on the, what's it called, the, like, you know, you call it. Like, we ordered it online, and I was like, oh, that's fucking crazy, man. And so, you guys think you're slick. No, I'm not muted. <laughs> um... And so I was like, fuck it, you know, now let's let's order liquor because we only had like one shot. So it's like, fuck it, let's go for it. So by cur courtesy of uh, Stephen Kennedy right here, we the liquor of choice for tonight is a Dewar's blended scotch whiskey. I've only had this one time and it was like almost 10 years ago when I was at Oticon. And um, what's it called? Uh, I had one shot, I think, like before we went out and everything. So this has been the longest time since then. And because it is the month of March. Irish, got to have some whiskey. So that's what we're doing. So this is double age for extra smoothness. So we're going to see if this really holds up. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, this is uh, the product of Scotland. So yes, that's going to be really cool. He's like, it's beautiful. Of course, David over here is hyped for this shit. But yeah, let's uh, crack this open. Ooh, it definitely smells like whiskey, but it's not like when you open a bottle like Jack or something and you just be like, it's fucking whiskey, bro. This is. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. So we'll just do a shot. So right now we're currently on a shot and a half tonight from the tequila and now whiskey. Normally I don't like to mix light and dark. You know, I like to keep it one, you know. But, you know, for today we're going to make an exception because it's the luck of the Irish and everything. And I didn't drink. I didn't go out because I was working this weekend. I didn't go out for St. Patty's Day. So I was uh, like, yeah, you know, fuck it. Um, Hold on. Um, wait, hold on, wait. Okay, no, we're good. <laughs> I was like, like, what the fuck is that? Um, but yeah, so we're gonna take this shot, probably hang out for a couple more minutes, and then call it a night. So, we're gonna toast this shot to the homie Akira Tori Yama. We're gonna toast to the homie. Thank you so much for everything you've brought into this world, for the millions and millions that you've inspired for generations to come. Your work will live on in eternity. So shout out to you, my guy. Thank you. Hmm. That is, as far as whiskey standards go, that's pretty smooth. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. Day 12, the whiskey bottle never showed up. No, it was because, uh, you know, whenever you order on the... um. This is my first time ordering liquor. They they have to scan the ID and everything. And because I live in an area that doesn't have good reception for most carriers, strangely enough, um, we had to like wait for it to process. Toast to Lizzie McGuire thickness. Yeah, shout out to uh Hillary Duff, man. Gotta be like Goku and chow down on some dumplings. Yeah, bro. Eat multiple plates, man. Gotta do all that for the goat. Speaking of Goku, shout out to my homie uh shut up Gabe. He got me this a few years ago. This, even though Toriyama, you know, GT is not canon to him, but you know, this Super Saiyan 4 Goku, this design is still so fucking sick, man. Like they really popped off when they made this shit. His tail kind of got fucked up. Oh no, his tail's on backwards. That's why. I was about to say, like, what the fuck happened to his tail? But now we're gonna insert this into Goku's asshole. I didn't know Goku swung that way, but hey, you know. There we go. Jam it right up in there. There we go. Better hold on or else Ace Breaker is going to get horny. But yeah, there we go. Super Saiyan 4. It was very bright, but there you go. Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Sick. 
I love Ultra Instinct, but Super Saiyan 4 Goku is just so fucking cool. Why Vegeta had that leather jacket, I don't know. I don't know. The original Super Saiyan God, so the one with just the red hair. That was not bad. It wasn't. It was it was interesting, I'll say that much. And then when you got to Super Saiyan Blue, it was um What's it called? It it, it felt more Super Saiyan like, like traditional Dragon Ball. And then Ultra Instinct felt more like traditional Dragon Ball. Super Saiyan 4 Goku got that prison treatment. Oh god. Hey yo, what the fuck? Goku's a real man until he gets pegged. Y'all wild, bro. Super Saiyan 3's design was... Uh, the, the lack of the eyebrows, to this day, always shocked me as a kid. The lack of eyebrows is crazy. Because I'm just like, did the eyebrows disappear? Because it went to like forming the rest of his hair? Like It's just like... <laughs> The hair is so dope and everything, but I'm like, why is it that long? I feel like that would get in the way of the fights. You feel me? Like Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, his hair is like damn near at his feet. You know? Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. Oh, I remember that was such a big deal when Raging Blast came out. We saw Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. I was like, holy shit, this game is perfect. Sacrifices were made for Super Saiyan 3, yeah? Dude, I really want to get into that Unicorn Overload game, but there's just... I know when I finally get into it, I'm going to be excited to play it. Because of just all the good fucking word of mouth, man. Like, And I, that's one thing I do love about this era of gaming, especially if you're in a, a really tight-knit community on social media. You... Like, there's just so much, um, like, like if you have good people in your circle, in your community, you can talk about a lot of different type of games. And there might be some things that fly under the radar. Because beforehand, man, like, just because, like, before, when I would talk about Persona, it would only be with, like, a handful of people. And then if I make a video, I'd have people commenting. But now, because we have, like, all these communities on, like, Twitter and Discord and everything, it's like you say something about it, and then it's just, like, more people pile on and people are like oh what's this game i want to check this out and everything and now now i'm at the point where i'm just like oh my god what is this game and then people are like yo check this out right here if i become a barber i'll give you the super saiyan 3 treatment <laughs> and so it's gonna be like the gta san andreas where you just add hair with the haircuts did you end up watching superhero i thought i was going to watch it on um thursday and friday night but i just i couldn't man the emotions were still too high the emotions were a little too high that I was like, no, I can't do that right now. I cannot do that at the moment, but I still have it here. I'm, I'm eventually going to get to it. <laughs> Does Trunks have a widow's peak under that bowl's cut? Does Trunks have a widow peak? Oh my God, that's a good question. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think that's what he inherited from Vegeta. If he did, I feel so bad for him. Yeah, because here's the thing. Like, Superhero, I mean, I wouldn't say I was shitting on it, but I was just like, I felt like with the animation that we got in the Super Broly movie, I felt like we should have stuck to that trend, and then they went and they did something different, and I was like, oh, God. Um, but I've been hearing good things about the movie. Do you watch any K-dramas? I haven't really watched any to completion in a while. Uh, I did start this one drama on Netflix. Um, 
what's it called? Uh, it was a rom com. Uh, 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 something, something. What was it called? Learning to romance, romance communication. Uh, it's like a really popular, like rated drama. You guys, like one of you guys will know what it is before I check my Netflix queue. I, I watched five episodes of it and I was really enjoying it. And then I stopped because I think I was watching something else. Let me find it real quick. It was. No, I haven't watched solo leveling yet. Let me see. Yes, I've seen beef. Beef is phenomenal. I binged it in like a weekend. If you guys have not seen beef, check it out. Apparently, it's about to be an anthology series now. It's awesome. Different people every season. Okay. So, the series that I watched was... Where is it? Is it? Did I watch it under somebody else's account? Hold on. What? Where are all these gay dramas? Hold on. I need to... Wow, Hades is playable on Netflix games. That's crazy. I'm checking the categories right now. Korean dramas. Where are they? Oh, I'll check romance. Hold on. I'm, I'm determined to find this drama. It's like a very highly rated Korean drama. No one has commented it yet. Uh, I think it, I think it was called Crash Course in Communicating. I think. Let me see if that's a real name. Crash Course in Romance. Yes, Crash Course in Romance. I watched five episodes of that. There's sixteen, and they're all like an hour ish, like an hour ten, hour fifteen. But I was watching that because I love rom coms, and that was pretty solid for five episodes. So Crash Course and Romance I watched. And there's a whole bunch of other ones that I need to check out too. There's a lot of K-dramas. Um, I'm checking my list of other stuff that I watched. Uh, Well, I'm just naming like random series now, whether it's K-dramas or not. But Alice in the Borderland, I know most of you guys have seen that. That's a phenomenal show. Um, Sweet Home. Sweet Home is good. Sweet Home is very good. Um, Shogun I want to watch. Like I said, I'm just naming random shit now, but like Train to Busan, very good movie. I'm just naming shit you can see on Netflix. Yeah, Shogun. Shogun is on my list, bro. I've heard great things. Shogun, um, I do want to watch Foundation. Like, like I said, like once I get bored of games for a while, I'm going to sit and just watch a shit ton of, um, a shit ton of TV shows. Are you interested in romance? Uh, Kaguya-sama Love is War. Yes, I loved Kaguya-sama Love is War. It is so fantastic. I was like, fantastic, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, Another really good one I'm watching. I'm not watching it like week to week, but I did binge a little bit of it when I was at this girl's place. Um, uh, A Silent? Uh, no. A sign, a sign Affection? A Sign of Affection? That one? That's cute. That's a nice cute. It's about a deaf girl. She's signing and she likes this nice, this nice cute guy. That's nice. Um, yeah, I do want to watch that show, uh, Farin, Fren, Farin, that thing that's been on my list all season. People keep telling me to watch that. Um, Delicious Dungeon or something on Netflix. My sister is hyping that shit up. That's good too, apparently. Um, oh, Silent Voice. That's a fucking sad movie. Great movie, but that's a sad movie. David, let's take another shot, bro. Yeah, for, for, how do you pronounce it? Freeren? Fryren? 
French toast? I could go for some French toast right now, actually. You know, shout out to diners that are open 24-7. David's like, yes. Free Aaron? Free Aaron. Yeah, Aaron did nothing wrong. Dungeon, yeah, the dun delicious dungeon everyone said is good. Like, I'm trying to, like, I be watching anime, and I be, the most I binged anime recently was, like, 2022. I was watching uh, Chainsaw Man, Spy Family, Urusei Atsura, and Mob Psycho Season 3 all at the same time, and I loved it, you guys. It was so good. It was so good watching that weekly. And now I need to catch up on Spy Family, Urusei Atsura, same two. Fre free, free, free Aaron, Aaron Yeager, Sasage, yo. Um... Yo, Cyberpunk Edge Runners is one of the best anime out there. Like I, that, Blue Eyed Samurai was really good. Have you guys seen Pluto on Netflix? I know I'm just speaking about old shit now, but Pluto is fantastic. Highly recommend you check that out. Um, it's it's from uh, Naoki Urasawa, the guy who did Monster, and he basically took like this sliver of like Naoki Urasawa's work with Astro Boy, and he's just like, I'm gonna do this whole thing, bro. It's sick. All right, so we'll take another shot. I don't know what we're toasting to at this point. Toasting to good fucking entertainment. That's what I'm talking about. Good fucking entertainment. A lot of anime, a lot of movies, a lot of video games, and the like. Toasting to that. Have you seen Dr. Stone? No. You know what the thing is, guys? Because you know me. I'm very... I'm very particular about the anime I watch these days. Um, I've basically got my fill of a lot of shonen series. I've got my fill of a lot of, you know, like I've got my fill of just a lot of shonen types. Like it's just it does not do anything for me unless it's interesting or doing something different, or you know, it has like an interesting concept like Chainsaw Man or. You know, like certain anime, and I'm not just talking about shonen, but like certain anime, I'm just very particular. If I look at it, I'm just like, uh. but then there's some things that I get recommendations from people to check out. And you're like, yo, you, you, you need to watch this shit. Like Oshinoko, I got a recommendation from Flame to watch that. That shit was baller. That shit was great. Um, And, I, and then I went online and some people said it was mid. And I was like, what? And I was like, that shit was awesome to me, bro. Um. Dr. Stone, I've heard good things. Dr. Stone, I've heard good things from the right people, if that makes sense. I'm not hearing it from the Shonen Hype Beast. Like, Shonen Hype Beast, when I hear them come on here, it's like, yo, this shit is hype, bro. And it's just Sakuga, the animation. I'm like, all right, bro. But then when I hear shit like, okay, no, this is good. I'm like, okay. But you guys are giving some good recommendations. I like that. Have you watched Jujutsu Kaisen? I, I need to catch up on season two. I'm a couple episodes into season two. And Jujutsu Kaisen is one of the ones where a lot of people are saying, if you want a good mainstream shonen show, watch Jujutsu Kaisen. And I'm hearing that from the shonen bros and the people that don't fuck with shonen like that. So that's what gives me hope to like continue. Too many good anime exist. I'm already good on most new stuff. Yeah, sometimes you just want to go back and watch an OG, bro. Like Outlaw Star, bro. They don't make anime like Outlaw Star anymore, man. They couldn't even make an anime like Great Teacher Onizuka. They really couldn't, bro. They really couldn't. Damn, now I've had some alcohol. I want some cookies, bro. This cookie box is four cookies for $25. How big are these cookies? What time do they close? Damn, buy one, get one free. Dippin' Dots. Why would I want to have a Dippin' Dots that's that big, bro? Wait, buy one, get one free cookie box of four cookies. $25. But you get eight cookies for twenty five dollars. That's not a bad deal. Like I told you guys, I'm very frugal. I grew up just like 
literally just go, going for deals because this is a good deal. Get chocolate Oreos, man. You won't regret it. You know what it is? Okay, so here's so when I'm drinking or when I'm high, I like savory stuff. I love a lot of salty things. So I love chips. I love burgers. I love wings. I love French fries. And I'll have some sweets at the end. Like I have a jar of Talenti cookies and cream gelato that I can kill later. Um, but I don't have anything salty, which kind of sucks in my opinion, because I like salty things. It's just good. But I'll take the sweet stuff for a change. <laughs> Yo, you know what I, you know what, you know what, you know what I kind of be fucking with? Oreo Thins mint chocolate chip. Well, it's just mint, but I like that because, you know, I feel, I feel like I'm watching my figure when I do Oreo Thins. Bet if you're drinking whiskey, the best snack to have is french fries. Can't beat that. Yo. But the problem, Steven, the problem, my friend, is that there's no places that have good french fries around. Like, I, <laughs> All the places I would fuck with are closed. It's 10.30 at night. And yes, if I did these streams earlier, I could order. But no, nah, I don't live like that. Like, we already ordered McDonald's on one live stream, so we can't do that again. And also, like, at this stage, man, McDonald's is as expensive as going to an actual restaurant. And I'd rather order an actual restaurant. You know what I'm saying? I'm just looking at all this random hair that I'm growing on my body. I'm I, Genetically, my... I guess my family, my kin, we're not really hairy individuals, but I'm starting to notice like hair in certain places that weren't there before. I don't know. I feel like I'm going through puberty all over again. You guys, these are the random thoughts of Neo at 10 34 at night. Yo, you know what I can fuck up right now? A cot. This is crazy. We're going on four hours and we still have a lot of people watching my randomness. <laughs> What are you guys doing right now? I'm curious because a lot of you guys have been here since the fucking beginning and I appreciate that. But I, what are y'all doing right now? What are y'all doing? You guys know what I'm doing. I'm chilling. I'm vibing. I'm doing my thing, bro. Nah, see, the problem is you don't want to get them in the styrofoam containers. You want to get them in the plastic containers. And a business that gives you it in the plastic containers is top tier because styrofoam produces too much friggin fry sweat that's my name i'm using for it too much friggin fry sweat bro i don't like that shit but in a plastic container it's evenly distributed this is science bitch i'm editing a video for a client Ooh, what is it is it a porn hub this time shout out to you narukami I, I appreciate you bro you working your way up man cooking and eating yes sir what's on the menu for tonight man ross cooking and eating at the same time i'm just person i gotta cook everything first and then eat it because i'm too tempted Ooh, I could go for that whiskey glazed cheeseburger, man. Trying to take a family photo, actually. Well, you're trying to take a family photo, and you're... Am I in the background during this family photo? Bitch, you better put me in the photo. Can I pose for the photo? Take the family photo. Bro, come on now. I'm, I'm base. I know you, Jason. I'm basically family, bro. Let me get up in that shit. Tell me when you're hitting... Tell me when you're hitting, like, record or timer or that shit, and I'll pose. You know what? Let me at least get ready. Can I put the Naruto headband on? Can I put the Naruto headband on? Can I do something? Something, Jason. Come on now. I'm cooking spinach pasta and I'm eating cereal. What kind of cereal? I had cereal today. I had, because my shop right, they got, you know, Magic Spoon cereal, the low carb cereal with high protein. They were selling that shit. It's normally $10 a box, Whoa. but it was on sale for $5 a box. Mm. And I had uh, two cups of that. Not that bad, especially because it's high in protein, no sugar. Awesome. Had that today. It was good. You know what, Jason? Give me the photo. I'm about to be like, like it's too, I'm perpetually stuck in 2012. I'm about to be like, <laughs> yeah, ten dollars a box is wild. Yo, I mean, it. Listen, re ninety four. If you live this healthy lifestyle, is good cereal. Would I pay ten dollars a box? Absolutely not. Would I pay five dollars a box for three, five, ten, fifteen? Absolutely, I would. Because I wouldn't have it all the time. Like it's going out of style. You know what I'm saying? I would savor that. It's good cereal. It is good cereal. I got the chocolate, I got the fruity, and I got the peanut butter. So I got an eclectic mix. You know what I'm saying? I think by the time I get to Rebirth, it'll be on Xbox. I don't know about that, Chief. But then again, this new Square Enix CEO, he's um he's adamant about making money. He's just like, what the fuck have y'all been doing? So we might see Rebirth on Xbox in like 2035. But will there be an Xbox in 2035? I don't know. 
Oh, okay, man, Ross. I feel, dude. Honey bunches of oats is is fire, bro. Honey bunches of oats, cinnamon toast crunch, Reese's puffs is like if I had to pick three cereals that I would have. Like if someone said like we're going to Costco, I would get one of those three. But Reese's puffs, man. I had that Goku Reese's puffs box I brought, bro. I'm guys. On the next stream, you see me. That Goku Reese's puffs box is gonna be up there. I'm gonna find space for it. I'm gonna put that box up there. It's gonna be forever immortalized. It'd be great, man. How many of you guys knew I had a handsome squidward down there? That's from Gabe. That's my homie Gabe. He got me that shit. And there's Ori down there. Ori Deluxe Edition with both games on the Switch. Those are my toothbrushes. My toothbrush heads for my electric toothbrush. Yeah, man. I gotta organize that shit, bro. I prefer Lucky Charms. Really? I'm not gonna front, Corridor. I don't really fuck with Lucky Charms. I feel like people like Lucky Charms because of the marshmallows. And honestly, honestly, I, to me, that takes away the, the appeal of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like Frosted Flakes are good, but it's just Corn Flakes with sugar. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need, I need a little bit more to the mix. I need a little bit more. We will be rebirthing. I love that phrase, NKDN. You really came up with some gold by saying we will be rebirthing. That sounds like, you know what that sounds like, bro? What did Jason just send me? Oh my God! <laughs> I'm fucking screaming to you! Jason, guys. I was joking about this shit, but Jason sent me an image of his family photo with him and his family and me in the background doing the pose. I was screaming. I need this on a fucking wall. I'm about to frame this shit. Yes, sir. Yo. Tell your mom I said what's up. That sounds really fucked up, but tell your mom I said what's up. <laughs> and tell your mom... I'm about to be coming over. We all gonna hang out. I'm gonna bring a bottle of red wine. We're gonna be lit. Definitely in the summertime, yes. Before you guys move, yes. That shit was so funny, though. I was just like, what is this photo? And I see that shit. Oh, let's go. Shout out, shout out to Jason's mom. She'd be supporting the hobbies and the habits. Lucky Charms had a collab with Frosted Flakes, and that shit slapped. I believe it, because it's actually a good cereal now. The best cereal in the world is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It is, but you know what? Reese's Puffs? Reese's Puffs peanut butter chocolate flavor? You guys remember the commercial. I guess I'm taking another shot. I guess so. I still feel good, though. Bro, you know what movie I really need to watch soon? Like, rewatch? I need to rewatch Oppenheimer, man. I have not rewatch. I still have my 4K Blu ray that I haven't opened. I need to rewatch Oppenheimer, but I've been waiting for like the right moment where the planets align, where I can just set aside three hours and just like be absorbed in that movie. Because that movie takes a lot out of me, man. Man, I haven't been able to eat shit since I'm sick. Y'all making me hungry, though. Damn, maybe this will help you, though. Here I come, I am Cinnamon. Shot, 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 shots. Everybody, yeah. So we're gonna take this next shot to um. You know what we're gonna take this shot to? We're gonna take this shot to the stream. This is a stream shot. That sounds like a special attack, man. Stream shot. Hey yo, bro. Stream shot. It sounds pretty fire now that I think about it. We're gonna take the shot to the stream. Take a shot to the fucking viewers. I love you guys. And this is not the liquor talking because you know you know me. I always say this shit every stream. Sober or not. But if there's one thing that I am grateful for in doing this shit for well over 15 years at this point, <laughs> as strange as that sounds, I'm grateful for all of you guys for sticking around, for hanging out, even if it's just doing random shit like this, just talking about games, you know. Every now and then we get serious and we talk about some serious life-changing shit. But just all this stuff, man. 
even if we're all busy and we're not, you know, streaming for a while, we just all get together on a random Tuesday and we just, we hang out, we have a ball. And one thing that I hope to do in the future is get to know you guys a lot more on a personal level. If there's one goal for my 30s, it's just to like really get out there and meet a lot more of you guys. I try to make it a point to meet like someone every year. And I've been doing good at that throughout my 20s, but now I want to do more than that. So that's that's the uh, that's the goal. Shout out to Fuzzy Belvedere, my dear, my dear Fuzzy Belvedere, my guy right there, my guy Fuzzy. I'm still dying, bro. I Fuzzy, like literally every single time I see your name on Twitter, bro, I just remember that photo you took with Phil Spencer, and I was just like. Why does this look like Fuzzy is photoshopped into the frame? Because of the lighting and that scene. It's just like the haters will say it's photoshopped. And I'm just like, no, Fuzzy was there with the homie Phil. But, yeah, shout out to you guys. I'm excited for this next decade. Should be very interesting. Boundless freedom. It's so scary, but it's so enticing. I feel like I channeled what Aerith was saying. Nobody can control us now. I'm excited to see what the future brings. So, shout out to you guys. And I feel like by the end of the year, we're probably going to secure a sponsorship from some alcoholic company. I have a feeling. Um, Corey Gryffindor says, here's a tip. If you ever want to date Tifa, don't do every side quest or else you'll max out others' relationships. Focus on how to respond to her and the missions. Focus on her. You see? Oh, so they don't do it like Persona. I see. My whole thing is this, man. <sighs> my whole thing is this. Persona's still got some of the best dating mechanics, bro. With Rebirth, I can't help it if I do synergy skills because I need to get through the combat. That's not my fault. If I do synergy skills and I get closer with Red 13. If I get closer with Red 13, that's my boy. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy right there. And you told me that I can't romance Tifa because she's jealous. Listen, Tifa, man's best friend is this dog, cat, cat, dog, cat, dog, cat, dog looking thing that is Red 13. And if you you got a problem with Red 13 coming in here and sleeping on the bed, listen, Red 13 stays on the bed just like socks stay on during sex. That's a lie. I've never had sex with socks on. That's actually kind of psychotic when you think about it. Why are you walking around this? Why are you walking around with socks on? That's just weird to me, bro. I don't know. Do you guys have sex with socks on? I can understand having sex with socks on in the sense that like you still got your pants on, but not when you got no. I'm sorry, Jason's mom, if you're still listening. I'm sorry. We're 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 far gone at this point. I'm sorry. I'm a bad influence. <laughs> but like, can't have socks on. That's just weird to me. No red. Red 13, when he did that thing, which I'm not going to spoil, but when he did that thing in that chapter, I was dying. I was like, holy fuck, these people are fans of that person, and you guys know what I'm talking about. And you know what I'm talking about. Oh, damn. Reed said he's built different because he's still got the Tifa date. Aerith either starts out with more points or gains more points than other characters for relationships. I had to sabotage all dialogues for her when I found out. You know what the funny thing is, bro? You know how, like, in Mass Effect or in all these other games where you just, like, it just lays it out very blatantly, Paragon, Renegade, Neutral? I'd just be saying the shit that'd be coming to my mind in this game. And sometimes it'd be like, your relationship is deepened. And other times, just, like, Neutral. And other times, just like, ugh. I'm like, ha ha ha. Bro admitted he only has sex with feet. Who? That's not what I said. That is not what I said. I do not have sex with feet. I said I don't have sex with socks on. That's what I said, sir. We need the full context. C O N T E X T. Context. Context. It's like convict minus the vict, and then it's like subtext minus the sub. So, vict sub. You, J fam. Battlestar Galactica. Nah, but you know what the thing is with Aerith? It took me a while to learn Aerith's play style because Aerith is... I'm not going to front. If you just be spamming the, the magic attacks, you ain't going to do shit with Aerith. Aerith, you really need to spec her materia. You need to spec her materia and get the limits. Get her limits up and she becomes broken. 
Yuffie and Tifa off Riff are broken as fuck. But when you level up Aerith and you get her to that point, she can do some serious damage. Like in this game, Cloud, Red 13, Barret, Tifa, Aerith, Yuffie, they're all fucking good. I don't know about that nigga Cape Sif, though. I don't know about him. Con sex? You have sex of cons? Sir, this is a Christian YouTube channel. This man, Bosch, says always wear socks? Bro, who raised you? Bro, who raised you, Bosch? You live on the wild side, I see. Man lives on the wild side. Yo, speaking of, like, unrelated wild shit, this was on the timeline recently. Can we talk about how great of a game this was? Listen, I don't care if it appealed to the weebs like me. I loved this game. I don't care that I had to play it three times. I don't care that it had fucking Harry Potter mechanics. I don't care. This game was awesome. It was great. <laughs> I, Corey Gryffindor, I just, I, I, I fluctuate back and forth with how I pronounce his name, man. I'm bisexual like that. Not really, though. Oh, you did, Jason? That's awesome, dude. I have this Yu Gi Oh! I have a couple of Yu Gi Oh cards on the floor for some reason. I have a lot of Yu Gi Oh cards on the floor. We are going to go through all of them that are randomly on the floor. Hold on. Hold on. I have a bunch of Yu Gi Oh cards on the floor. I think they fell out of this binder. Not the binder, but like this Millennium Collection. I think that's what it was called. Hold on. Stand by. For Titanfall. That's a that's a local reference. Jesus, these Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Okay. Let's look at all these random Yu-Gi-Oh cards that fell on the ground. Okay. Oof. Some of these cards might be older than you guys. Uh we got Rock Bombardment. Rock Bombardment. Ooh, this is a classic. Witch of the Black Forest. Yeah. Uh, Legendary Black Belt. I don't know why I look at this and I think of freaking... um, I think of Marcus does stuff for some reason. I think he's a Legendary Black Belt. Marcus, did you ever do Taekwondo or Karate or something? It's probably gone. Monster Reborn. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Nobleman of Cross Guard. Of Cross Out. Uh, this is like a Hawaiian card, I guess. Maui intercept cannons. Hula! <laughs> Crash Bandicoot. Samsara. Spark Blaster. Oh, we in the Elemental Hero era. Yes, sir. Ja oh my god. I would play the shit out of the Jack's Knight, Queen's Knight thing. Uh, Brow Huntsman of the Dark World. Oh, my dark paladin. My dark paladin right here. I got the sleeve on the back, too. Ooh, Elemental Hero Rampart Blaster. When I tell you GX reinvigorated my love for Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Grass Phantom. I don't know what that's all about. Ooh, Jirai Gumo. This reminds me of uh, OG Yu-Gi-Oh! Ooh. Fusion Weapon. OP as Fuck, bro. OP as fuck. 1,500 point. Uh, rapid Fire Magician. I used to piss people off with this shit. Because you inflict 400 points of damage to your opponent's life points each time you activate a normal spell card. I would piss niggas off. Oh, I love the Arm Dragon set. Yep. I got another one. Arm Dragon. Yep. Archfiend's Oath. And the final one. <laughs> Labyrinth Tank. OG Yu-Gi-Oh cards. OG. Oh, God. Speaking of another relic from a lost era. Y'all remember the OG unboxing of this bad boy. To this day, this is still one of my favorite Kingdom Hearts covers. Oh, yo. Man. Memories, dude. I remember... I remember I contemplated... I was in college at the time. I contemplated 
leaving school on my break in between classes, I was contemplating taking the bus to a GameStop, picking up the game, and going back to school. I was contemplating that, but I wouldn't have enough time, so I just went later on in the day. And funny enough, this is the funny story, guys. The funny story. Neo got goofy tonight, yeah. The funny story. I summoned Pot of Green and I... <laughs> that fucking meme video. Um, Funny enough, let me tell you how small the world is. So I went to my local GameStop, right, in my city. And I bought Kingdom Hearts 1.5, 2.5. Well, 1.5 on PS3. I got it that day, and it was the last day one edition they had, which had the, you know, the, the shit I just showed you. The girl that sold it to me is actually friends with someone who I work out with at the gym 10 years later. And I'm just like, what are the fucking odds? And I see her like once a week, twice a week, something like that. And we're cool now. And I'm just like, what are the fucking odds of that, bro? And I was just like, you look fucking familiar. Did you work at GameStop 10 years ago? And she was like, yeah, I did. I was like, what the fuck? You sold me this game. She's like, what? And I was like, yep. So, yeah. And I remember like at that moment, I was just like, oh, my God, can I shake your hand? And I was like, yeah, oh. that's my shout out to my homegirl, Christina. Yeah, dude, it's such a small world. That's my homegirl, Christina. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you've seen Christina before. She's cool. But it's it's such a small world, bro. Dude, I always get nostalgia for Kingdom Hearts. When people talk about nostalgia, to me, it's Kingdom Hearts. It's Kingdom Hearts, Yu Hakusho, and Dragon Ball. Those three, no. Mm, I have to add Naruto to the mix. That's four. Because I remember Naruto... Dude, I will never forget when I first watched Naruto. All right, all right, we're going. We have forty-two viewers. You guys are down for the the cause. We're still here five hours, four hours later. Where were you guys when Naruto first aired? I will tell you where I was. This was the first showing where I camped out for the first episode. I will tell you what happened. So, I had read a little bit of the Naruto manga in Shonen Jump because you know I was. I was one of those dudes who had been reading Shonenism for a few years. Um, so I, I read Naruto and his escapades with Suke, Sakura, Kakashi, as Naruto wanted to become the Hokage, because that's how I pronounced it, the Hokage, the Hokage. I, you guys know I had a I had I had a problem pronouncing shit. I I, I had a pr problem pronouncing a lot of things as a kid. Like I just I hooked on phonics it did not work for me apparently, but. Uh, with Naruto, I remember I saw in Shonen Jump that it was going to be on Toonami. Remember, back in the day, guys, if you weren't on the internet, all your news came from magazines. So, I remember reading up on this. I was like, oh, Nar Naruto is going to be on Toonami later this fall, 2005. I was like, whoa, okay, Naruto's getting in. Okay, all right, I'll see what this is him for. And so, I remember... My father had this weird obsession with, like, this is so weird. I mean, he was probably doing this just for good. Like, we never went camping before in our lives. But what my father would do is he would, like, assemble the tent outside in the backyard to simulate camping for us, I guess. I don't know. You know, parental things or whatever. And I remember he put the TV in there. And I remember that weekend... I was in the tent by myself with the TV and I was watching Naruto, the first episode as it aired. And it was just me by myself with the TV and a light. And I was just watching Naruto and I was like, whoa, this is crazy, bro. Because that was the first time where I had read something and I'd watched it get animated. Usually it was the opposite. I would watch the anime and then read the manga. But I was like reading it and then I saw it. And I was like, whoa, this is surreal, bro. And I remember I watched it. And, okay, before that, we're going to take a shot to, this shot is dedicated to Jason. Jason and his mom for taking that legendary photo. Shout out to you guys. Because for real, that that made my fucking night, bro. I was joking about that shit, and you're like, you know what? And you fucking did it. Jason is like, we standing on business tonight. On on uh, March 19, 2024. We, sh we, sh we, sh we standing on that business. We stand on business tonight. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to y'all. Um, 
Um, okay, so, all right. So I was watching Naruto, and Fuzzy Belvedere is just like whenever I take a shot, he's like shot. Shout out to you, Fuzzy. Shout out to you, my G. I love Fuzzy. Fuzzy, Fuzzy's. If you guys don't follow Fuzzy, follow Fuzzy on um Twitter. It's just Fuzzy Belvedere. He's dope. He has a great icon. I've been on with him when I was ever whenever I pulled up to the shop. He's great. Hint. Like, honestly, like, one thing I do love about, like, the past four years, if you believe it or not, four years, is I've just, I've met so many more people. Like, I met so many amazing people for him, but I met so, so many even more people, like, with just the Xbox stuff and everything, like, Fuzzy, Ains, PTK, like, just so many, so many fucking people, which just goes to show you that it's just, like, being yourself is so paramount in life. Like, it's just so paramount. Just be yourself. Don't try to do anything else than that. And you will find people that you fuck with. And it's awesome. And one thing that's really cool to me. Like, as weird as it sounds. I know. But, like, because I'm younger. is weird. I know. I'm 30. But, like, I'm younger. And I see all these people who are, like, married. They have kids. They have their whole lives happening and everything. And they're still, like, invested in all this shit. I was like, that's awesome, dude. You know what I'm saying? And Fuzzy. Because Fuzzy grew up in the Bronx. I was like, oh, shit. I even relate to that even more. You know, when Fuzzy was was um, was um labeling his crossroads and everything, I remember one time, I was like, oh, fuck, bro. That's lit. So, yeah, it's, it's lit. Um, But back to what I was saying about Naruto. So, I remember I watched the first episode. I was like, wow, this, this show is great. And, and I was watching Naruto weekly. And it was just so cool. It was so cool because, like, I was watching Weekly and then people in my school were watching Weekly. And it's like, dude, like, shit, we're all watching this show, man. We're all watching this show, man. We're all fucking watching this show at the same time, man. And we're all cognizant of it. Like, we all remember this. Because it's not like we were younger when we were watching Dragon Ball or Pokemon or whatever. Like, we're all cognizant of it. And I remember I miss... (laughs) Okay, so this is where I fucked up. I misinterpreted what Kunoichi meant. Because I thought Kunoichi was like another way to say ninja. Because Sakura said it one time in like the third episode or something. And I was like, oh, Kunoichi must be like a way to learn, like mean like you're a ninja or some shit. I was wrong. And so I remember I was talking to all my friends. And I was just like, yeah, guys, we're all ninja. We're all Kunoichi. And they're like, yeah, we're all Kunoichi. And I was just like, yeah. And then I found out what Kunoichi meant. And I was like, Oh no! <laughs> I was like, "Oh no!" Hey yo, speaking of the homie, shout out to my man's Blaze 4K right there. Yes, sir, Blaze, my guy. What's up, bro? Blaze, you always come through when I'm like, like six shots in, bro. What, Blaze? It's like you know, it's like you got a fucking, fucking bat sonar detector in the sky every single time. Man. What's happening with that, bro? But um. Yeah, no, man. I was I said that shit, and everyone was like, "Yeah, we're all Kunoichi." And then I found out what it meant. I was like, "Oh fuck, bro, we we're all ninja." Yeah. Nah, but Blaze, man, what's 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 happening with you, bro? I I, I listened to like part part of that Weapon Wheel episode. You were saying that you was uh you ready to put some spells in your mouth or something? What's happening there, Blaze? You gotta you gotta you gotta explain to us, man. <laughs> you gotta explain to us, my homie. <laughs> Shout out to Blaze 4K. He's another great guy in the community, man. Even though he be booting solid right off his own podcast. Like, it's not here nor there. Like, we'll settle that in the course later. But, you know. That's the... <laughs> Come on, man. Like, Blaze, I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. I'm just an observer, man. I'm just an observer, man. That's all it is. First Naruto episode I watched was the tuning exam test episode. I was hooked since then. Oh, the episode with yeah, where they were taking the test, and Arzo said, "Don't underestimate me." That was a fire episode, bro. Come on, the podcast. When all right, Blaze? When do you record exactly? Because I watch everything on playbacks. When do you record exactly? Because I want to. I definitely want to come on the on the cast, bro. But it all comes down to the timing, because you know, like I I do my side job in the evenings on the later part of the week, so it fucks things up and everything. Um. Just Run says, Neo, I finally played through Persona 3, 4, and 5. Curious, do you like Last Surprise or Reach Out to the Truth more? I find myself enjoying the latter more, but my wife calls me crazy. Damn, he said his wife calls me crazy. 9.45 p.m. Saturday. You talking about Eastern Standard Time? Fuck. Because, you know, like my side job, I work in the restaurant industry. So, you know, Saturday night is the busy nights and everything. Oh, fuck, dude. 
<laughs> Shit, I don't think I'll be able to make that, homie. But I'll say this much. If I ever take off for a Saturday and you're doing solid cast, I will hit you up. Do hell or high water. If I have an event, I will cut that shit short and I'll be like, I got to be on solid cast. I got to be on that shit. Even if I got to be on the phone for half of it and then I get back to my setup and be like, yo, what up? You know what I'm saying? I will I will hold it down, homie, because you're one of the OGs, man. Um. All right. No. So back to what Runge was saying. Do you like last surprise or reach out to the truth more? Honestly, here's the thing. Y'all know me. I got mad attachment to Persona 4 Golden. Persona 4 Golden is the Persona game that hit me the hardest. Between the two, I'm biased towards Last Surprise. I'm sorry. I'm biased towards Last Surprise. That's not to say that Reach Out to the Truth ain't good. But Last Surprise, bro, it doesn't matter if you just get into a random encounter for the first time or the 800th time. When that shit hits, it, it fucking hits, man. I'm sorry, bro. It hits really hard, bro. You know what I'm saying? It hits it hard, and it goes deep, and it's thick, just the way Blaze 4K like it. You know what I'm saying? Hold it down. But Last Surprise definitely gets me going, because it's just like... It hits, bro. Now, you know what was the fucked up part, Pierre, about that Naruto shit? I had a similar situation. I got like seven episodes into Naruto when I was on, on TV. And then my dad, for whatever reason, in the most fucked up ways of punishment, he canceled cable because I think my sister and I were arguing with him. And he was just like, fuck it, no more cable for like a month or two. And I was like, what the fuck? I can't watch Naruto when, meanwhile, all my friends in school were watching it. And, you know, like, if you, back in those days, you couldn't watch stream shit on your phone or whatever. So I was sick, man. I was upset. I couldn't watch half of the land of the uh, river in the land of the waves arc. That's what it was. I couldn't watch half of that. And I was upset, bro. I couldn't watch half of that shit. So... By the time I came back, it was towards the end of the arc. And I was like, fuck, man. But I got the gist of it. But wait, Blue Sensei says TakeOver is better. I don't agree with that. TakeOver is good. But Last Surprise is so much better. So much better. But if I had to pick a track, Color Your Night tops everything. Bro, I don't know if it's recency bias, guys. I, I really do not know. But when I listen to Persona 3 Reload, like specific tracks, like personally, I feel like Persona 5 Royal soundtrack is more of a vibe. But Persona 3 Reload for the battle tracks, like Color Your Night, it's like the best battle theme. I just, I don't get it, man. No, 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 I came back for Sasuke dying. I came back for that. I came back, I think, an episode before that. Because I remember I recorded the episodes. Because if my dad cut the cable again, I was like, no. I'm going to have this stuff recorded. Call Your Night is so good, dude. Dude, like I said, Lotus Juice is hitting in this game, bro. It's hitting. Dude, honestly, like, here's the thing. Okay, I'm going to take a shot. We're, t we're dedicating this shot to Oh, you think I'm joking about recording on VHS tapes? Hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. You don't know. You don't know who I fucking am. You don't know who I fucking am right now, bro. Listen, I'm about to I'm about to pull up with some shit on you. Um all right. So first things first, I got my fair lady on VHS, THX, George Lucas. So I got My Fair Lady, right? I got Disney sing-along songs, Friend Like Me, Volume 11. Volume 11, bitch. Were you there for Volumes 1 to 10? I don't think so. You were. We, we read uh, 94. Um, What you know about that? You don't know nothing about that shit. You don't know nothing about that shit. So sit down, read 94. Sit down. Sit down. But, but read 94, what you know about this? Listen. 
this this uh Fuji film, which you can't see shit because of the, the webcam. But Fuji film, what this says is my handwriting, full metal alchemist tape three. My handwriting. I recorded episodes on this. Yeah. I recorded all my anime. Because this is before the days of DVDs being available. And you know, when you're a kid and you don't have disposable income, we didn't get to buy that shit. We didn't have the internet. So I recorded all that shit. I, you know what I had to choose from? Either 480p or th or 360p, right? SP and SLP. SP, higher quality, but less recording time. SLP, lower quality, but more episodes per tape. That's what we had to struggle with in the early 2000s, man. I was about that life, bro. I recorded Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Full Metal Alchemist, Naruto. I had the first 100 episodes of Naruto recorded on VHS. Come talk to me. My dog just opened the door. Oh, no, it's it's my mom. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I thought for a second my dog opened the door. That's crazy. Um, So I had all that stuff. Good night, mom. I love you. Um, So I had all that stuff, bro. Shit was crazy, man. Shit was crazy. I got my mom on stream one time a few years ago. It was funny. Everyone remembers that. Um, I had some Yu-Gi-Oh on there. Like OG Yu-Gi-Oh. I had some Case Closed on there. Some Inuyasha. Uh, a little bit of Lupin the Third. Who's going lit? So shout out to, you know what? Making it work in the early to mid 2000s. If you were an anime fan with no money, you made it fucking work, bro. And this is dripping onto my Yu Yu Hakusho pants. Bro, dude, I'm dripped out in the Yu Yu Hakusho shit. I got Yu Yu Hakusho sweatpants. I got Yu Yu Hakusho freaking jersey tank top. Damn. I feel I feel like a hoe right now because my freaking girlfriend got me this shit, bro. She got me these Yu Yu Hakusho pants and this jersey. I don't know how I feel. I feel I feel like a little defiled. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like, you know what I'm saying, man. Like I don't know how to feel. You know what I'm saying? I'm like dripped down. Shit, my girlfriend got me. I, I feel good, but at the same time, I feel like you know what I'm saying. I don't know. I feel like a hoe. But I dragged them off. It's all good. Anyway, take a shot to the the freaking anime fans. Color your night is the best track though. All right, let me tell you about this story about how we used to record shit back in the day. Okay, so <laughs> Fuzzy Belvedere, I love how Fuzzy is just lurking, and he's just like, O'Neal's taking a shot? Emoji. <laughs> I love you, Fuzzy. I love you, bro. <laughs> um, So let me tell you about this story. So this is how we used to record anime back in the day. Um, My... I was fortunate enough to have one of the combo TVs that came with like a DVD. No, it was a VHS TV combo. My sister, I don't think she had a combo set. Maybe I don't recall. It's been a long time, 20 years. But what I would do is for when the anime, when it was airing, I would record it live, pause it during the commercials, and then wait for it to come back, then record it. But if there was an anime that was airing late at night, I record it late at night, have all the commercials, and then after the fact, because I had the, one of those TVs that had the setting where you could record it from like 4.29 a.m. until like 4.59 a.m. It was dope as fuck. I felt so sophisticated. Like I was like tech technology hacker, man. Like I was like, yeah, bro. Shit is lit. That's how we did it back in the day. Because, you know, we couldn't afford buying. And also, anime didn't come out that frequently. Like, literally, the anime that I bought, I was buying it around the time when it came out. It wasn't coming out quick like it is nowadays. It was literally coming out every couple of months. And, dude. Anime fans nowadays have it so good. Like, people don't understand the fucking the pain of buying case closed volume one the secret life of jimmy kudo as seen on cartoon network which came with four episodes for 
twenty something dollars in the mid two thousands. Four episodes, and mind you, four episodes for twenty dollars was a steal back then, compared to what it used to be on VHS, which was two to three episodes for fifty dollars. Like people don't realize how good they got it now with streaming. Like NKDN, you know what it is. Like it literally now. Like I remember back ten years ago, people were complaining about um uh One Piece, season one, first voyage with the uncut dub, Funimation, good dub, uncut, not for kids. Thirteen episodes, forty dollars. I remember people were complaining the shit out of this, like. Oh my god, how could they do this? Like, wow, this is terrible. And I'm just like, bro, 40 episodes for $13? I paid, well, my parents paid freaking $20 for four episodes. And now you're getting $40 for 13 episodes. Like, dude, come on now. And nowadays, it's even cheaper for freaking, what, $8, $10 a month, Crunchyroll? Crazy. Dude, yeah, people, band brawlers. Shout out to you, band brawlers. What's up, my brother? How you doing, bro? Back in that day, bro, we used to literally pay two to three. To, I, and again, I say this. My parents paid it when I was a kid. I know. But, like, back in the day, the Viz VHS tapes, the other company's VHS tapes, Central Park Media, all that shit, we used to pay so much for anime. And now it's so cheap. Hey, Dom, what's up, bro? Dude, it was two to three episodes, depending on the series. Depending on the series. Some were two. GBA Advanced Videos hit differently back then. Oh, my God. Hold on. Where is it? I have one of them here. I have one of them here. I got to find it. Hold on. Hey. 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 Flame. I know you're not here anymore, but Flame, this is here. This is here. I'm going to move this to over here on this side. I gotta find my GBA advanced videotapes. I had them here. Uh, don't mind the uh, armpit hair. I stopped shaving a while ago. <laughs> I I normally do like myself clean shaven, but then sometimes I'm just like, I don't give a fuck, bruh. Oh, God. Do you guys remember these? Oh, this is like the Neo glasses from like 2014 to like 20. A while. <laughs> I'm trying to find the GBA tapes. Uh, I don't have any GBA tapes. I have. Well, I mean, I have like the family guy, family guy, UMD, the PlayStation. Hold on. I don't know where this shit. Ah. I didn't drop anything. Uh, but speaking of OG anime merch, listen. If you don't have this in your collection, you can't fucking talk to me about nothing. You can't talk to me about nothing. I don't give a fuck. Talk about like, hey, oh, I'm like, nah, you got this shit, bro? Did you know that this movie was, to my knowledge, I might be wrong. If so, I'll take the L. This movie was specifically made because Yu-Gi-Oh! was so popular in America. This movie. I might be wrong, but you know what? I believe it. Because you have you you have show Yu Gi Oh! Yeah. Gustavo Bravo sent me a photo. Is it his collection? What the f where did you get this from? He has a Persona 3 mug. Well, well, the water bottle. And it's cold as fuck, too. So he just p pulled that shit out of the freezer. I love that shit, bro. Gustavo Bravo, he, he got all the Persona merch I fucking want, bro. Shout out to this man right here, bro. Shout out to this man. Um, oh, you know what I need, guys? You know what I need? I need Atlas. If anyone has any contacts at Atlas, 
I need Atlas to release like workout wear designed around Persona. I don't care if it's just a stringer with just like the Persona Five emblem or the characters or whatever. I need that shit, bro. I need it. I need it. Neo, do you have the Yu-Gi-Oh VHS tape to teach people how to play the game? No, but I have the Dragon Ball DVD where it teaches people how to play the TCG. I have that. Where Chris Sabat, where he was just teaching people how to play the game. I don't know how to play the game, but I have that VHS. And it was just like, now it's time to power up. You're ready? And it was Goku from GT powering up. I have that shit, bro. Okay, now I'm tr I, now I am feeling the effect of the alcohol. I am really feeling it now, guys. I'm good. I'm good unless unless by some crazy situation I take another shot. I don't think so. But we haven't streamed for two weeks, so four hours is fine. Dude, I can't wait. So the homie flame is going to PAX East. He's going to PAX East this year. He's going to have a lot of coverage for Lords of Gaming. I'm excited for that. Flame, I'm excited, bro. You better be on camera. You better be speaking about shit. Bam Brawler with a $10 super chat. You've been streaming for a while, bro. Here's something for your time. Appreciate you. Thank you, Bands Brawler. I appreciate you, bro. And let's celebrate his fifth super chat on live stream. Appreciate you, my guy. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that, my guy. Thank you. It doesn't feel like it's been four and a half hours, but it has been. Because you know what? When you do this stuff and you're hanging out with the right people, it doesn't feel like that. That's the best part about it. That's the best part about it, bro. That is the best part about it. Uh, that's the best part about it. <laughs> I really, really need Persona 3 Reload merch, bro. I just this, this coin tea or whatever that website has. Do they have that shit? Persona 3 Reload. merch I need some shirts bro I don't want to go on red bubble I just need some shirts some stringers some hoodies I feel like I have to make it myself I gotta go to like a staples or something to do that shit I don't have hard liquor but I'm four white claws in joining the fun Jay Ransom you always lit my guy you donated the memberships and you joining in on that Honestly, Jay Ransom, you're gonna wake up better than me, bro. You're gonna wake up better than me. Man's just seeing double of his phone screen. No, I'm actually not, but I'm feeling pretty lit right now. I am feeling pretty lit at the moment, you guys. Honestly. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling like Shulk right now. I'm really feeling it right now. I'm feeling good. Toast to the rock, finally. Uh, I don't know about that. I'll toast to The Rock when we see what his A24 movie is and if he's actually good in it. Dude, I really have Napoleon Dynamite on UMD video. Guys, can you just think about that shit for a second? Like, hold on. Guys, I love this movie to death. I don't care what people say. I love Napoleon Dynamite. It is just so... Like, it's not weird, but it's very. How would you describe Napoleon Dynamite? Tater tots, drinking raw eggs. I don't know, but it's so. Where's the UMD? I really have no idea. But I have an employing dynamite at UMD. I got two copies of a Crisis Core box, but they're not both Crisis Core, and I'll tell you why. Because this copy right here with the clear, it's in my PSP. Crisis Core, of course. Men cry not for their friends, but for their comrades. Yes, sir. And I have this black copy. Which comes with. 
It comes with Crisis Core, the movie on UMD. It was a GameStop mistake when I bought the Infamous uh, 2 Special Edition. It came with Crisis Core instead. No, it came with Avid Children instead of Crisis Core. And I love it for it. Because I have both now. Yeah, we're, we're at that point where I'm just like showing PSP stuff on stream. Super bad on PSP, you are a national treasure. That's a great movie. Fuck, guys, all the liquor is hitting right now. Oh my god. It is hitting right now. Dude, I got an infamous comic. Great series. If Spider Man wasn't around, they would have totally brought back the series. Do you remember when they used that song, Land of the Rising Sun, in one of the infamous two trailers? I remember. Pepperidge Farm remembers. That was iconic. <laughs> oh, man. Iconic formats. The early 2000s were like a wasteland for people doing like different iconic formats like UMD. We had Zune for a while. We had a bunch of different shit. Keep looking up, you're starting to feel it. Honestly, David, it's a bad idea. When I start looking up, I really feel it, bro. I really feel it, bro. <laughs> oh, God, I feel the hiccups. I feel it. Dude, honestly, there is a science to this shit. If you don't look up, you don't feel it. If you look up, you feel it because you get closer to God. Oh, my God, my girlfriend texted me, bro. She texted me, she's so thankful I'm in her life, bro. I feel good about that, but at the same time, I don't feel good about that because of the mood I'm in. <sighs> oh, my God. Stand by, Jason. Dude, I feel it now. Oh, all right. So the homie uh, DMZ, shout out to you, DMZ. Appreciate you, bro. Yo, how do we still have 42 viewers after four and a half hours? Shout out to you guys on some real shit. Shout out to you guys. Um, Thoughts on Doom Part 2, the final duel. Not spoilers, but we're getting to the final duel. I loved it, bro. One thing I loved about the movie in that particular scene was how silent it was.
Bro, what is going on? Why is my webcam not peering? Hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on one sec. Guys, can you hear me? Cause this shit is bugging. <laughs> yeah, it seems like my PC took shots too. That's crazy. That is crazy. Why is my webcam not appearing? Hold on. That's fucking crazy. Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. So there? Hello? Hi? You guys there? Refresh the page if you can. Hello? Testing, testing. Hello, guys. Hi. Anyone still there? Is this thing on? I need a bigger gun. Okay, we are good. We are good. We still got people. Yes, sir. We back. We back out of like crack addicts, guys. We back. Yeah, my computer, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, it uh decided to shut down randomly. I have no idea why. And when I tried to um reconfigure everything, it was like, no, your webcam is fucking up. And I was like, oh. Okay, so I was like, all right, let me troubleshoot everything, and I troubleshooted everything, and we are good. <laughs> but yeah, my streams always leave me with the most uh, non-flattering profile, <laughs> profile pictures and everything. That's how it is, unfortunately. What was I talking about? I was talking about Dune, right? Hold on. Just drag the chat out. Okay. So let's talk about Dune. Okay, so one thing I love about Dune Part 2, and I mean, this might be dealing into spoiler territories, but fuck it, you guys have been here for four, like four hours. Um, One thing I loved about the final act of Dune Part 2 with the final battle between uh, Paul Atreides and uh, Elvis is how, from a film perspective how there was no music attached to it like you know with a lot of battles that you have you have like grandiose music playing in the background it's very bolsterous and it's very like oh but one thing i loved about the build-up because dune as a as a franchise as a movie it's very much so built on like all of its like music and it's like ha hey you like all that stuff and then you get to this fight scene it's just like building up to this final encounter and it's just like all silence and all you're hearing is just the actors' grunts and their fights and the choreography attached to it. And it was so fucking good, man. It's exactly what the movie needed. Because it really makes you feel the weight of all the characters' um, interactions and everything surrounding it. And it was sick. If there was one thing that um, I will say about... Doom Part 2, even though I love the movie and I think it's amazing, I could have gone for an extra, like, half an hour. I really could have. Because one thing that... And click off the video now if you want to not care about spoilers. One thing I could have loved is that if they did give a little bit more time to Austin Butler's character, the Emperor, and... Selling scars across characters just a little bit more time. So when we saw them interact in the movie, it would just mean a little bit more. But I understand with the confines of the movie, timeline, the length, and everything, there was only so much that they could show. So as it stands, it was fucking incredible. And I loved it. And I've seen it two and a half times now, and I want to see it one more time and wrap it up. Um, 
But yeah, no, it's still a phenomenal movie. I recommend everybody check it out, especially if you are a fan of sci-fi films, because there's just, there's really not a lot of really, really, really good sci-fi films out there, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I love about Dune, and I wish they did a little bit more with. But as it stands, I'm 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 happy with the final product and what we got because we got a lot of it. Oh God, Josh Brolin was fantastic, bro. I loved him in the first one. I loved him in the second one. And dude, I that's one thing I did wish that like him and Batista, they had a little bit more going on with it. But again, that's one of the things that I think would have benefited more for because the thing about the Dune movies is that. Dune Part 1 and Dune Part 2, to me, they feel more like Disc 1 and Disc 2 of, like, Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, rather than being, like, Dune Part 2 is a sequel to Dune Part 1. You get what I'm saying? Like, Dune Part 1 and Part 2 feel like one movie split across two discs, rather than it being, like, Fellowship of the Ring 2, the two towers. That's what it feels like to me. But as it stands, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the final product. I loved it. And I can't wait for Doom Messiah when it comes out. <sighs> Hopefully before the end of the decade. Damn, we still live? Evidently. Ev alcohol is like my my uh, my rejuvenation. It's like a phoenix down. It's like, get in. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doom Part 1 established the world and the lore and all that stuff. Fucking liar? Jay Ransom is lying. This man said I was craving Arby's. I was not craving Arby's. I was not. I was not. Oh, hi, Mark. How you doing, Mark? But yeah, if you guys haven't seen Doom Part 2, definitely check it out on the biggest screen you can. Dolby Cinema or IMAX, otherwise... It is well worth it, my friends. Fuck, man. I'm good on alcohol. We So we bought this bottle of Doors, right? And we had, like, what, three shots tonight? We killed the rest of this bottle of tequila. We are good. Mm. So as far as movies, I'm going to be watching soon. Okay. So tomorrow night, my sister and I are going to be watching... End of Evangelion in theaters. It was in theaters for, I think, like two nights only. Depending on the region, it might be a few, my, a few more nights. But we're watching Evangelion tomorrow night, which is very exciting to see that movie in theaters. So we're rewatching the series. Um, American Fiction and Poor Things, I think, are on streaming now. So I want to see those. Um, but then from there, uh, honestly, the only movies I'm really, really, really fucking excited for are, um, well, they're putting all the Spider-Man movies back in theaters. So that's exciting. So I saw, I'm good. I, I bought my tickets for Spider-Man 2, Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2. I'm going to see that in theaters and I'm going to try my best to see the rest of all the other movies like Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. The Tom Holland ones I'm probably not going to see just because they're so recent. I've already seen them before. The other ones I haven't seen in a long time. So I'll definitely make sure I see at least Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2. And probably Amazing Spider-Man 1, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, Interstellar is coming back in the R RPX. And then there are rumors of an IMAX release for the 10th anniversary. So I'm excited. Damn, Neil, you're still streaming. Respect. Yeah, surprisingly, alcohol gives me energy, apparently. <laughs> Good. Tom Holland is mid. No, listen, I love Far From Home so much. No, it's a lie. I'm joking. I love Homecoming so much. Homecoming, to me, is a great movie. I love it. It's so different. It's great. Far From Home, I... Don't care about half the movie. I love the latter half. No Way Home, I really enjoy a lot of it, even though it hasn't aged the greatest. Um, but I don't need to see the last three because I've already seen them in theaters recently. You know what I'm saying? Even though Homecoming was seven years ago. Yeah, Shokyo hates Far From Home, which I understand because I'm not... Listen, Far From Home, when you 
take it away from the Spider-Man franchise, it's still a good movie. But when you include it in the Spider-Man franchise, it's just like this would be okay if it was its own standalone comic doing something else. But when it's a mainline installment in the Spider-Man movie, it's like, what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'll still watch it. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not a terrible Spider-Man movie. In my opinion, there are no terrible Spider-Man movies. Even like the worst aspects of Spider-Man 3 and Amazing Spider-Man 2, I still really enjoy compared to a lot of the worst comic book movies we've gotten recently. Like Ant-Man and the and the Wasp Quantumania, Thor Love and Thunder. Like you cannot convince me that Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania and Thor Love and Thunder are better than Spider-Man 3. Like you cannot convince me of that shit. Listen, Amazing Spider-Man 2 at least had great action, great visuals, great music. You can't say the same about, like, Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania and Thor Love and Thunder. Like, I will take that movie over that. And I really like that because at least it had great acting and characters given a damn. Not just showing up for a paycheck. I will say that much. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder broke me to my core. God. I like you know what the thing is, Domino Taco. I really come. I loved Homecoming when it came out. Then I was indifferent to it, and then I rewatched it before No Way Home, and I was like, I really like this movie. You know, maybe call me. It's like the John Hughes vibes or whatever, but like it, it worked. It worked for me, bro. No, no Amazing Spider-Man Two slander. As long as we have current MCU, no Amazing Spider-Man Two slander. No. Like, I will take the worst parts of that movie over watching Ant-Man and Lost Quantumania and MODOK any day of the week, bro. Any day of the week, bro. Any day. I will take Topher Grace Venom over fucking MODOK any day of the week, bro. Any day of the week, bro. Not saying it's good. I will take Tobey Maguire finger jab and pointing and all that shit. And all that shit. I will take that. I will take that over what they did recently. Oh, you like Quantumania? Well, congratulations, bro. I'm happy for you. I'm happy you enjoyed it. I'm happy somebody enjoyed it. I'm happy somebody enjoyed it, bro. I just, I can't come to enjoy that movie, bro. I watched, that was the first Marvel movie where I was on my phone halfway through. I'd never do that. You guys know me. I'm very respectful of cinema. But I went after work, and I remember... Because my girlfriend, she was at work at the time. I said, babe, I'm going to the movies. And she's like, okay, cool. Have fun, babe. And I was in there. And I was searching halfway through. I was like, babe, this movie is awful. And she's like, oh, no. And she was so sad for me. Because my girlfriend, because, you know, like, if you got a really good woman in your life, and she's always just like, I'm so thankful for you. I love what you do for me. What can I do for you? And I'm just like, nah, you good, babe. I'm fine. I'm chilling. And then when she sees you disappointed, she's just like so sad. Like, what can I do to make it better? And I was just like, I don't know if you can do anything personally. Because this movie just fucking wrecked me to my core. Thor Love and Thunder was the catalyst. And Ant-Man and Lost Quantumania was the straw that broke the camel's back, bro. Uh, no. What? Okay. Respectfully, let's have this discussion. What good aspects were there for Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania? Respectfully. Do not say Jonathan Majors Kang. Don't say that shit. Talk to me about Ant-Man. Did he get any development? Any of the characters get any development? No. Was there great action? No. Great CGI? No. Great music? No. Like, I'm just like, I'm, I'm really, really, really trying to come to terms with this shit, bro. Jonathan Majors Kang, listen. I'm gonna be honest. Jonathan Majors Kang. Jonathan Majors was more of a villain in Creed 3 than he was in Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. Let's really talk about it. Let's really talk about it, bro. Let's really talk about that for a second. Oh, you're talking about the, the scene in the trailer? Okay. Mm-mm. Uh, listen. All I'm saying is that Shang-Chi is the best movie of Phase 4. Argue with your baby mama. Argue with your baby mama. Shang-Chi is the best movie of Phase 4. Shang-Chi is the best movie of Phase 4.
listen, listen. And you know what kills me the most is that Shang Chi was so fucking good, and Marvel has done nothing with it until now. They're like, fuck it, well, let's do a Shang Chi too. I'm like, now, six, seven years later, Shang Chi Chu was Shang Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings was so fucking good, bro. S- mid, mid, no, that movie was not mid. That movie was not mid. Great fight scenes, great villain. No, nah, we ain't doing this shit. We ain't doing this. Nah, no Shang Chi slander. Hawkeye is the best TV show in Phase Four. Nah, it's Loki. That's Loki season one, and parts of Loki season two. Loki season two is great. Bus scene is the trailer was the only decent fight. No, you 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 know when the the fight scene on the scaffolding wasn't great. Nah, nah. No Shang Chi slander, and yet y'all over here saying I liked Ant Man three. No, I will not accept this. I will not accept this. The CGI fight at the end of Shang Chi was ass. Yes, I agree, but I will not accept Shang Chi slander from Ant Man and the Lost Quantum Mania and Thor: Love and Thunder Defenders. I we're not doing this shit. We're not doing this shit. Eternals. I'm indifferent to Eternals. <laughs> I feel like it would have worked better as a TV show. But would they have the budget for a TV show? Sung Chi is top three origin movies. Thank you, Donald Zaku. Thank you. Spit it. Spit it. Spit the facts. Spit the facts. Spit the facts. Loki is the best Disney Plus show. Honestly, I would say WandaVision is like number two. Because they had that in a chokehold with that. And then the rest, I'm kind of like, alright. Kingo was just basically Kumail Nanjiani. And I love Kumail, but it's like, whatever. I loved his uh, his uh, assistant, though. Hello! Nah, listen. You tell me that Shang Chi was trash. You're hyping up some Ant Man and the Lost Quantum Mania. We ain't do. We ain't doing this. Kang defeated by ants. We ain't doing this. We are not. Listen respectfully. I respect y'all, but I do not respect y'all. We are not slandering Shang Chi. We are not doing that. Unless if things we're we're, we're not going to do tonight, we're not doing that. Falcon Winter Soldier. I like the concepts of Falcon and Winter Soldier. And then it wasn't that great of a show. I don't know. Marvel shows just fizzle out towards the last end of it. Except for Loki. Loki was really good. Why don't you just listen? I'm like, all right, bro. I like the Like, uh, it was good in the beginning, in the middle, and then the end. It was just this. And then they had to change it. He needs to be better. I'm like, all right, bro. I like, listen, I love aspects of all of these Marvel Disney Plus shows. I love aspects of them. Don't get it twisted. But they just don't all stick the landing like Loki did. Loki just always sticks the landing. Yeah, right? Man, all the, oh, X-Men 97 is tomorrow? Let's get it. You need to be, <laughs> you need to be better, Senator. You need to listen. Oh, God, Jason, that video you sent. Oh, my God, that's true. Jesus. I really have to watch the documentary, man. I was tempted to change my name on Twitter to uh, Lisan Al Neo or Neo Al Galib or something. I was tempted, man. I was tempted. <laughs> I was so tempted to change my name. Ain't no way the stream is still going. Well, Rory, you best believe it because we are the Lisan Al Galib. Hi, Yokiba. Yes, three, 
Creed 3 was good. I saw that movie in 4DX, Murrow. The seats were shaking and everything. I was just like, oh my god. This is crazy. No Way Home is top 3 MCU. I don't know about that. It's a good movie, but like not top 3 MCU. Top 3 MCU is like Winter Soldier, Infinity War, And depending on my mood, either Iron Man 1 or Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. It's definitely Winter Soldier, Infinity War, Iron Man 1, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Uh, one of those three. Rank the Creed movies. For me, it's 1, 3, 2. They're all great movies, man. I feel like Creed 2 had the best final fight, though. I love Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, bro. I the more times I rewatch that movie, the more I love it. James Gunn is special and it's just so it's so funny that Marvel lost him to DC. And I love it. I love that for them. I love it. I'm so excited for James Gunn's DCU. I am so excited, dude. Like the end of Guardians 3 was just so wholesome, bro. Rank the Rocky movies? Oh, God, there's so many of them, dude. Dude, I was just... One scene that's forever ingrained in my mind was the scene with um, Gamora and Star-Lord where she was just like, you know, I'm not who you want me to be. And he was just like, I know. But who you are ain't so bad. And she smiled and she was just like, I bet we were fun. He was like, you wouldn't believe it. That was beautiful. Because honest to God, I'm going to be real. Under different hands, that scene could have been so fucking terrible. Like, this whole movie could have been terrible if he made Star-Lord fall in love with this different version of Gamora. But then Gunn was just like, no, I'm not going to do that. She's her own person. And I loved it. God, dude. Hey, you got some drank arsonist? Awesome, bro. What'd you get? Yeah, I'm excited for James Gunn's DCU, man. Like, obviously, Superman Legacy. Very, very excited for that. Um, And then there's the Supergirl movie. There's the Authority. There's the Titans movie, apparently. It's coming out. There's a lot of shit, man. I want to see what he does with his interpretation of the Batman. One thing that sucks is that Matt Reeves' Batman sequel got delayed another year because of the strikes. So instead of watching it next fall, we have to wait until fall 2026. Guys, I am going to be 33 when that movie comes out. I can't believe it. I can't fucking believe it. I'm going to be 33 when that movie comes out. What the fuck? Yeah, they dropped the Superman Legacy title, but to me, it's just always going to be Superman Legacy. You know what I'm saying? Because until I just say, like, James Gunn's Superman, it's just going to be Superman Legacy. Yeah, no. Nebula, when she was just so happy at the end of Guardians 3, and she was just, like, yelling and so happy. It's just so good, bro. And then Rocket also being happy in the end of Guardians 3. When he was just howling. God, that song by uh, Leona Lewis. No, 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 not Leona Lewis. Fucking Florence and the Machines. The Dog Days Are Over. Bro, so good. It kind of reminded me of um, Return of the Jedi's ending. Where everyone is just so happy at the end. That's, that's what it felt like. It's crazy, like 40 year difference between those movies. 40 years. Fucking insane, dude. Fucking insane, man. Yeah, it was such a good song, man. It was such a beautiful selection, too. So good. And then her speech to Drax where she was just saying, like, you weren't born to be a destroyer. You were born to be a father. Oh, fuck, bro. 
beautiful end of a trilogy. Very rarely do trilogies end the, like stick the landings, bro. But that that movie did. It's crazy. We don't really have a lot of modern day trilogies that just stick the landing from beginning to end. Like the Apes trilogy is really good. Guardians trilogy is really good. John Wick. Well, I mean, John Wick, John Wick is more like of a it's four movies now, but that was really good. Oh God, the ending of John Wick Four, man. Ooh. Yeah, this is a Guardians Galaxy Volume Three appreciation stream. I love it. I love it. Guardians Two is good. I like Guardians Two more than most. Particularly for the final act of the movie, I think that the final third of the movie is phenomenal. Um, but I can understand why some people wouldn't like some of the jokes and the humor in that one compared to the first one. The first one definitely had a, like a, a better balance and a flow versus the second one until the third act. If I had to pick between like which one had the best soundtracks, Guardians 1, 2, or 3... The songs in three, I don't remember as much. One and two. Two definitely had better placement of certain songs. Like, like, um, come a little bit closer. You're my kind of girl. That, that song is great. You know, I love that. Yeah. Uh, Guardians two having the best soundtrack. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. They're all, honestly, they're all good movies to me, you know? Like, some I'll like more than others, but, like, I, when I saw the Guardians of the Galaxy IMAX trilogy, like, Jason and I, JFam, we saw it in uh, IMAX, um, I, I went, I rewatched the first Guardians movie, I was like, this movie is so fucking good, bro! And I love it. You know, the funny thing is, when it first came out, I was like, ah, this movie's good. Yeah, whatever. And I rewatched it every single time since, and I was like, oh, this movie's fucking amazing, bro. It's one of those MC movies where it just gets better with age for me personally. And the third movie, just off the rip, I loved it. I loved it, bro. I've seen that third movie three times in theaters. I saw the first one. I saw the first one twice. I saw it in Texas with my boy Jamal. I saw it here with my sister. The third movie I saw three times. I saw it with Jamal in Texas. I saw it with one of my a couple of my friends here a couple of my friends again and the third movie i saw with jason i saw it with my one co-worker and i saw it with my girlfriend so i saw it three times yeah rank the john wick movies ooh four oh, fuck this is tough four two one, three. But three being at the bottom doesn't mean it's terrible. It's just like they're all good. Four, two, one, three. Yeah. Yeah. Four, three, four, two, one, three. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Andrew? Sub Neo, I've been playing Persona 3 Reload, and I still owe credit to you for introducing me to Persona back with Persona 5 in 2017. Hey, that's awesome, bro. Seven years later. Shout out to you, bro. I'm playing Reload on and off when I'm not playing Rebirth. That's what's up, my brother. Appreciate you, my guy. Will you be seated for Monkey Man? Absolutely. We will be seated for Dev Patel's directorial debut. You know this, my guy. You know this. All right, guys. I'm looking at the clock right now. It's a little after midnight. We've been streaming for five hours. What the actual fuck, my friends? It has been crazy. Five hours. We had liquor delivered to us on stream. We've killed a lot of this liquor in addition to the rest of the 1800 tequila. I think it's about time we sign off for the night. Um, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. A lot of you guys have been here for the past five hours. So, again, as always, I... Appreciate you so much more than you know. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't done so, 
Uh, make sure you hit the like button. It helps out the channel tremendously. Follow me on all social media. It's down below in the video description from Twitter to Discord community and my Instagram page. Um, I'd really appreciate that, you guys. Um, again, and just thank you so much for being all the incredible individuals that you are. Um, get a lot of gaming in this week. Eat a lot of great food. Have a lot of great sex. And continue to be the excellent individuals that you are. Remember, as always, to be kind to one another. And as always, be kind to yourself. So for me to you for now, my name is NGS signing out. Remember, Yuffie is top tier, but Tifa is godlike. And I will catch you guys later. Peace out, y'all. Have a good one. Take care, you guys.